PKA 632 with our guest drifter, Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load and RealDBG.com. That's Death by Gummy Bears now under RealDBG.com. Get yourself some very powerful, powerful gummies. Get fucked up. Drifter, how are you? Are you, you you're clearly not well. <laughs> like you're, uh, you're we're, doing, we're doing another bed cast. It's not looking good. <laughs> um, what's it's been on? a wild ride. So I've got good news. I finally found out what's wrong with me. I was actually not crazy. I cannot believe that. Shockingly. That's good. Mm. Uh, I have a pretty severe lifelong vitamin B1 deficiency, better known as thiamine. And you need that vitamin to regulate most of your organs, your nervous system, your heart, your brain, muscle growth, bone density, uh, you know, a lot of the not so essential things in your body. Sure. And probably had it my whole life. Most of the weird problems I've had, including the hallucinations that you guys find so amusing, were almost certainly driven by vitamin B1. Yeah. Two things. One, that's definitely amusing. We stand by that. Two, <laughs> how many times now have you finally gotten to the bottom of this problem? Is this is this root cause number four? Seven? I think it would be the third, but I think it's the really real one because this uh, destroys testosterone and other things oh. and destroy mm. it. It causes your nervous system to essentially... Uh, disintegrate because the myelin sheaths that protect the nerves do disintegrate. They don't repair demyelinization uh, causes people to lose their memory. It causes people to slur words, balance problems, has a tendency to cause heart and upset stomach. Yeah. Uh, blood about flow. Alcohol. That, that's what causes a uh, wet brain. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. People who yep. are like chronic alcoholics, like mm -hmm. they get wet brain like late in life. Shout out Lady Die from the ONA show. She got are you wet supposed brain. to have dry brain. Yes, because wet brain, it means that you have a severe thiamine deficiency and you lose your mind. Like you no yes. longer are with reality. You're like you're in fantasy world. And that's apparently caused by a thiamine deficiency. So it seems like how the fuck did they not catch this or did you not happen upon like a pair? Uh, like the short version is this is something that really is almost never checked for, at least in the Western world. It's considered eliminated since most of our food is fortified with high uh, thiamine mononitrate. So in theory, if you eat one pop tart a week, you should have enough. I have discovered that I am so lucky to have a genetic disorder that causes my body to not absorb very much. So lucky, in fact, it's a new gene that hasn't been researched yet. So it didn't show on the initial test. Do you get I, to name no, it? Uh, and I think the doctor does. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this because I when reached out to my family. Like drifter with a zero. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I would keep it with an E. It's easier to spell. Uh, <laughs> but I got my family members to also take vitamin supplements and a variety of issues that they had from cold sensitivity to anxiety to uh, issues with psychosis and things like that went away very quickly. So, so genetic. yes. How, muted, bud? So how, genetic. Much, uh, how much history of psychosis are we talking here in the family? Uh, and are we talking about like an uncle who liked to talk about gremlins in his fighter plane back in Nam? Are we talking about like pants on your head, got a kitchen knife and we're heading out? My grandfather has a body count of about 15 people because he got violent when he got drunk and he would have so breaks from reality. Body yeah. count doesn't mean that anymore. Well, you're right. Uh, you fucked a lot of people. guys. <laughs> uh, I try not to talk too gay? much trash. My mother would go psychotic when she would drink. Uh, I saw her break a plate and try to cut her face off with the edges to let the demons out or God knows what. Um, so Jesus. that's been in the family for a long time. I'm not going to talk about my other relatives because I doubt yeah. they want to be on this show. But similar Equally issues when mixed with alcohol. Show. And the only reason it didn't get me is because I grew up around alcoholics and swore that off. I'm on the cannabis only train. Uh -huh. If I had drank, oh, my God, it would have been terrible. So for your family, it's like doubling up with the alcohol because oh, they yeah. already have a thiamine problem. And then that no, that's not yep. good. And I want to uh, straight edge, my friend. Uh, I don't know. About <laughs> a, I'm very wanna, straight like, edge. Tylenol yeah. twice. Like, like, oh, man. So, so your life sounds so scary to me. Like, like uh, in my tough, normal man, life, sorry. I don't deal with any sort of ghouls or goblins or, or anything <laughs> like that. And it seems like, like, like that's a daily concern for you. You're like, fingers crossed. There's no ghouls or goblins today. Uh, I don't particularly worry about those anymore. I used to. Uh, okay. Uh, just on a daily basis. I'm see, I was seeing things. You got to. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, right now, I just worry about managing the health stuff. Uh, the good news is I'm supposed to make a full recovery. The bad news is it's supposed yeah. to take a couple of years because it's been going for so long. 
every system in my body is dysregulated. That's why the mm. testosterone was so low for no reason. And all these other things and all the labs are all out of whack. And I got lucky. I got in touch with one of the very few doctors on the planet that even has published research on this, Dr. Chandler Mars. She runs hormonesmatter.com and she's been helping me. And uh, her name she is basically Chandler? said this guy, uh, Chandler Mars. Yes. So that's this. Oh, I'm sorry, We're going to gloss right over the lady's name's Chandler. I mean, that's more interested than any of this. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the solution, is it just a vitamin? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Take vitamin B1. It's very cheap. It's over the counter. Uh, it made me feel better within 12 hours. I felt radically then, better within a week. Uh, unfortunately, that, after a month, I kind of plateaued. I talked to this new doctor and she said average recovery time is a couple of years because it your body's kind of in starvation mode. So I got That's a lot of rough, fun man. stuff to work through, but the long term's looking pretty good. That's good. I'm glad it seems like you have a a, a prognosis or whatever to go off of. It, it, does know, it piss you off at all that like after all of this, it's like it seems like a vitamin deficiency that could have been like handled on Amazon. Like you have to be kind yeah. of like, are you fucking kidding me? Like so all you don't these tests a, and you didn't you have take a like piss in a cup. I you did take, take a multivitamin, but it didn't have thiamine in there. Since it's already in our bread, the majority of multivitamins don't include it because it's considered unnecessary. Which uh, which multivitamin? Vitamin. <clears throat> oh shit! It was just like some some chewable gummies I got from okay, Target. Okay, yeah, you didn't get. Okay, see that's the problem. Um, thorn. Anybody out there that that look, I I I take multivitamins every day. I think it's one of the like five things you should take. Like if you're gonna take, if you had to pick five, it'd be in them. And I take those expensive ass thorn multivitamins. And I promise you, you take four pills a day or something. You take you take them in the morning. There's a morning blend and an evening blend. And, well, Kyle's uh, on the rich guy thorn stack. I'm on the basic yeah. nutrition stack. <laughs> well, well I'm, I mean, I'm sure that there's thiamine in it. Like you said, there's oh, thiamine yeah. in pop tarts. Like, like I had a like. Does your diet, um, you know, everybody eats differently. I know some people just never touch like vegetables or fruits ever. Like, like was that a thing? Like, no. I, know you I said eat you very healthy. No caffeine, no alcohol, no tea, not a lot. I do eat sweets, but not a tremendous amount, you know? Try yeah. to eat organic, local, healthy vegetables, blah, blah, blah. I, Jesus. you know, I'm in Texas. It's not going to be perfect here, but it's sure. pretty damn good. Well, thiamine yeah, yeah, yeah. In, I, I wasn't uh, even looking. I, I'm just thinking, like, you've developed this this crazy thiamine deficiency where it's yeah. seemingly... But it's been my whole life. life. It's like, like how did everything. you avoid thiamine so much? And the answer is clearly that you didn't, that you've got this genetic disorder that makes you need a lot of thiamine? You, I need a lot, Amen. and I got lucky. My life was a perfect series of events. Every medication that I've ever taken for a long time, a lot of the procedures that I've had done, all of those have known side effects of draining thiamine. I've taken mm. sertaline. I've been on diuretics when I was a teenager. I used to have to get bi-monthly spinal taps and things like that. Oh, uh, Jesus. So all of those things drain thiamine. And there's only two labs in the entire world that'll give you a transketolase test, which is the most accurate one. So doctors almost never test for it. And I only found this because I went to, I went to a psychiatrist because I was like, that's it, I'm done, I'm crazy. Put me yeah. in a padded room and lock yeah. me up. This makes no sense. The psychiatrist mm. said, look, man, you can be as crazy as you want and not get labs like this. You may have a mental problem but there may be something else. He sent me to a neurologist and the neurologist is like, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. I just know that it's going to be weird and it's going to be beyond my expertise. I'm going to refer you to like the research hospital, which was UT Southwestern. And mm -hmm. it'll take four months, but you know what? I'm going to sign you up for like 15 shotgun random tests to do a little work before you get there. One of them, B1, the transketolase. And so I'm just fighting my way through that. It's going to be a fun yeah. year long slog, uh, but at least you're on the right look, path. How often have you thought about killing yourself? Because I got to tell you, if I had all these problems, especially with the mental stuff going on, mm -hmm. you know, something you can't wrap your hands around or cut out. Cause like, yeah. if you got cancer, like, like if I had like, I don't know if there's an example of a cancer that men can get, like when women get breast cancer, they can make that nuclear option and be like, you know what? Take them fucking both. Well, ma'am, the, the right one's still good. No, fuck this shit. Like, and, and I have a lot of respect when that when they do that. I don't know if there's a nuclear option for men like that, but that's what I'd be looking for. I'd be looking for the bad part of me to cut out at some point. You know, like I don't know if you've ever gotten a thorn in in your foot or something, and you yeah. be like, yep. I don't care how much this hurts or how gross it is to dig around in my foot. You're coming out. There's something like in us that wants us to get that shit out of us that, that yeah. doesn't belong. And so, like, man, I could see thinking 
killing myself. Like, well, like, like some of the stuff you've been through. You are goddamn determined to start us off grim today, but the honest yeah. truth is I try uh, you not did to that. lie. You're, you're in a coffin. Oh, Dracula, am I bringing the mood down? <laughs> this is a very expensive bed, anyway. Um, I bet it is. It comes with that oak lid. <laughs> <laughs> you got the inlay and the silver handles on the side. Mm. Yeah, it's a floating bed that glows. It's a cyber bed. It looks really cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, I thought about killing myself. I'm not not a lot, but the thought of not seriously, I didn't sit here and be like, yeah, I'm going to do it today. None of that. But every now and then when I was trying to go to sleep and in a lot of pain, I imagined how pain free it would be to be dead and imagining being dead helped me go to sleep. So I'm really sorry, yeah. man. That's that's horrible. I'm, that's, it's horrible. It's terrible. But it is, you dude. have to deal with this, and I'm I'm genuinely happy for you that it seems like you're optimistic on on the path you're on now. Hopefully, Trying it to is be. what solves <laughs> it. it, it. You're doing a good job. So yeah, that, that's rough, man. What you got, you know? Yeah, like, it, it must feel really good to have your hands around. Like I said, like like at least have a really good idea of like what what the thing is. Like like mm -hmm. yep. and it's and it's easily solved too. They're not like, oh, we found it. It's your butthole. We have to remove your butthole. We have to core out your butthole. Like we're making a like Jimmy, butthole. Bring in the Do I just get an apparatus. even better butthole? Like it, it, what, you can't remove it's a, a hole. You can only make holes bigger. Uh, <laughs> you could get the colonoscopy bag, but the, you know the one on the on your side. I don't yeah. see why you'd have to do no, that. Nowadays, you can just request like a corpse anus. And, <laughs> oh, and what? Is that true? I believe it. I got a real thing. Two week. Two week. I want a zombie anus. I think that it'd be that'd be disgusting. Just a <laughs> just a greenish anus that's, that's slowly what, rotting. What's the difference between a zombie oh, no. anus and a regular cadaver anus that it's been affected with that virus? Well, yeah, one of them would be animated. I'm kind of imagining a oh, you want it like like <laughs> anus of the dead. Yeah, anus of the dead. It's, <laughs> it, it's uh, a prehensile like lips. How does yeah, so, yeah. so I know that our intestines like force poo out of us or whatever, and I think maybe there's even some little fingers in there. That that's move. my is understanding. That, <laughs> is that how they do it? Like, 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 like I'm asking. Is, I know our intestines. I think it contracts muscle. and squeezes like a tube. If I'm yeah, not the mistaken, contraction requires musculature. Is intestine muscle? A little bit. One of, one they of do mysteries. move. Do things right. I'm not a doctor. I think yeah, it's yeah, the fingers, organs. those yeah, are the yeah, villi. I, those are what absorb things. No, I yeah. have a genuine like like I, I, I just thought right. of this. I'm it's like, called peristalsis, right? Yeah, it's it's it is muscular. The involuntary constriction and relaxation of the muscles in the intestine, creating wave-like intestine. movements that push the contents of the canal forward. Peristalsis. Cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't sure about that <clears> because <throat> I know that uh, people eat intestine in a number of different ways, like mostly pig intestines. Yeah, but, chitlins. Uh, yum, yum. Gross, chitlins, gross, and gross. then the casings on like all the best hot dogs. Like if you've ever eaten a hot dog that had a crunch, like that was intestine that you just that you just bit right into. That yeah. was the casing, and that's a good um, use. That does make it better. And condoms. Let's never forget the that the, the, oh, they make uh, pig skin condoms. Sheep skin. Intestine. Sheep skin. Sheep skin. Yeah. Uh, they don't stretch and therefore are not accommodating for all users. They are. It, it hey, is in 1942. Shocking. That's all you had. Like, do you ever I mean, see that next to the other condoms, like just walking by at the store? Oh, and you them. think like, what? who's using sheep's intestine? Why? I wanted to see, like, is this a superior condom? Is There's the gross no factor all that's keeping me away from a superior condom experience? I had that thought. And I got it. And literally, there's no stretchiness to it, really. Yeah, like, it's an you know, intestine. at the base of a condom, like... There's less stretchiness to it. I've also tried like, them. Yeah, like, you know, you grab the base of the condom and, like, like you know, you, you pop it over and then roll it down. I'm not going to give a whole... Dis dip yeah, I'll let me get my pants We've on. all worn condoms. <laughs> <laughs> not all of us. Not all of us. Guys. Not all men have penises, Taylor. You said you tried this. <laughs> Did you try this just get hard and slip it on? Or is it like, hey, baby, I've got this new condom. It's going to oh, rock no. your world. No, this was no, just a test run. This was just okay. Yeah, yeah. You never want to break something out for the first time with a with, with, you know, with an audience, right? You do your, you mm -hmm. test your material first to the mirror. Good. No, and, totally uh, agree. Like a small a small group, and then you work your way up to to stadium. I start with a focus you group. Get Kevin yeah. Hart mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's what you do. And then you realize anyway, early it's gross. Anyway, like like without making a my dick so big thing, um, like like <laughs> they're not accommodating for like most the average penis, I would say. Like okay. like like they're they're really small at the base. Like I don't know who they're made for. Maybe like Asian Scotsman for those. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but but it, I found it to be far too small for not just me, but like any normal man <laughs> trying to fix that. So not good for the girthier listeners here. <laughs> Correct. And not good for people Correct. who like are not allergic to latex. Like there's a better solution than animal oh, no. intestine. Absolutely. Imagine 
being like a teenager or something and you're about to get laid for the first time and maybe you've never been to the hospital or been sick and you don't know that you're allergic to latex and you slide that thing on it you probably would i don't know how long that takes but i imagine the next day would be all sorts of hell it'd be horrible because like if you were like a you know teenager losing your virginity you'd be too into it to even realize it'd be like the next morning in the shower like ow the water it's burning my dick and my dick's all red and and lumpy (laughs) what's wrong with it yeah (laughs) Latex. We have someone in our in our hangout who was in a real tight latex. It's not a gimp suit unless it has a mask, is it, Kyle? Was that a that was a? Re- you know, I I wouldn't call that a gimp suit. Um, it, it was more of like a like a futuristic techno kind of Eon Flux thing or something. I don't know, but yeah, he it, was. It was pretty uh, Tronish. He was in so there like a real cyber? good. Cyber. Yeah. And kind he has of a like cyberpunk sex sex slave kind of yeah. kind of thing going on. All right, all right. Um, tell me more. I'm listening. And, uh, he, yeah. loops he looks like a guy who like, gets in. yeah, which sounds. And awful. I don't mean the way you're thinking. I mean, he like puts lube everywhere. Like he's got to get in there. Yeah. He says he puts it on Tight his arms, fit. his legs, and you have to just slip the whole thing on. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, imagine, you know, your skin sticking to leather at, at that degree of pressure and how leather. impossible it would be to get out. They'd have to cut you out of those things. Yeah, um, it sounds terrible. I mean, but he did dressed up like that. He looked like like a gay man who came from the future to teach new sex tricks to people in the or past. To fight, crime. Like he, to fight crime. To fight crime yeah. and have gay sex. He's got the, guns and stuff. The perfect you know, hero like, for 2023. <laughs> I'm literally yeah. imagining a gay RoboCop in bondage now. Yeah, and that's He and would he appreciate that off. description. Yeah. He's a cool guy. He's a cool yeah. guy. And it really, it made me self-conscious that it's like there's no amount of lube <clears> that <throat> I could have put on to fit in something like that. I would no. love... Can you imagine how bad the average person would look in a latex suit like oh. there would be there no there'd be if i had to wear a wet suit in front of people right now i'd pretend to be ah, so- come on the water's not that cold guys i'll be fine Taylor, oh, it's, it's like park thing. It's like <laughs> jumping. have any no, of you just, guys ever been out of shape fucking, and like jumped in the pool with your shirt on thinking you're gonna fool people and it just like shrinks <laughs> down and it's like no i'm still out of shape and everybody knows it would be like that uh, yeah the, the mexican laborer trick yeah where you uh. <laughs> where you jump in with your t-shirt on no that that only draws more attention to your overweightness i've never been the level of fat where i had to wear a t-shirt in the pool but like I've also never been the level of fit that I could like put on a wetsuit without love handles being a, a, a fucking issue. Like, and you just look so fat and bad. And I bet like my, like your thighs would jiggle just in a bad Why way. Why don't though. they make more flattering wetsuits? I bet they could like, like I think there's mm. a market there. I bet there's a whole bunch of d- people who have money who would love to get into scuba or whatever you wear wetsuits for. And, uh, and they don't do it because there aren't flattering scuba suits. Yeah. They need to be, maybe a baggy wetsuit. Yeah, like, a little could, little little fringe. What? Mm-hmm. Like Gene Co. Isn't that counterintuitive to have a baggy exactly wetsuit? Exactly like Gene Co's. Yeah, I don't but think I mean, be an issue. you just have to weather out like or meter out like what do you prefer, safety or like not being mocked? Yeah, I like or, to look good while I dive underwater. I'm yeah. gonna be the sexiest bitch in this cave. I'm gonna be down there taking photos of crabs, and I'm gonna come back up, and people are gonna be laughing because they took a picture of my fat fucking love handles t- and enjoying oh. the crabs, and it's gonna ruin my whole day. And oh. I'm gonna go, man. Well, now no, I'm gonna no, have you to get, go you get a dark the... one with some stripes and contours, like you know, like vertical stripes or. No, it'd make me, when the green piece comes out, thinks you're thinks you're in trouble. I'd, I'd have to do that thing I do sometimes at all inclusive resorts it's where gorgeous. I like. But I, I like eat two hot dogs at one buffet and then I leave and go to a different one so they don't see me eat four mm. at the same oh, that's, buffet. That's that's the buffet dark. is unlimited. You just are too ashamed <laughs> to eat all those hot dogs. I don't know what I, I don't know if that's the lowest level though, because once you give up on the shame, then you that's probably a lower level when you just order all mm. you're like, you know what? The four was a, was a lie anyway. Give me six. Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was a lie. I've actually been going to three vendors. Just give me all six. Yeah, sir. it's like that shit, like ordering a pizza, and I'm like, and garlic knots and a large. What else does everybody want? <laughs> buy, buy, <laughs> give me a lava cake. Yeah, I, tur- yeah. I turn on music and disco lights when I answer the door. <laughs> so the thing is, I think there's a party happening. If food didn't make you fat. I would eat the most ridiculous diet. Do you know how many Wendy's I've driven by and not bought French fries from? I want them. I always want them. I constantly <laughs> crave more French fries. I, I would do it. Every McDonald's, every Wendy's, every Chick-fil-A. I, I would be 
eating constantly. My car would have just snacks and shit all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's the world I want to live in, where you could like control your calorie burning rate. So you could just be like, <laughs> like, all right, I'm on five thousand calories a day for life. Like, it and would then just go. But it, you would it still smell like heat. Wings. It would hurt to touch me. <laughs> 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 he said you'd still smell like. Wings. Yeah, because because you would have to burn it all out. Like it would just all the Wendy's would like come out of your pores. I you could give your wife that. a hug and be like, "Oh my God, you smell like, like Wendy's fries." I want to lick the salt off your face. Woody, why do you smell like Wendy's in a vanilla candle? Uh, it's just my scent. Because <laughs> that's all I do now. Just overeat. So, that. That'd be great. A world. What's no your calories. favorite kind of fry then? I think McDonald's Ooh. takes the cake as far as fast food. Definitely. I'm not, I'm not on that team. And the reason is that their fries are cut so thin, they get cold quickly. Mm -hmm. And my McDonald's fry experience usually involves cold fries. Don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's never been a problem. Yeah, I've, eat it quickly. I've always heard. <laughs> <laughs> I've been alpha. I'm, 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 I'm done with. My, usually, unironically, I'm half done with my McDonald's meal by the time I'm about to turn back onto the road. <laughs> <laughs> You got, whole, just, you got the whole. Just got the fry thing. You're my mouth burns, but better too hot than too cold. Come on. <laughs> I prefer a heartier fry. I don't like the fat, the standard fast food fry. So Arby's curly fries have always been a favorite, especially the okay. ones that are like those little, cur like, like they're like a cylinder. They're so tight. I know wound. what you're talking about. Yeah. I like a little bit, of, little bit of spice on there. And they're mm -hmm. seasoned. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. So, but my favorite fry is probably the Zaxby's French fry. Those of you in the, who aren't Ooh. in the South don't know. But it's a it's like a crinkle fry. It's a crinkle cut French fry. And then they like hit it with some paprika seasoning salt shit. And it tastes good. And it's a hearty fry that has like potatoey fluff inside. Whereas McDonald's fries are mostly just a crunchy exterior with nothing inside. Oh, yeah. McDonald's yeah. fries are like those fried chips you chip. buy at the Asian supermarket that are super crunchy. Yeah, I know what you're talking mm -hmm. about. And then they go good with the Zach sauce, too. I've always been an In-N-Out fangirl myself. Like, I Never do did. love their fries. But the best fries are the big, fat, thick, like, wedge fries you get at a restaurant somewhere. Those just are good. No fast food makes those. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. hearty fries. Like, I want it to be a piece of potato, I guess, more than, like, I want it to be closer to a baked potato than a potato chip. How about this? Are there any fries that you don't like? Because every kind you just named, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, I'm Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A has those. Good um, call. Their fries suck. Has Wait, Chick Fil A is so good at everything, fries? but then they what? break out that those waffle fries and huh. they yeah, get like seasoning being rationed, bad and gross, and uh, and I don't know. They're just not overall a, a, a well seasoned or tasty fry. Yeah, the seasoning is a huge letdown. It's like salts being rationed. There's not a good seasoning on their fries. Mm -mm. And if I'm it's eating... A, it's a real white person fry. I don't like... Clearly not. We're white. And we need... I need some salt. I've been whiter trained, than us. Like whiter than us. Like like, like, like an Irish person. White. Oh, yeah. There, there's a number of like a white people Irish that just don't person. eat spice or flavor. <laughs> They'll just put the chicken in there with no seasoning and just bake it. And it'll come out solid white. An albino I've never Irish seen somebody person. do that. <laughs> like, like, like he, he hates people with like tans. <laughs> Get that skin, cocksucker! <laughs> oh, those southern ever... Irish. Fuck them. Like, <laughs> oh, oh. Y'all ever have your grandparents get mad at Italians? My like your grandparents, grandparents are like I don't want my granddaughter associating with that dark-skinned Italian. He's yeah, so I mean, Greek. Well, so whatever. Greek. Yeah, those are, they can't those even are crazy get people. You know, you you look at them, you, well, you see that's a. It, like, like, I mean, come on, Fair. Taylor. Look at Taylor. Look at him. You see it. Yeah, the it is... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go greasy and pow. <laughs> that was a good one. My yeah. mother's coloring is pretty much a mirror of Kyle's. And when my father brought her home, my grandmother said, she's a little bit swarthy. <laughs> wow! <laughs> swarthy. Oh, that's an ancient word. I love it. That's, so, that's an old dude. I haven't heard anti-Italian so fucking long. <laughs> Or Greek, yeah, Greek and Italians. I would imagine they're the ones being called swarthy. Maybe like mm -hmm. Turks, Turks, Greeks, Turks Italians. I picture sure. them getting hit with the swarthy remark the most. But I haven't mm -hmm. heard swarthy from someone under the age of eighty ever. I've only Same. ever read it in like older literature, like a book about <laughs> pirates or something. You read the Oliver Twist, the Swiss Family Robinson, or something. Yeah, exactly, probably. like like something written turn of the century, like the other one. Oh, I wanted to talk about um, if it's okay. I, I, first of all, glad that you worked out that 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 whole thing. I think about you every now and then. Aww. Whenever I have a a friend or a loved one who's got a a health concern or whatever, I'm like, look, it's not that bad. We'll get this cleared up. <laughs> no, there's this guy named Drifter on the internet. I know. Let me. You know about the Hat Man? 
They'll be like, no. I'm like, and you never want to know. So yeah. fucking <laughs> stiff upper lip. It's just leukemia, pussy. Like you could be mm-hmm. drifter, and and they'll you right away it perks demons. them up. It perks them up. But no, serious. I'm glad you're not like fucking fighting ghosts or like you know you were on that Dan Aykroyd path there for a while. I thought oh. it was getting scary. <laughs> I was never <laughs> unaware of that. Like, just so you guys know, I never like believed that was reality. I just couldn't unchange the way th- or change the way I was perceiving things. I was just sure, getting yeah. fucked at like the mitochondrial level. Mm-hmm. I I kind of get that in like I have had dreams where I wake up and I'm like mad at Jackie in real life, knowing that it's irrational and that it's not okay, and that I need to not project that. Like, keep it inside until you come to your senses. Yeah, but I still <clears throat> feel mad. Like, yeah, the, the emotion is the same, even though I know the <laughs> cause is a lie. I can usually well, knock that out with a shower. I've like, I've, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And like, like sometimes I'll just be in a bitchy ass mood. Like, like sometimes, and I can feel it. I, and, and I've, I'll warn people in my life, I'll be like, look, what you just said, there was nothing wrong with it. You're just having a conversation. But I can tell that I, I feel like a piece of shit today. And I almost went off on you just then for no reason, just because I want to fight and I want to be mean. So we shouldn't talk. <laughs> Give me a little space for a couple hours because I'm 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 a real bitch right now. You don't want to cantankerous. With me. I can for feel it. Like I, I I'm feeling like mean and angry and like bitter about some nonsense. And I'm like, shit. There's a mean guy inside me who wants to lash out. I better like I better tell my loved ones to keep their distance from. <laughs> I hurt somebody's fucking feelings or or vice versa. Something some bad's gonna happen. It's good. You I like the way you fair. handle it. Like, I'm grumpy. Let me finish my breakfast, watch some YouTube videos, and circle back to you at 1030. Yeah. Like, like, really I can tell, mature, like, honestly. I, well, I'm, I can, like, tell that I'm going to be a piece of shit. Like, 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 and, I, and I know that it's not, like, really me. It's just, like, how I'm feeling right then. And I'm just in a bad stance. I'm coming from a bad place. Yeah. Um, and it's never anything that serious. It, it, could be, it could be a compounding thing. Like, I have a bad dream. I'll have a sad dream, and I'll wake up all bummed out. And then, like, oh... Let me talk. I, I told Taylor right before the show. Here's my morning. <clears throat> <laughs> I get up around six or seven a.m. and uh, I take my dogs out. It's been like that for a couple months now, and uh, like like on this sort of sleeping from eleven p.m. till six or seven a.m. and I'm on that sleep schedule, no naps nice. or anything. And um, I get hush. I'm talking about you. Stop. <laughs> Don't fucking bark. Um, <clears throat> so I get up and I take the dogs out and I make my fucking delicious coffee. I'm really good at making coffee. Um, I'm like, I got my milk all frothed up and my special coffee beans that I grind myself. I don't pick her up. She'll bark. And uh, so I'm heading up my stairs back up here to my office. I'm going to watch some YouTube shorts, smoke a little and, uh, and drink my morning coffee and uh, check in to check on my Tarkov traders because that's what I like to do in the morning. Check the market. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I make it to step 12. And that's when I step in the dog vomit that I didn't know was there because mm. it was dark. And my foot, come, my left foot comes out from under me and my hip hits that 12th step. And because I'm a, I'm a man, uh, I, I prioritize not spilling that coffee. I'm like, we're saving this drink. And so I went down a dozen steps screaming no <laughs> on my ankle, my hip and my elbow going, bah, 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 bah. no, 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 no. And every bump. I'm like splashing the wall with more and more hot coffee. <laughs> I, I, if I had just thrown it in the air on the first <laughs> at the beginning of the fall, it would have been oh. better, right? I'd have made less of a mess. So not only am I at the bottom in a heat, in a lot of pain, but I'm covered in coffee. <laughs> and, and, dog so vomit. Whole, and dog vomit. And the whole staircase is too. And the wall. And, uh, and that, that was the beginning of the day. Yeah, and at least it's coffee, Where- so not something that stains horribly. I my you know my mind's like auto completing his story and he says because I'm a man and I'm like you told your bitch to clean up the vomit right that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the auto complete on this sentence went and yelled I mean, at his dog would, Go clean that. I think it, I'll, I'll, I would say that if you've got um, a good partner after they see you fall down a dozen stairs they're already cleaning it up well, <laughs> yeah, you know they're, they're, yeah. they're already cleaning it up because they know you just went down a dozen fucking steps they know what happens if they don't oh they know, the implications again. there the implications there. <laughs> conor mcgregor knows it better than anyone there's uh, some not lady. better than dana white there's a controversy there <laughs> well look dana dana white will slap a bitch mm-hmm. conor mcgregor will beat her ass and toss her off his yacht and then deny the charges um, she's she's uh, got saved by the Red Cross or like the Coast Guard or something. She decided it was safer to try to swim to shore. Wait, what? He threw a woman off a yacht and then she had no. To swim she actually to shore? jumped for safety. She says she she said that he was beating her or molesting her or whatever, and then she like jumped overboard to to get to safety. That's he, her story. 
I read that's this story. It sounded like she jumped overboard to avoid rape. That that's yeah. How that's the general vibe I got too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, got, what time of day was it? He said, I "Good news, night. guys. I might be going up coasting the ultimate fighter this season. Can you believe it?" And we all got real excited because it'd be great <laughs> to have him on the show again. And uh, and nobody else said shit else. Oh. The season panned out in, in his world because then. because this isn't the first time that someone has made an accusation like this like this and we know he lives like a, a wild ass lifestyle with like women and drugs and yachts so shit he probably did it right like like I mean or maybe not a man's the man's like a quarter billionaire or whatever the fuck he we don't is know. And I've never been invited got, on the yacht. and I'm sure he doesn't have like the the highest quality. People in general, let's, let's not even just pick out women. I bet his friends in general are kind of shitty people. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah he's Irish. There you go. <laughs> Have she you guys noticed people. that there's been a lot of accusations lately? Like a lot of very popular people. Get, you got Andrew Tate. You got Justin Roiland. You got Andrew Callahan. Uh, now Connor McGregor. And it's just, it's been busy lately. Um, the Justin really Roiland stuff is particularly that. nasty. If you've seen it, he's been texting minors and Fuck. Uh, the, yeah, the district. Right? Of, say that again. Can I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I want to hear what you have to say with this. The charges are like false imprisonment and something else that implies like domestic cheating. abuse, right? Domestic abuse. And the, it was false imprisonment by intimidation, coercion, or other methods. So basically, if you try to leave, I'll beat you. And she was afraid and she stayed. Okay. Now you said something about texting minors. I hadn't heard that. So uh, if you Google Justin Roiland minors, uh, you will find some Reddit threads and Twitter threads where a variety of people uh, claiming now this is not like scientifically police backed up or whatever, uh, claim that Justin Roiland was texting them uh, when they were teenagers ranging from 15 to 16, I think so. and. Uh, I read some of the messages and one of them was something like, I'm drunk and horny in Atlanta. Holy shit. Why are you such jailbait? Can't wait for you to grow up or something to that general extent. Uh, even today, there was somebody who worked at Squanch Tendo Games that said that Justin Roiland was not allowed to be involved in the writing process uh, at WB Studios because of his sexual harassment against some of the staff there. Wait so. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Why are you such jailbait? I can't wait for you to grow up. These are the words of a gentleman. This is a man who is waiting <laughs> oh, for an team. Those are the words of a creepy guy who would have been <laughs> old, like <laughs> older than me and <laughs> some of us at the same time. <laughs> and there was more people putting stuff out there. So it, the Justin Roiland stuff is spiraling out well, of see, control. Well, see, I don't like that stuff because like, like you just said, like I read a comment on Reddit. Someone said that they're it's a little not girl. not proven. <laughs> I saw this little girl on Reddit told me all about it. She she texts Justin <laughs> and he talks dirty <laughs> to her. You know what I mean? Like like that aside, I I want to see more about like what he did to his spouse or or whomever this this whole thing's about. Like I want I always want details. I want nitty gritty bloody details because otherwise it's whenever we're afraid to like use adult language in adult matters and and we and we get in this like cloud of I don't know um uh, pleasant words that, that that are that are abstract it's like well, wait what did he fucking do what how many fingers i need to know it matters like, like like exactly what did he do and as far as creepy celebrities and their underage girlfriends i don't know how seinfeld gets such a goddamn pass okay the man was 39 she was 17 and Ooh. we're not talking about his what are you gonna message. do we're talking about his steady girlfriend <laughs> It's fucked up. You got I Woody dare, Allen too. I dare anyone to stop me. What, what, <laughs> like in North Carolina, that's legal. Oh, that's, it, it was illegal. That's legal it. where he was. Yeah. Oh, uh, saying, that's absurd. Yeah, we're talking. You guys about might remember this. Do y'all remember? I think it was JX twenty three back in the Machinima days. Uh, he, in his thirties, he hooked up with a fifteen year old. But the age of consent in whatever European country he was living in was 15, so it was perfectly legal, but he got dropped from Machinima anyway. But legal and ethical are not right, uh, people out there, PKA listeners. What was his name? JX? DX? Uh, JX23, I think it was. It was J and then EX23. I hope I'm not putting this on the wrong person. That would be bad. It's been like 12 years ago. (laughs) <laughs> things that happened 12 years ago yeah you better watch out somebody will show up over there with a wooden stake and put you out of your misery 
<laughs> I wish I was a vampire. Then I could be like a big alpha chat at night and go murder people in goth clubs or whatever they're doing these days. Couldn't eat any garlic, though. Let's see. I yeah, want to I'd... talk about um, the, the whole Ukrainian thing a little bit. I saw that. What's uh, new? I... Fill me in as though I don't know. It's a big deal. of the past couple of months. <laughs> it's a really big deal. Um, so there's been this squabbling from the beginning between the United States and uh, and the other, and the European allies about who's going to send what and how is it going to get financed and and will you do it first you know because it's like if the US gives them uh, rifles then it's perfectly fine for Poland to give them rifles Russia's not going to single out Poland now and be like ah oh, you gave them rifles you're next and they'll be like no, the US gave them rifles it's it's kind of like anything the US will do everybody else is like all right that's the new line we can do that now it's, it's all good and uh, it was everything up on two tanks until like a week ago, maybe a couple days ago. And they, they were talking about Bradley vehicles, which are like armored U.S. fighting vehicles. They have, I guess, a, is that a 25 millimeter cannon? Something like that. Um, it's a the uranium depleted vehicle. shells. Things but it's not a tank. Tanks are um, oh, close to tanks. It's like an APC, MRAP, yeah. something like that. Looks like yeah, there's so many designations and people get butt hurt. So I don't even get, I don't even get, try to get specific. But, In a movie, um, but anyway, they changed their mind. And they, they, the U.S. had said, we're not going to send M1 Abrams tanks, not only because, mostly because they mentioned the upkeep and, uh, and everything that's required to keep them operational in the field. You have to have a lot of infrastructure and a lot of experts and a lot, a lot of uh, people working on them continuously. You have to have parts there and all that stuff. But then they just changed their fucking mind and said they're going to send 31 M1 Abrams tanks. And uh, and Germany was like, oh, really? Well, <laughs> we'll send a few leopard tanks. And not only that, anybody else who has leopard tanks that wants to send some, go ahead. And so there's plenty of countries who have leopard tanks. Are, uh, are those our best tanks? Are the, yeah, what, uh, kind so of. We're, so we're going to send the version of our tanks that has uh, the newest targeting stuff, the newest scopes and all that stuff. The thing they're not getting, and it's the thing that no one gets, is our fancy armor. Uh, we've got this depleted uranium armor that, and we don't ship that out to anybody. That the only people operating those tanks are Americans. So n none of us are tank experts, but I've been coming up no. to speed on this too. The M1 M1 Abrams is particularly hard to maintain. It has a turbine engine, mm -hmm. and and like, and I think it runs on jet fuel. It does. Like you, could, you could take your average jackass who maintains his own dirt bike, ask him to work on a diesel engine, and he'll be like. All right, I understand like 30% of this, 50%. Mm -hmm. of it. You put them on a fucking jet engine, turbine, jet fuel burning, whatever. And it's like, I don't even get it. How does it start? How do, how do you convert a turbine into like trans yeah. moving? The whole thing is confusing to me. I, I, I'm, and I can't be alone in that people starting to maintain these tanks, like understand it even less than you're you know. not. I, I think there's a reason, though, and this is my tinfoil hat conspiracy reason. I think it's very obvious that we're getting amazing field data and testing data mm -hmm. from all of our, maybe not cutting edge, but maybe just barely behind current generation tech to see how it fared. And the same kind of thing with the tanks. It's like, well, you know, people have been complaining these tanks are hard to maintain. Let's see how they do in a shit environment. Let's send them to Ukraine and get some data. These tanks were designed Probably. from the get-go to fight Russians in Eastern Europe. That's what really? they're for. They're fucking okay. right. that. That's what they're all about. So now it's like, oh, shit, there's Russians fighting in Eastern Europe. You think these will help? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think they'll make a huge difference. And <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting tanks as you'd think. That America's sending 31 tanks. Yeah. And I think the UK is sending 16 and someone else is sending 16. It seems like a decent amount. Okay, like, well, maybe my numbers are low. I'm like 31 uh, tanks. Don't they fight like, I don't know, 10 at a time or something? I'm not sure how this works. Yeah, it, it seemed like it, right? Like uh, we looked at how like those armored divisions were made up. And if memory serves, it's like wrong. 10 tanks and then like 30 ar of those APC type vehicles and then like 300 men. I think I think, I think that's a, essentially what it is, roughly speaking. I, and to me, I'm like, does 30 tanks turn the tide? Because the news is acting like it is. Now let's make it 60 because let's pretend the mm -hmm. leopard is just as good. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, let's do 60 tanks turn the tide. I'm not sure. One interesting thing about tanks is so far we've sent mostly defensive weapons, right? And the artillery is defensive. The the, the guns. That, well, like, well, I know there's a fine line between defensive and offensive, but tanks are meant to advance your troops to take back the land. 
And it's going to be a little while. Kyle mentioned that there's a lot of training and logistics that needs to happen. So they're not going to have the tanks in two weeks. But they're talking about mm -hmm. like, hey, spring. as we enter spring and the ground gets less muddy mm -hmm. and they can start moving forward, that's when these tanks are really going to make a difference. Another yeah. reason that we've held up, aside from the logistics, is Russia's saber rattling, maybe. Like, it seemed like first we give them guns and Russia's <laughs> like, you sure you want to fuck with this? And then we give them like bigger guns and javelins and Russia's like, I don't know. I'm thinking about a nuclear option. And then we give them a high Mars and Russia's like, I really think I should like press the button. And now we give them tanks just boiling this frog slowly. Uh, I don't know what's after tanks. What oh, jets? Jets, jets, drones? Jets, jets come after tanks. Um, right? I it, the spring is going to be interesting, right? Because not only is the, the snow going to presumably go away and the ice thaw out so they can actually move around and maneuver, but they called up that second group of half a million Russians. That'll be there in the spring. And one thing the UK has been doing in particular is they fly 10,000 Ukrainians to the UK every month and they train them on tanks and shit like getting them up to NATO spec on all the weapon platforms. And then every month they send 10,000 more battle hardened, battle trained Ukrainians back home and they know how to use the shit now. And there's going to be, you know, 60,000 more of those type of troops on the battlefront for Ukraine by the time um, spring comes around. But again, half a million more Russians, 60,000 more Ukrainians, um, plus all the American Light intelligence rods. and hardware that, that, that we can give away what's uh what, what's what's else. happened with the the line the battle line the the map control i like watch what? this every day and it's to me like my amateur ass looking at it much ado about nothing like it literally like the russians took a kilometer and they took this village and i look at the village and it's like <laughs> my house guest house and stable is as significant as <laughs> yeah. this bullshit ukrainian village like yeah. hey you got no wendy's there <laughs> the woodworth <laughs> residence has been seized by putin <laughs> yeah, like, ah! i have as much square footage as that fucking village does like is why why are i yeah. watching this news uh, from six thousand miles away yeah. i don't know um and and like again a kilometer like it, these lines are not moving in any significant way in the winter time uh. it seems to me I guess that yeah. makes sense. Uh, and there was movement in the Wagner group. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, one of their commanders uh, defected to, was it Finland, Sweden? It was one of those countries. And he tried to make a deal to offer to get amnesty in exchange for evidence for war crimes. And there was also issue with the Wagner group and the Russian government. But for those of you that are watching, the Wagner group is uh, mercenaries, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they were complaining about being ill-equipped. like. One time they showed up and there were guns, but the ammo shipment was two days late. So just had to sit there and wait and do nothing and yeah. terrifying stuff so, like that, which so begs the question. The expensive uh, PMCs are not being well equipped. We know the grunts aren't well equipped. And you talk about that nuclear option. What me and my friends and a lot of other people speculate is what if Russia's nuclear options are way weaker than we think they are? I guess it doesn't take many to end the world. But if they say, oh, we've got 10,000 nukes, what if it's really like, 40 that are really functional and good i think it's a my numbers are probably bad but i think it's around 4500 or 5000 or something like that that we each have it's they have slightly more than us um i was watching a whole thing about this earlier today it's it, it's weird like like we signed this whole uh treaty uh, against having any sort of like blanket missile defense because both parties need to be vulnerable for there to be mutual mutually assured uh destruction right one of us can't mm -hmm. have a, an overshield and uh but 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 you hope that we built one anyway right <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like we oh. you hope that we don't keep our word all the time right i, I want my government to be honest to a point Dude, it's countries a lot of just as likely too. that america has shit that we haven't told them about as it does that russia pretended to have shit that they don't really have like that's the mismatch <laughs> I love I it. Watch, I, There's no way this. either side stopped developing that. They're like, all right, like fingers yeah. crossed behind their back. Oh, like, I can believe that I, Russia secret didn't did. develop didn't develop it. Like, no, no, I, not like they did it, but like they definitely keep trying to do that shit. They just keep it yeah. under wraps. They no, I, I think you've got like people because they'd want to get the edge on the US. They'd want to put that those resources into their own pocket, buy a fucking yacht, and pretend they did it. 
Like that, that turns out why that's a part of why the Russian army is so weak, that those bullets they don't have that the uniforms, the winter clothing that they don't have. It's because some asshole at the top bought a boat. Yeah. And everything that they're fighting with is stuff that was paid for by the Soviet union in the eighties. And almost nobody has the new stuff because they're all in the boat. Like you said, (laughs) Yeah, uh, all the resources, I should say. I can't. I don't imagine yeah. you can make a good boat out of guns. I'm imagining a bunch of AKs <laughs> welded together into a giant yacht. That, well, that would still float. <laughs> that'd be if a sick enough water. That'd be a sick one. But I, I, well, with all these, I've been playing lots of RTS, so I know Ooh, those tanks okay. are going to be incredibly beneficial for establishing map control for what for the Ukrainians. Oh, yeah. They're going to be able to push in. They're going to be able to distract over here, and then pop, 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 going around the side. Don't. Get me in the mix. I've been playing so much AOE too. I can. I'm. I'm. I'm still bad, but like, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting getting better at it. And you know, uh, Taylor. Seriously though, can't a tank go... occupy a town? Like, couldn't one tank reasonably occupy a small town of people that only have small arms? I, I imagine I so. Yeah. Oh, I mean, no. they can't. They can't stop like actual shit and guerrilla stuff from going on. But it would yeah, be enough no. to be like. Yeah, you can't drive your uh, armored, uh, you know, death style truck through the the road anymore. So so Drifter phrased the question in a clever way. Like, can a tank hold a town when they all have only small arms? Sure, hypothetically. But these people are supplied by a motivated NATO and there's a javelin behind every tree. Oh, I thought he was talking about in the other way, like the Ukrainian tank. Sitting in the oh. or the leopard sitting in the village. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, okay. Tank can ways. absolutely hold that village. Woody, could a tank hold your property? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my best gun's like Jackie's a like, gal. is he still there? He's like, he's still there. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> the tank guy's still there. Go out and talk to him. You go fucking talk to him. <laughs> I'm not talking to the tank guy. He's got one of those Russian hats on. No, <laughs> fuck you. I want- I'm not doing that. I've been watching these YouTube videos about, um, I don't know, a couple of the different world wars, but also about the Cold War. And uh, I watched some good stuff about uh, the nuclear, the Cold War submarine stuff today. And uh, this naval intelligence guy was, it's fun to, they have Russians and like US naval intelligence being interviewed from the shit they did in the 70s and 80s. And it's funny to see these sailors still kind of be like, at like, well, you know, maybe this happened. And uh, and then there were some people who knows where they came from, but, you know, they were uh, sympathetic to the situation, whoever they were, <laughs> you know, they talked like that a lot. And yeah. the, the U.S. guy was like, you know, we wanted to humiliate them whenever we could because we knew we were better. We were so far ahead. Our technology was just so much better. So, you know, there came a time when a Russian nuclear submarine just ran aground, you know, and on their screens, it looked like clear channels ahead you know everything was all good for some reason we don't know why and it just you know it ran into norway (laughs) it was and it was like i was like really that happened and then they like show the newspaper articles and like the cursed or something what was it called do you remember that was one of the disasters i can't like identify them by name um and, and they talked about the first nuclear uh American submarine. It was well, the first one ever wasn't a, an American one, and the Russian was like, "Our scientists told us it had to be lies." They said, "A, a nuclear reactor that's the size of a city block, almost." No, no, you don't put that in a submarine. But they had, they had. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big win. <laughs> yeah. If you were watching the, that, did they have a Stanislav Petrov story from the Soviet Union? Did uh, I wouldn't know it by his name. What? what uh, he was the guy who's broadly credited for saving the world. He was working at one of their detection facilities, oh, yeah. an engineer. He helped uh, design it, and their facility detected a nuclear missile being launched at Moscow. And he said, it's really weird. They're launching one, and yeah. then another one showed up, and I think maybe a third one. And he, in his role of overseeing the facility that he helped create, was supposed to call the Kremlin and give them an opportunity for a counterattack. And he said that he just didn't believe that America would send such a small attack, but he knew the guy that he would call was a war hawk and would inevitably start a nuclear war. And he said he yeah. just didn't want to be responsible, even though one of the missiles was coming for his facility. He said that he on a just totally lied and said, oh, guys, it's a system error, system error here. It's just one of those bugs. Don't worry about it. Don't call it in. It did turn out to be a system error, but he didn't know that at the time. And uh, he got 
thoroughly punished and uh, demoted and sent out to Siberia for that one. That guy's a hero. That yeah. that would be. It's probably all lies that he told. You got to be caught fucking a general's daughter or something like that. Like, <laughs> no, I saved the world, please. <laughs> it's it's the world. Well, he'd make up a different lie that didn't make him look like he almost betrayed the Soviet Union to serve America. Oh, uh, see, that was just a that was a cover story. It's like no, uh, it looks I like they were going. I, I guess the U.S. Navy had had or has um, the submarine with wheels. So they they bring they bring That's it a down step back. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a good no. work of submarines so, and how they work. Yeah. And it travels so by road quickly across <laughs> It's across technically the amphibious. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I'm for sorry. doing like sneaky um um underwater stuff like messing with cables and uh and, and infrastructure underwater. So they just drive up to whatever they want to fuck with and park. And it doesn't oh. matter what the what the water currents do because they're sat there and then they're sending divers out to like go fuck with stuff. They, um, I guess the Navy had this entire, um, oh, there was this huge incident. I think it was, it was either it, Sweden, I think. Yeah, it's Sweden, where Swedish waters were being penetrated by Soviet submarines. And it was a huge problem. It was news stories. The, the public was told to spot them and report them. People were on the beaches with, with, with binoculars. <laughs> But they were they were depth charging them from the skies and they had depth charges planted all along the ocean 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 floor. So if they heard the boat near one of those, they could push a button like battleship and detonate a charge that was already there. Well, they hear they hear it. They hear the click, 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 click. They're oh fuck. Hit the big one. So this one guy hits the biggest mine ever, apparently. <laughs> and they they fuck up the nuclear submarine. And the next and it turns out that what was going on is that the British and the Americans were terrorizing the Swedish to make them not like the Soviets. Oh, no. <laughs> so so they, 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 they damaged I one of those submarines. That. Who knows what kind? Um, but it re- when, when our submarines get hurt, they release this like green goo that floats to the top in case they need to be rescued. It like makes a pool of green goo. And like, ah, right there in the goo. Uh. And that's uh, apparently only NATO vessels would do that. But anyway they went through this long story of how through chain of command, this guy was, he was in charge of the defense and he was like, I wanted to detonate the whole ocean floor. I wanted to set them all off. And they said, you only have permission to set off one. And I I couldn't understand. He's like, now I understand. I was a useful fool. And I was played. (laughs) Because I was technically a terrorist like in the they, they, and they let the americans or the british who, whomever it was like just leave they, they were like yeah hey, just, just chill chill they'll, they'll, they'll. but but the whole thing was blamed on the russians it was this huge international incident the russians were constantly denying um those i, I really like those history channel like youtube channels i think the one i've been watching is called dark skies or something they often add kind of a, a dark like spin on historical events it's like but little did they know the Americans were two steps ahead. You're like, oh, oh, oh what'd they do? <laughs> you know, like, when I listen to war stuff like, is amazing. War stories. Yeah. One time out of three, I feel like we're really the good guys. But that mm. track record makes it hard to really buy into us being good. What's your, what's, when were general. the bad guys? When were, the, when were we the most bad guy-ish? Recently, I don't like that we I invaded Iraq on Freed. the weapons of mass yeah. destruction. Thing. Liberated. A million Iraqis died, I'm told. Thousands of Americans died. And they had no proof of weapons of mass destruction, yet did it anyway. The proof they put in a single capital punishment case, like the I's they dot and T's they cross, is so much higher than what they put for killing a million Iraqis. And this might be, now I'm going off the rails. I honestly think that the assassination attempt on Bush Sr. is... A big motivator for why America actually attacked Iraq. Bush no, sir. Okay, okay, let's Hard disagree. If I'm pulling memories here, which have been damaged, I think Saddam Hussein was working on a way to export oil to Europe. Uh, so it would be, you know, we have the petrol dollar where uh, OPEC and Saudi Arabia and a lot of these mm-hmm. countries trade oil only on the U.S. dollar. Right. or with the U.S. dollar. I've heard uh, this Saddam too. wanted to bust that up and get a Euro oil trade going on. And the Bush administration had this invasion plan on the desk since like 92, ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I've the same thing happened with well. uh, Muammar Gaddafi. He wanted to send he oil from to Libya off. and to do it on the, you know, the Euro. And yeah, so- the U.S. dollar is kind of how big business is done. 
And anytime someone wants to change that fact, the U.S. gets awful fighty. Yeah, they fall down stairs. They fall out of windows. <laughs> they fall yeah. on their own knife collection. They have a heart attack. It's just so tragic. It Sometimes is. they stab those. themselves to death. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine killing yourself? I hate these assholes happening. that shoot themselves in the head three times. Yeah, in the back of the head twice, in like the trunk of his own car. Like the, the most complicated like suicide ever. Yeah. It's like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, don't forget yeah. the guy that exposed the Iran Contra scandal, where uh, the CIA was trading drugs uh, for to fund the Contras in South America. He died of a suicide not long afterwards mm. yeah had you ever seen the video we've talked about this is many years ago we talked about it on the show i found this from like ona opie and anthony they were watching this clip from like the late 80s early 90s of this dude in like california who invented an engine that ran on water and he was like it's not that powerful but there's lots of places to go from here if you have if you have tap water that'll run it distilled water will run it you don't have water use snow let it melt that'll run it ice can run it let it melt and like it was a local news story covering him like Steve Myers, brand new fuel cell could revolutionize energy use. And he died of being poisoned. He he was eating at a restaurant and he got up and ran outside and said, I've been poisoned. And then he died. And, <laughs> and it was ran, actually poison. OK, like, I mean, he, he didn't get a ton of attention, but yeah, he had Sounds a like water suicide. fuel cell. And then he was so excited about it that he had to poison himself at Applebee's or whatever. <laughs> like, oh, it just as I was watching the clip, like from like 92 or whatever, it's like, this guy should don't fucking talk about this, man. Like, like, why would you bring you? In you fairness, know that might have just cool. been Applebee's. It was yeah, Applebee's <laughs> taking There's something out wrong with that out. microwave yeah. there. Uh, but a lot of people that worked on uh, electric water or hydrogen cars there was a huge number of them that died of suicides and accidents and very few products ever came to market. A lot mm -hmm. of products, the notes were destroyed. So many weird, like t dozens, I couldn't even list specific ones. There's probably a w Wikipedia page that lists all the people that were working on water powered cars that committed suicide. Yeah. I, all the, dude, Steve, the, Stanley Meyer. That's I, the electric car thing. So Elon Musk in 2019 announces the Cybertruck. He says the Cybertruck will come out into mass production in 2021. And then it gets a little closer and he says, all right, all right, I meant 2022. And then it gets a little closer, all right, I meant 2023. But he said it like two weeks ago, late 2023, the Cybertruck is coming out. And my fucking retarded ass is like, is it for real this time? <laughs> oh, he's no. saying 2023. And it is 2023. I'm not sure he's done that move before. And, and you know, I'm seeing like some big fucking stamping machine show up in Texas. And they're like, it's for real this time. We have a car expert on. And he's like, it's not for real. It's not going to look anything like that. It can't look like that. It doesn't meet like passenger stuff. It, like, it's just a mess. And uh, uh, he just announced 2024. He pushed it a year like he has every year for the last three years. Oh, no. Did he? You're talking about yeah. passenger safety. That's because the cold rolled steel <clears throat> will deflect bullets and stop damage on a construction site. But if somebody hits you or you get hit, the car will not crumple. So your body will crumple. Well, the, yeah, that's how cars were like in the 50s. Like the, the, the cars kind of held up to head on collisions, but the people died inside. Yeah. yeah. Well, steel. it's not just it, it was. So, like, the modern construction of vehicles allows for this, like, slower deceleration because that's, you know, what's really hurting you. It's going from, we talk about going from 60 to z zero to 60 a lot, but going from 60 to zero is a, is a much more a serious problem. and yeah. impressive <laughs> thing. Um, it, it, and if you can go from 60 to zero and spread that out over a few more milliseconds, microseconds, whatever the fuck, that's the difference between people being alive and people being, you know, dead meat. And my dad's got a... Well, we built it together, that 1955 Chevrolet. And once we, we bought it, you know, just a wreck of a thing. And when we got the first coats of paint off, you could see this thing had been in a major collision such that it had been cut in half. This was two cars put together. <laughs> 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 it was like, what hit it? A train? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, cars are built a little bit different now. I, I don't know that, that because that thing's made of stainless steel, like a DeLorean or whatever the fuck it is, that, like, I'm sure it has crumple zones intended. Like, you can't. I hope. The N, what is it? The NSTCA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Association. Like, like they have, um, they have, like, regulations. Cars have to have a certain safety standard. 
-hmm. you can't just Which put a Tesla fucking, has like, had very buggy very road, high ratings car. consistently. Yeah, Tesla has. Yes, yeah, but like they haven't made a new thing since that that was safe since that. True. This will be their second car, realistically speaking. So, serious question. I was a huge fan of the Cybertruck. I wanted to buy one in 2019. Had the money ready. I'm a lot more skeptical now. Do you guys still want to buy a Cybertruck? We'll say, based on its mm. looks, let's say, yeah. and if what Elon says is true. Well, we'll see. The price also changed. Like, like, like I was like, not only is this thing only forty thousand dollars, which is kind of where ni nice trucks start nowadays. Like, fuck, mm -hmm. uh, inflation's rough, folks. And yeah. uh, and and it, it's like that's a hell of a deal. Not only is it electric, it's fast. It looks cool. It's novel. It kind of reminds me of the Warthog from Halo. I think I'd wrap mine green. I'd wrap it because I'd buy a black one, wrap it in green. When I got tired of being a fucking weeb i'd peel that shit off and be a normal human being and i'd have a oh, cool yeah. looking car it made okay. a lot of sense but since then it's like looking less and less likely that the thing is just gonna happen at all and more like look he's he, these days he is much more pt barnum than he is edison and that's hurtful for me to say because i like the spacex stuff and i was inspired when i saw him crying in that that spacex documentary that felt real to me that he has a passion for space flight and, and and all that shit he preaches about Mars. Uh, he and stuff. loves space. I gen dude, he owns a goddamn rocket company. I'm, I'm being serious. He, he <laughs> oh, okay. he's addicted to space. He he loves space. He went up there in the car. Like he, he loves trying to say that you know, I, I, that's a great analogy. Space. You can see the <laughs> PT Barnum aspect of his management of Twitter. That has been a complete and total shit show. And everywhere I go, he's got an army of simps. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a galaxy brain decision to require your employees to bring their own toilet paper because you're not buying anybody any or the bill. They don't own I the like building. That. The building is suing him because <laughs> they haven't paid rent since he took over and stuff oh, like well, that. So my faith in the angry? cyber. Are we, are we sympathizing with a landlord now? They're the <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm <laughs> sympathizing you know? with the landlord. <laughs> There's Satan, then landlords and then pedophiles. <laughs> where it goes. And then pedophiles. <laughs> you believe that these people are renting their property out to others at an affordable rate yeah I, shit I, I, yeti landlord i kind of am with the Musk. landlord on that one you can't just break your lease and not pay and, yeah, I, yeah well i'm with him i'm just not gonna de demonize elon musk because he didn't pay send the landlord rent. to space i don't care i like, demonize I care. elon musk for this and i've said it before if you tell me you're gonna finish painting this room in two days and it takes you three you made a mistake i get it we've all been there if you yep. tell me you're two days away and then it takes you 733 more days you lied in the first place and elon musk does that every fucking time yeah. it doesn't matter if he's talking about when we're going to be on mars when the cyber truck is going to drop how far his fucking cars could drive everything he says is a lie and an exaggeration and I'm frustrated by that more than anything else. He mm. he is like I think Kyle nailed it in that like he is infinitely more at this stage in his life Billy Mays than he is like oh, an yeah. inventor. Oh, don't, come on, like, he's uh, fair. Come on, the man is <laughs> incredibly. He's a he's a he's a pitch guy. Like that's what Elon is. The at this best point. pitch guy of all time. He's a, he's a he, give it give him credit. He's a good pitch guy. He gets he's attention the best for his shit. Ever but Steve Jobs well, I'd say Billy, Billy, Billy Mays. I, I think you're being unfair to Billy Mays. Billy Mays sold mostly good products. Billy Mays, Billy is Mays here, shit. high on cocaine, talking about kaboom. Like that's that's. Oh what wait, we just think. Oh, Billy I saw the best of all, all time. Right, so I, I love doing this. Yeah, I like Billy Mays. He was. He was I, good I thought at Kyle was saying Elon was the best of all time. So I like Elon's so I very good this, at it. But. I did this last night. I pull up CNN and I pull up Fox News and I go back and forth and and I don't oh. watch the programming because that's dreadful. I watch the commercials. Okay, I don't get a lot of commercials. This is where I can get. Them. I've got like, pharmaceutical. I got this Hulu package where I get like everything live and it's like mm. I have cable again. It feels good. It feels like home. Uh, and, and I go to weird. CNN. Their commercial is like this multiracial family that's like they need car insurance or something, and it's like some car insurance that's for specifically for like handicapped Poly Asians or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Poly Asians pretty high rates. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, little niche for me, but I guess you know you know know your viewership. And I, I slipped switched over to Fox News, and it was that my pillow cocksucker. <laughs> He's on there and he's he's got I sw I shit you not. He has pulled the crucifix necklace out at, so that it dangles and it not well. It's not hanging like a chain that you would wear outside cuz sometimes you know you wear a chain outside it's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. He has just like pulled it out enough to be like look right here. It's like dangling awkwardly right out of this little whatever oh, this Oh, it's not as long as is. it should be. So no. it's yeah. He like yeah. pulled 
It it could be. He just he's, he's just like so. It was clearly a last minute decision. Hold up, this is Fox News. We need more Jesus in this. No, no, this is a commercial. That's he's got, right. He, but well, no, he's, he filmed he's it. He's hawking pillows, and he's talking, and he's got a picture of Jesus Christ behind him with a thorny crown, and he's got, and he's got. He, I think the pillow cotton commercial? comes. Yeah. Yeah, a huge <laughs> yeah. picture of Christ with a thorny crown. <laughs> Taylor, it takes in my up, neighborhood if he were in those. the shot, it would be half of the screen. <laughs> those better it's be some good pillows. But people buy those. A big crucifix behind him, and then of course, like I think the cotton comes from Israel or some shit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's like on the. the oh. ni- Have you ever heard that guy? That guy loves Delta. Israel. <laughs> some Mesopotamian fucking cotton that the Lord blessed, and and he's just hawking this shit so hard. <laughs> and, and I had to turn all that shit off and go over to ESPN, um, where, where 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 they they advertise to me with Slim Jims and beer. <laughs> you know what the most unacceptable thing about his pillows are that I found out okay. is that if like his pillows they arrive all like compacted, well, yeah, and then you have to put them in the dryer. So it's like you're now you're making your own pillow. Like, oh, that's cool. And I just don't believe it's going to be that good. I would give it a fair shot. I'm not a you know a pillowist. Like, I would try it, but I don't want to have to make my own pillow. And what I think if, we're well what past the pillow, time of that Taylor. no pushback pillow. We want a firmer pillow now. What if the box Ooh, was shaped like? <laughs> it, what if the box was shaped like a Hebrew tomb with the stone rolled in the on the side? And he he was like, on the third day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put it out on the, third day and on the third day jesus rose rested oh it rises it has your pillow has risen <laughs> it has risen it has risen indeed so you like, wouldn't buy that but your grandma sure as heck would buy that yeah no honestly there's, we'll there's get no the fucking way my, my, my grandma would get higher quality pillows than that she's not she wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't buy a pillow she had to put in the fucking dryer is the my pillow bad is there a anything pillow, it's, it's not a bad pillow. Pillow. It's, i bet it's very a fine outspoken, pillow. um yeah. right wing and and you know oh, i think I know he went hard trump and and, yeah. and like maybe some other but it's a probably fucking pillow. said some awful it's things probably fine i'm sure it's a good pillow yeah how complicated does a pillow have to be exactly I have a few I, fancy pillows. Like, like, like I don't have like a matching set of pillows. I have like four unique pillows that mm. that that you would see on on like maybe the internet and be like, oh, what a funky pillow, and like never buy that hundred twenty dollar pillow <laughs> that feels like a bag of knots. <laughs> and you sleep this, on that? Yeah, I've got one where like if you like feel feel it, it feels like it's made of like stretchy rubber bands, like hundreds of them that are all like in there being. Comp- I don't know, and then and I've got like a couple of the gel pillows. You got stuffed animals too, right? Fuck oh, yeah. no, that's some weird shit. You go into a grown man's house and he's got stuffed animals. And look, if you've got some like plushies from some Star Wars shit or whatever, like that's all right. <laughs> but if you got like a busy bee that you need near you, this to, is like, an take... orange creamsicle. <laughs> yeah, if it's got a fucking name and it's not, e- you haven't even been ironic oh, and no. given it like a human name. Like this is Pete. <laughs> like, like you've went so far as to be like, this is Vanilla Dave. He lives in the oh, kingdom yeah. of fucking vanilla beans. And he, yeah, he sucks uh, my cock while the monkeys watch. <laughs> like, I, got, I got a bunch of stuffed animals. Uh, they're all like, like this, uh, like you, you put your neck in them, sore all the time. Just got something oh, that a little seems more decorative. Functional. And How being bad written, you get an exception. Oh, well, if I want to watch TV, I just do that. Okay, there you go. I see how it works. And look, I'm Simple. sweeping with a broad stroke here, but you know, you know, I'm sure some of y'all, not him, that have stuffed animals are normal, decent yeah. people. But, yeah. <laughs> but I like yeah. I'm custom people. stuffed animals. I'll My wife this. made in, me custom ones. They're pretty fun. Uh, and, well, that's and the other different. thing that's a, that's a, is, a, I feel a gift like from your wife. <laughs> I'll be honest. I feel like with like the current environment and the way it's been for a long time, like I've talked about how it feels weird as a, as a man, my age to talk to little kids in public, like, like, cause I, I, you'll have kids approach you be like, ha 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 ha. Like playing with balls in your neighborhood Nerd. or whatever. Like, yeah, like, like, know, frisbees or shit. <laughs> like, like there's children that live in my neighborhood and like their Frisbee will fly in the yard. And I want to like, yeah. sh- I'm thinking like, I'd love to throw Frisbee with those fucking kids. I really would. I like throwing Frisbee. I'm going to, I'm going to urge you not to follow that instinct. Dude, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Do it. You're going to get, get arrested. Do it. Do it. Charged Show them how strong you are. Something. Like, you think you can throw Frisbee fast and I'm hard? I'm whipping that bitch. I'm fucking doing the protect your face, bitches. <laughs> I'm going to think I'm cool. Spin. You put like a, like a squat. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I, I do the whole Xeno warrior princess. <laughs> <laughs> that shit decapitate little timmy That's over a there great idea no, they wouldn't mind that sure like it, i feel like if i bust your kid's nose with a baseball and he comes home they're like at least he didn't bust your ass like, like at least he's not a fucking pedophile because that's what everybody Kyle? 
He's 36. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's been he's just with random children in the park. <laughs> if we stop counting for a while, um, I think uh, I, I, there were those two little black girls in my last neighborhood, and they were super friendly. They had, I remember for like Christmas or their birthday, they got those little RC, not RC, um, electric like Barbie cars. And they went so mm-hmm. fast, those and I wanted to like be, run over there and be like, "Hey, that thing is so cool!" But when I was a kid, like an eighty fucking eight or whatever, like. Hours were slow, and they they made a noise. They went. <laughs> it sounded like a power drill struggling. Mm-hmm. Okay, hers is like zipping around almost silently, and it's fast. She's obeying the stop signs in the neighborhood. It's cute as shit. And I wanted to talk to her, and like they would come over and be like, "Hey, Mister, hey, what do you where do you live? What do you do? What is what is that? I like your car, like whatever." And I'm like. <sighs> fuck, is your dad here? I want to wave at him. <laughs> like, you know, I need to make eye contact with your father and, and before we continue this conversation. You get like, that like, nod of I approval, him, it's okay. <laughs> I don't want him to discover me having a conversation with his kids because that's fucking weird. He doesn't yeah. know they initiated it. He doesn't know that I wasn't like, hey, come here. You know. And if I'm a parent, that's what I'm thinking, right? Because it's scary. Kyle, just, do, just act natural, go over to the kid, get on one knee, get real close, grab him by the shoulders and say, you want to be friends? You yeah. want to be friends. You know what Tom Brady would do in a moment like this, young man? <laughs> you know what he'd do? Oh. <laughs> I saw the way you threw that ball a minute ago. That was, that was beautiful, son. That was beautiful. I know your daddy doesn't kiss you on the mouth like this. That's because he doesn't love you the way Tom Brady does. He'll never be a champion like Tom Brady. <laughs> Hold on. Take a step back for a second. There's a patrol uh. car driving by. <laughs> Give me one more kiss, son. And if anybody ever talk, comes around here talking that Bill Belichick shit, <laughs> and don't you tell anyone about this. this is our little secret yeah <laughs> kissing pals that's yeah, all well, just make sure that you bring <laughs> all you have to do like to show that like you're <laughs> interested in being friends with the kids just like bring bring toys bring bring things candy. that kids like give them bring candy, candy. They kids love candy. Saying, I, I didn't say i want to be friends with a fucking kid all i said was <laughs> it would be nice to be able to be friendly to children because right now i yeah. feel like i need to be like cold i need to be like they need to know no. that, like, I'm that mean man or something. That would That's be better than, like, it really than, helps. Like, if you oh, have yeah, we love going over to you. Kyle's house. He's got so many toys. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> like, I don't want you saying that shit. I want Hi, you to be kids. like, I, I want you being like, yeah, I don't know what that man's name is, but when we tried to, like, wave and play bubbles with him, like, like, like he, he spit on the ground <laughs> and gave us a mean look and slammed his door. That's what He's, I want. Them to think. He hates children. He's he the furthest thing from a pedophile. He hates children. <laughs> That's what you want. It's better to them to think that you're like the Cruella de Vil of fucking children than them to think that you're trying to get them in their house and fucking Cruella de Vil of fucking yep. children. So you do it 101 times. <laughs> but women well, don't you, have you this need a problem. lot of little ones to make up for that one big one. Exactly. That would have made more sense. Why didn't she get a big, full grown Dalmatian? The two parent dogs. She didn't need mm. 101 puppies. She needed like two adult dogs. She was an idiot through and through. I, could, I didn't respect her the entire film. No, no, no puppies say, are like, softer. Legit. Puppies have, have softer soft. fur, so it'll make Very a higher true. quality coat. You treat I the fur. The idea. I'm, sold. I think that I'm sold. I want a she, puppy coat. She had cornered the Dalmatian market. No one else was making Dalmatian coats. There was no point of comparison. She wanted it unique. <laughs> she wanted hers to be unique the way I remember it. It's been a while since yeah. I watched the film. Fashionista. You say that as if puppy okay. Dalmatian coats. I hated 101 Dalmatians. Did of you? all the Disney movies, I was like actively bored by it. I really you were too disliked young for that one, I think. There were no, some adult no. themes in there. Because I liked like Jungle Book and all the other ones that were older. Like, That's I, I just oh, it is one of the older films. She just like the racist. Isn't it one of the older films? Isn't it from? I mean, it's it's really old. It it might. I think it's from the older. It's it's. it's, I think it's in the nineties, but it's set in like the sixties or something. Well, who knows where it's set? But 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 like I'm just thinking back that I remember the McDonald's toys, right? The little beanie baby plushy things. Yep. How many you got, Drifter? Uh, those none. I had yeah. them when I was a kid. I had yeah, when I was a kid. Did. I had all of the McDonald's 101 Dalmatian little beanie baby, whatever they were. I had them. That's uh, an investment. I had a what I currently too. have is none. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any stuff. Stuff that, that that's what I was getting at earlier is like, as a grown ass man, I don't want any like weird like shit that you might think with some Justin Roiland type paraphernalia in my house, right? <laughs> like like I don't need any stuff, toys. I don't need anything that a kid would look at and be like, that's fun. Like 
<laughs> come on, kids. Yeah, come to my house. Uh, no one, no one's gonna tell. No one's gonna tell. Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> come on. Yeah, nothing matters. Uh, suddenly, uh, suddenly, this whole nihilism shtick. Uh, everything's getting uh, very real, Morty. Fuck. <laughs> Everything. Uh, I was all about nihilism until fuck, man. I, I'm gonna be in prison, Morty. In prison, being raped for real this time. Hey, no, Morty. He, he's gonna have to go to trial. <laughs> he could recreate that stupid trial clip that he voice acted. You know, the, like the real oh, life yeah, one. The I, transcript. Yeah, I did that smarmy. Nothing matters, shtick, Morty. I did it for years. And now everything's closing in. It's very real, <laughs> dude. It's a. Uh, it, it's sad to see. Like, like I, I, I legitimately enjoy that show. I, I've watched it. I, I have fond memories of watching that show with loved ones. You know what I mean? Like, like. Oh yeah. Um, and, and, and like, like that's that's a little part of my like culture or like my life is Rick and Morty. Just a little bit. I don't want to be one of those fucking weirdos like that was. Remember those guys who were standing on like McDonald's counters? Like, like I want the sauce. Fucking, oh. fucking wanting the sauce. Like, like front lines of Ukraine. The, you. Remember the guy that won the sauce and got death threats over it? Yeah. Like, like my fandom through? never rises to those levels. Mm-hmm. Like, like I will, I'll sit here and just be a quiet, like appreciative fan, like a good boy. And that's how I am with Rick and Morty. And so it's, to me, it's, it's the death of the show. A hundred percent. It's the death mm-hmm. of the show. Because he's why? not just a voice actor. Okay. He's not just the guy who does the voice of Apu. He's half the fucking writing and idea staff as well. And people will be like, no, oh, the other guy's all the ideas. Do you really think so? You really think they've been partners and they're splitting this shit down the middle because one guy can do, do funny voices? Mm-hmm. We couldn't have outsourced him $50 million well, dollars ago. People yeah. <laughs> on Twitter disagree. Like I said, the guy from Squanch Tendo Games. Do. You've got to no, no. disagree. He's the creative director or something or another at Squanch Tendo Games. He said Justin Roiland hasn't been involved in the writing in the show since like season three. Oh, is he distancing himself from Justin Roiland? Oh, yeah, because Justin Roiland had to also retire from his own studio. He, he put I in know, his letter of resignation. You, you know what's funny is like if you're if, you, if that's true. I've always maintained that season three was the last good one. So if that is true, Justin Roiland was the lifeblood of the show. If, if that's the case, and he really did take a step back after three, because there was a marked tone difference in yes. four and the other ones, and it was not as funny. Wasn't as good. They tried to get Jerry in it too much. I don't give a fuck about Jerry, and I no, don't Jerry's care about cut. Summer, and I don't care. It's about okay. Rick and Morty. Summer's fun. Summer can be fun. I, I'm, well, I'm just kind of being silly, but like, I, yeah, I don't like... Aside, like, like yeah. I'm... I'm I'm disappointed in him. I think that's the that that's what I'm really feeling is that hey man, you had a responsibility to like be an upright decent human enough so that you won't be legally removed from, from your your job and society. Like I was counting on you to entertain me, asshole. I'm invested. <laughs> but but now none of it matters. Like like and yeah. I guess this was a show that didn't really matter anyway. This wasn't like dude, if this had happened with Game of Thrones, can you imagine? Oh. Can you imagine? Like it was bad enough with House of Cards. Like mm-hmm. that was bad. But but like something even bigger, like Game of Thrones. If oh, like... what about the upcoming Flash movie with that uh, ooh, Ezra Miller who had like kidnapped women? I don't know how that's going to go. Or you know, Channel Five with Andrew Callahan. Channel that Channel Five and All Gas No Breaks was yeah. modern Gonzo journalism. It was some of the best reporting anywhere that we were seeing, even if it was a bit silly. And like he was like for BLM and stuff, he was like on the streets interviewing people inside of a burning building. Nobody else was doing that. But like you said, now it doesn't matter because he's checked into psychiatric care for sexually assaulting or coercion uh, a ton of women. Yeah, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Are we on to all gas, no breaks? Yeah, Yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I didn't. I knew that he had done something and then he had apologized. I didn't know that he had like checked in somewhere. I thought his documentary was um, bad. I thought it felt Hmm. like a YouTube video and it felt like an unfinished work. And it felt like they were 75% of the way to making something that was even on HBO's level. And the fact that it was there was weird to me. I watched it. I enjoyed it. But it was a, it was a disjointed mess. And it, it, that wasn't some artistic flair of his. The way it begins is absurd. But that aside, like he didn't have a product to sell. I, it feels like he was contracted no. to make this thing maybe like two or three years ago. And what happened was he got, he got covid on January 6th. Yep, he so couldn't he's make not it to the there big event. For the ultimate event of the, the documentary. He's like, it's all building to January 6th, right? Like, and he's there every step of the way. He's at these rallies and events, like watching the, the fervor be, be, be fucking stoked. And then he's like, and then I got COVID. So I wasn't there for any of January 6th. I was actually with my nephew, Tommy. Tommy, what's going on? I don't know. 
what do you think about politics? And I'm like, well, are we are we going to interview this fucking random yeah. kid? You got to pat it right out. Now? You lost the it's ending like, to the movie. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it, wait, this happened, and then you kept filming. Like, you, yeah, like it yeah. seems you like that's you kind didn't of the crux go of crying it. to HBO and say like like we're going to have to get yeah. somebody to fill in for me. I yeah. thought it was HBO. okay to attend Republican events with COVID. Isn't that? There like, you go. Yeah. Oh, no, I think he was just he was like really sick though. Like I, I for a while it was pretty rough. He, he didn't, didn't have one of those Herman Cain from going to the rally. He make a rules. Herman Cain award. <laughs> <laughs> Herman Cain. I used to mm-hmm. Herman Cain jokes aside. I knew of Herman Cain for a long time leading up to this thing, and uh, he was an interesting guy, and and uh, he spoke so well. He's got this brilliant had this really interesting way of speaking. And if you remember, he had a very simple tax code, nine, nine, nine. It was Mm -hmm. like 9% sales tax, 9% income tax, maybe 9% corporate tax or something like that. He's like flat tax across the board, everything, 9%. It's like that's every time they asked him a question, that was his answer. Israel has been stepping up uh, their aggression on the Gaza Strip, and the Iranians are threatening to uh, do this, that, and the other. What do you think? I think nine, 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 every time. And he, uh, he of course, lost that. He didn't make it into the through the primaries, but he, he had this really popular political radio show here in Atlanta. And I listened to it a lot because he was a fun guy to talk to, and he seemed like he was in the know. You know, he had been a candidate, and he would mm. speak on that sometimes. Uh, but he was a COVID denier who died from COVID. So now there's a award named after him, and that's what he'll go down as. He'll he's it the is Herman like Cain the award. first line in his obituary. I love that his family was still tweeting like COVID denial stuff from his account after he was dead. From so it was his like point of view. Were they like <laughs> signing it like Susie or like? No, I don't no, think no, no, so. No, no, I think no. they were just sharing no. news and stuff. It oh. was. They didn't want to lose they the were reach of the as account. If Herman Cain himself was still denying COVID after he died from it. They should keep. They should have kept that bit going. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> they they might still be. I'm Three prepping for my run of twenty. <laughs> hey, I, I don't to- know if you guys know, but when you die, uh, your accounts do get inherited. Uh, little Grim, I had to set this up recently. If something were to happen to me. Uh, my wife uh, can actually run my accounts as legacy accounts and continue to monetize them and make long-term revenue long after I'm toast. And anybody yeah. can do that. So Herman Cain, lit- I mean, he was elderly. He could have just set it up for his grandkids or whatever, get the account, and they can just go ham on it and make money I, and yeah, sell I think pillows. Someone just, has the, someone just has the password. They're not, they didn't go through any of, you know, they're just, they're just tweet. But I mean, the best example of this is Mountain Dog. I bet if you go to his channel right now, right, there I'm are videos to. of him re uploaded. This guy died. How to blast almost, the triceps in 2024. Like, so, <laughs> Drifter, dude, there's, there's this guy named ago. Mountain Dog okay. 20 or something. And he's this, was this enormous, like, geared up, you know, uh, bodybuilder guy. And he died of his heart exploding, as they <laughs> do. And Naturally. then, like, they kept, they were like, I think they like deleted his old catalog like slowly and like re uploaded it. And so, like, you can go to his channel and it's like 10 Five tips. days ago, <laughs> nine days ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Like, this guy has a regular upload. He uploads more yeah. than, than PKA does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting you're dead for you. A ghost is beating you in consistency. Congratulations. <laughs> And so I hope they're still getting money. Well, it's all re money. Oh, was it? There's another one. Was it Yoda Slayer? Was it Yoda Slayer, um, a Minecraft YouTuber who died? And uh, his kids took over the channel for at least a while. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it seems like if I were Mountain Dog's kid or whatever, I would have been like, I mean, I guess we may as well double dip here on a lot of this and just keep going. Free, like, literally you know. free money. I think, I so. think someone mentioned that his family needed the money for something um like and uh and that that was kind of a known thing that and that that's um, that everybody was like yeah let's go rewatch that old tricep blast video to help mountain dog's family with i don't know whatever he's a professional bodybuilder i'm sure he knows how to grow muscles just don't take his cardiac advice yeah i mean like he had that arm shit you you know those veins we've talked about where the where it's really it getting like a like Vericose a river veins yeah yeah it's really like, gross it, it you know where it's it's not like a bicep vein across the length. It like goes a little bit, and then there's squiggle, 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 like back and forth, all all <sighs> they knotted were so up. So gross. And apparently that is like a huge indicator. Those like folded up veins of like your heart is is actively dying. Like it's it is can't, it's real gross. Like that and have clubbed fingers. On. If you have if you have the tips of your fingers get fat and clubbed, that means you're you're dying. 
Thank no, God. If, if they're clubbed, oh, you'll know. They, they'll look like little penises. <laughs> oh, well, let's, oh so yeah. there's upside. let's not go straight to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> let's How many girls man. can I fit on one hand? Because <laughs> you're bleeding out of the your ass or whatever. Two, probably, at most. And did either or, or any of you, I should say, uh, watch episode two of The Last of Us? I did. I really enjoyed that show. I think it's great. That show is very good. That's going to be a big popular show, I think. And that little girl is going to be a big star. Yeah. You know why she's a good actor? Is that one worth saving up for? I've been trying to like wait for it to complete so I can watch it like a big marathon. Here's what I do, honestly. Um, The third episode will be out six days from now. And it's going to be almost an hour and a half. The first episode is 82 minutes. The second episode is about 55. And the third episode is over... And almost an hour and a half again. So like if you that. if you started with episode three, you'd have three okay. and a half hours of content to to roll through roughly there. Three hours and 50, 50 minutes or something. A lot of content. It'd feel like more than three. Um, so it mm-hmm. wouldn't be a bad time to start. It's okay. a fun show. I have never played the games. What I know of the games comes from like scrolling through Reddit and just seeing pictures of the game. I've never even watched a video. I have no idea. And I don't care to, frankly. Um I like this this TV show though, and the fact that the game fans say that oh this is great or they're so happy with the the adaptation is mm-hmm. I guess a cherry on top. It's good to see that, but overall, it's just a good fucking TV show. It's it's like well filmed. It's it's well done. There's some there's some little corny jokes here and there where like the little girl's kind of like a smart aleck, but I don't mind that. That's kind of like what she was in Game of Thrones, and I don't mind that. That's kind of showing through in her still yeah. a little bit. Um, she's a fun little character, I, I, uh, and uh, Pedro Pascal is always good. He's playing that like PTSD-ridden guy who's twenty years too old in a world that doesn't really um, let, have too many old men in it anymore. And uh, he was a he was a Gulf uh, War veteran. You know, this thing is the beginning of the show is set in like '03, and like the majority yeah. of the show is set in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you. The, the the bad thing that happens that fucks the world up happens in 03 and then you know the future we live in is 2023 and they're they're on this mission walking across i suppose the whole country right now we're still in boston um but it's you know pedro and the little girl doing their like mandalorian yoda impression and i'm down for it i'm down for it it's good i mean uh you know the the girl the little girl actor she's 19 that's why she's doing a great job is because she's mm-hmm. like an adult playing a younger role because you're right Perfect. like there That's are so many common. times where like the yeah where the kid like if they actually get a 12 year old to play a 12 year old you're like god damn it like i know you're really trying like i know you're doing your absolute best but i like you're I a gotta, reminder i, I have a I'm theory a about show. this i i feel like there's a a gap in the middle where they get kind of self-aware and become bad actors like 11 year olds play 11 year olds really well or nine year olds you know they're they're excitedly playing and they're roles usually expect them to be children and they act like children and they're crushing it you look at the sandlot or whatever and they're just you know running from place to place as if they were playing in their own backyards cool when they hit like 16 suddenly they're terrible actors they're self-aware they don't know what they're doing they're saying their lines wondering what people think about them saying their lines like a non-actor would and then maybe if you're lucky in adulthood, they become actual good actors. That it's what happened to me in my um child porn career. Oh I started God. pure, right? The emotions were real. Well, you were and, a producer. <laughs> and then no, I was a child. And 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 the uh, performance a child producer? Off, the yeah. uh, the performances were authentic. <laughs> Everyone could see what That'd I was. That'd be really doing odd for that industry. And that it was genuine. <laughs> and then as I hit my teen years, suddenly they're like, he's acting. He doesn't have the same fire that he used to. All it happens Eastern to European us child gangsters. stars all the time. Hit all the Eastern the European gangsters. All the Eastern European gangsters that normally run the child porn racket. They're like, this new little Woody guy, <laughs> seven years old. He take. Half our margin. What is this shit? He's, like slamming the t- he's slamming the table with a baby skull that he uses as a gavel. They're like, like watching like, your videos, not even like jacking off, just like mad. Like, how are we to compete with this metal strip of <laughs> acting? <laughs> yeah. And then and the, you get self aware. This has been a little Woody production. Star. Bing. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it ends with like. Yeah. Shh. 
I use that same <laughs> intro and guitar riff that I did on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can hear it. You just repurpose you for YouTube. You just like, oh, I need a little jingle. Hold up, I got this old thing laying around from my old and my original career. <laughs> One of the guards yeah. delivered my mail Monday, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna do that, dear Woody. <laughs> dear Woody, you've destroyed my life and my family's. <laughs> Ah, another one of these. It, uh, I will never these be the guards same. Only, uh, <laughs> only let in a certain kind of letter these days. It's, it's uh, <laughs> not good for my mental health, and they know that. <laughs> oh. All right. Jesus. Let's go to you, Omar. How's your day going? You know how it's going, bitch. <laughs> Man, oh. in, in a little while, I'm going to fucking kill Woody. Like, <laughs> I'm well tired of his fucking childborn mm. shit. He's, he talks about mm. it like he's fucking Tarantino. <laughs> yeah. are you actually a chomo if you were the child are you actually a, it's just a ch- no he'd be a he'd like be a, a, a cholo of righteousness he'd mm. be eliminating the perverts and that happens a cholo chomo no the cholos and the nazis they they all hate pedophiles do they uh, something yeah. they can agree on they may be like hitler that guy you know a lot of good points what what you pedophile Oh yeah, we got to get rid of this guy. Oh, you're gonna you're talking shit on me on my 13 swastika tattoos. Well, you know, l- remove the plank from your eye before you know try to remove the plank from mine. All right, so here's my question. Let's say uh, you go to prison for realsies, right? Like, okay. like uh, it, you you're in, you're in. You're gonna have to join the Aryan Brotherhood. It's like clearly like the the only option. Oh, I'm gonna look so fucking ugly. My question <laughs> is. I got I got questions my about hair. the tattoo situation because, <laughs> because I'm willing I'll be to... a girl, just let me have my hair. <laughs> <laughs> my head is out they you. won't be intimidated. Yeah. Let me be the guy with the mohawk at least. <laughs> like, yeah, that's enough or we extend to some guys, but you physically know. Like shave your head. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering if it's like if in that scene in office space where they were upset because Jennifer Aniston didn't have enough flair, right? She he's like, Well, you know, you've got 12 pieces oh, wow. of flare, but look at Jimmy over there. He's got 37 swastikas. All right. Mm-hmm. He's got a swastika in his ear. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that must have hurt. Like, yeah. like you got one swastika, Taylor. I, look, I'm just thinking that maybe you'd want to show your passion for the for the brotherhood. I think that that would be difficult <laughs> because like you'd want to start out being like, they're like, all right, we're tatting you up. And I'd be like, Yeah, you know where like I really like tattoos like my heel. Like yeah. and, and they'd be like, no, no, man, fucking, this has got to be visible with t with the t shirt on, and yeah. then you'd like, like so you'd slowly you get bullied into more Dude, and more. I had it. He's the big brain. Right you you shave your head and get the tattoos like on the sides of your head and stuff. So in prison, you're a Nazi, and then when you're out, you just let your hair grow out, and it's all gone. That's honestly probably the yeah, best, yeah. Unlucky you, male pattern baldness kicked in halfway through that sentence. Now you wear hats. Now you look like the most extreme Nazi ever. <laughs> that guy wants everyone to know what's up. Can you believe you got been electrolysis born with those with birthmarks? With... <laughs> yeah, it's a birthmark. It's Could you imagine being thing. in prison? The Aryan Brotherhood calls a meeting and they're like, Look, Taylor. Uh, we appreciate your support for the cause of white supremacy and selling methamphetamines all over the United States, but we just don't feel that you're committed on a fashion standpoint. The Nazi flair isn't out there. You don't have a single face tattoo. We got your arms tatted up, but you don't even have anything crazy over your heart. Like, mm. if you get molested in the shower by another gang, we need them to have Nazi tramp stamps to stare at. Like, How about they're letting this? us How about down this, here. A little... That's maybe something point. maybe a bit of a a dog whistle tattoo how about how about 88 yeah. just put a nice That's my story. on there this is that what would happened. be clever right? i was genuinely thinking about getting another tattoo and I, and i was like, all right you know so where are we on this what should i get and i'm always on the like, sort of the lookout for ideas mm-hmm. i'm 90 percent full of shit like i have i'm thinking about tattoos for 10 years i have one i mean you've already and, got one uh, i thought about um i was like what if i took jackie's birth date like the month and the day and the year and added them together and got that as a tattoo it's not quite as corny as the dates that everyone else mm-hmm. has it in it's 88 and i'm like 88 that's a cool fucking number i like that especially this eric lindros's number i was a Patrick fan Kane, yep mm-hmm. and i'm like shit. i could get 88 tattooed on me and that'd be like a badass idea mm-hmm. and then i looked into it some more and it turns out 88 stands for hh which stands for how hit hulk hogan yep uh yeah so yeah ever all the little hulksters hey the hulkster was no no uh not shy of the n-word so (laughs) or or dating teenagers so one of those is cool you you know like if you go back and listen to what he said 
Hulk Hogan. The, it, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> we have to clarify this. Because he goes on this rant. If you, all right, so maybe y'all haven't heard it. So basically, like, his daughter... First of all, if you don't know this, Hulk Hogan had a reality show yeah. back in the early 2000s. It was a it was a, it, it was when reality shows were kind of new ish and everybody was kind of getting their own like that kind of reality show show was new. Like, it's like, yeah, the one that Hogan Paris has been like modeled. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Danny Bonaduce show was the greatest reality show ever made by the Ozzy way. Do you want to I mean the greatest oh train God. wreck? Yeah. Danny Bonaduce. They only made one season. He he chugged a bottle of absolute vodka and skateboarded into traffic at one point. The car oh, like, 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 I thought like, the like, Gary he, Busey show was wild. Oh, I don't know if I saw that. But back on track, um, who who was I, who was I zeroing in on? Oh, Hitler oh, and yeah. the eighty. We were talking about like the like Hulk what minimalist. Oh, for Hulk those of you show. who haven't heard, yeah. It. So so Hulk has everybody in Hulk's family looks like a fucking Nazi super super baby. They're all bleached blonde, mm -hmm. beautiful, and like big breasted or muscular or both. And uh, anyway, his daughter, Brooke, was kind of becoming like a fake pop star, like which was a possible thing to do. There was a, a couple yeah. of fake star pop stars back then, girls who couldn't sing, who were just attractive and could lip sync. Like Ashley Simpson. And like Ashley Simpson, who got Gibson. found out on SNL in a classic fucking clip on, yep. you'll find on uh, YouTube if you <laughs> want a real laugh. And uh, anyway, his daughter, Brooke, was becoming one of these beautiful, like good looking blonde girl. And I think that she had gotten a black boyfriend or was dating a black guy. And he's like caught on this voice message. The Hulkster is saying something like if she's gonna f a ninja then she could at least find a football player or something yep. or a basketball player like mm. somebody it was something like along those lines and it's like damn hulkster oh my god co-sign any of that <laughs> damn, had it rough. uh did he have a relationship with his daughter's 19 year old friend if i'm not mistaken that was the hulk hogan sex tape and his she was, wife, but hey, a lot of no, no, no. That was his friend's wife. That that's a that whole his friend's other wife. Situation. My bad. Hey, his know, friend knew about lore. that though, so that was okay. They had an open relationship. Hey, it was, it, I saw that sex tape. I gotta say, Hulk was looking great for being like sixty-five. Dude was still jacked. Was I was impressed. I what? think that's a crime. I don't. I don't think you know that was recorded without his him knowing. That's a that's him like recording. That's a crime himself. now. It wasn't Remember a crime at he, the time. Uh, well, he well, sued the crime then because yeah, he they had a camera, Gawker, in, right? What? Didn't he kill Gawker because Gawker put he up his sex tape and then mm -hmm. he was like, take that shit down. And then they were like, <laughs> Hulk Hogan asked us to take down his sex tape and we're not going to. And then they were destroyed. Yeah. Yes. All of them. Oh, hopefully the never court was in journalism amazing. Again. You remember in court, the judge told him to stop laughing because this wasn't funny because the Gawker guy was like telling jokes and shit on the stand instead of being a normal witness. Uh, it oh, was, I didn't see that. Did Hulk oh, yeah. get money out of it, though? Like, I know that he bankrupted gawker but they liquidated them so okay, whatever their liquidation gawker. was worth that's a yeah assumption like did i'm gonna google that i wonder if, if hulk Hogan i would like to know got, too the i do know that he did voice in, uh... acting he was in uh china illinois on adult swim he played the headmaster of the college or whatever and he was a surprisingly good voice actor i think he lives in tampa or uh it's, it's down in florida but i, I was million. I was there one time and we saw him at like this like bar grill type. It was like an outdoor bar with like they served food on too. And I was like, holy shit, that's fucking Hulk Hogan. It's Hulk Hogan. They were like, <laughs> Jeremy was like, let's go, let's go talk to him. I was like, we are not no. going to bother Hulk fucking Hogan at a restaurant. <laughs> like, like I, I, I can suplex you. Yeah. Well, I'm not worried he's going to beat me up. Like, like call I call you always... the N word. So like I'm not like a Hulk Hogan fan or anything, but I do think of him as like a real celebrity. So if I went over there and I thought he looked small in person, or or if he was rude like for no reason, or if, or if I like, you know, anything that made me think less of him, that would you don't meet your, you know, your heroes again. Not that Hulk Hogan is a hero, but but he's I think of him in a certain way, and I don't want that to change. Yeah, just like a father figure, like you know, like a like a bleach blonde racist that's been hiding his male pattern baldness since 1987. I, mean, I want him to job. be that in my mind, Taylor. And if I were to meet him and he's a good guy, fuck. If he wasn't a good guy, you wouldn't like I that. I said what I meant. If he was, <laughs> if he was, well, he's like super courteous to you, and you're like, yeah. he's a he's a pussy. Yeah, <laughs> like sad yeah, all for it. show. Like all the so other wrestlers, like the Undertaker does child's charity. Kane is a sweetheart. You know, all these other yeah. people or what is it? Stone Cold Steve Austin is a devout Christian now or something. It's like, I want Hulk Hogan to stay a trashy piece of shit. I want him yeah. to be the guy that beats his wife and blames her for it. 
Well, yeah. I, don't think he did I looked up the whole no, settlement because I was curious and I thought listeners might be too. So he was awarded 140 million, but they didn't immediately pay and they whatever. It settled for 31 million. But the way that it works out is the attorneys take a part of that. He has to pay taxes on that. He has to pay taxes on the part that the attorneys took. And Hulk Hogan's take home was about 10 million, which is nice. that's dog nice. shit. Oh, yeah, come on. That's as much as 10 million out of 140. Does, out of 31, right? Sorry. Well, it started at 140. That was what he won. And then they settled. They, like Gawker was like, fuck you, I'm not paying 140 million. They agreed to pay 31 million. Hulk Hogan's portion of that being about 10. My, uh, my guesstimation is Gawker was like, we sold the fucking desks, the chairs, and Mike's pencil holder. We've got 31. 31.2 if you want to round it up. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. 31, 31.2. point two. You could take that, or you take my fucking fillings, cocksucker. And they're like, all right, thirty one point two. I'll take the fillings. Well, Gawker was a media company. They wouldn't have had much in the way of physical assets, and their value would have been uh, brand goodwill or brand valuation and future potential well, earnings. Thirty one somewhere. Yeah, well, that's where it would pull from. Or could, would they would they be forced to take out a loan? That'd be crazy, right? If you had to take out a loan, <laughs> Dude, get a loan, a bankrupt company. Okay, if we're talking about this. Have y'all seen the Alex Jones shenanigans about how he's trying to avoid mm-hmm. getting paid? It's yeah, insane. Probably. So you know that they he, the jury won a one point four billion dollars or something like that, and of course he's going to appeal or whatever. Yeah. But uh, he's filed in court that he is personally bankrupt, and Free Speech Systems is bankrupt. And actually in debt to another company in Nevada, it's the holding company for the supplements. He's like $30 million in debt to them. But then when you look who owns the supplement company, it's Alex Jones and his parents. So he's $50 million in debt to himself and his parents. And he's like making all these bizarre court filings saying free speech systems is broke. And because of that, we want to use our remaining funds to pay our employees to stay on the air, to keep earning money, to pay back the families. But the employee that he wants to get paid is himself, his entire year's salary up front, and like goes on the mm. show and literally on the show says, please donate to the cause, your help keeping me on air, buy the alpha male, whatever. I promise you none of this money will go to the Sandy Hook families. We're going to beat that. And then two days later goes to court and says we're bankrupt. And the only way we can ever pay these families is if we stay on air and keep selling the supplements. And mm. it's getting very illegal very fast if you can't tell. There was a ruling mm-hmm. saying that he can't, that that's not going to work. So what happens is you know, he owns these companies, then his companies own these companies. And I think there's even a third layer of companies that own the companies that own the companies. And the court has said, yeah, none of that bullshit's working. The families are due money from all the way through. Woody, let me ask you a, a, an old white man question. Like, like when, when you've got an old rich white man question, when you've got... <laughs> When you've got companies that own companies that own companies, is that yeah. always a sign of some sort of malfeasance, or is there ever yeah. like a realistic, like good reason to 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 have like what I assume are shell companies? There are good reasons. Is that is that what those are referred to as? Like I hear people talk mm-hmm. about shell companies and like spy movies. Is mm-hmm. that what they're talking about? When you've got like a like all these like silly companies like sort of own, owing yeah, each Wolf other Cola. money and yeah, yeah, you got Wolf Cola out there taking all your losses for you. The yeah. question no, there's good it? reasons. So the question was asked to me, Drifter. Um, the old, the old wife, the rich the, one. Yeah, and we cover this in in business school too. But um, it can be both. Uh, sometimes there are companies that own companies because this is the division of the way that the companies operate, right? You know, Pepsi may have a different company for each of its brands. Pepsi probably has a different company for Wendy's than it does for the soda, and et, et cetera, et cetera. So you would want to organize your companies by their business structures and silos that's one reason another is kind of what you were hinting at which is like limiting liability and such for like for example every taxi in new york is its own company and that mm-hmm. company owns almost nothing but maybe the yeah taxi. And, and that taxi yeah and that taxi <laughs> maybe and uh that way that if that taxi kills someone is you know owing 10 million dollars or something they're like, great, you get 25 grand. That's all this company and has. the car <laughs> and the car. And and then the victim doesn't get what they might expect to get from this giant taxi company. Yeah. And that's what okay. the shells are for. All right. So Alex Jones almost certainly structured his company from the very start in sort of a uh, sneaky, precarious kind of way that, that, that maybe he always, you know, he, he he is hawking like silly supplements, not like us. We make good Canadian mm-hmm. or American made, I'm not really sure. We make good supplements <laughs> here wherever they come from and they they make you bust, okay? Mm. For real. They're made in the USA. 
Are they? Okay. Yeah, we got a fucking stamp sure? on so, um, <laughs> how, how many star, how many stars are on the flag? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't what see the this cum splatter everywhere. <laughs> Made in the US of A for red blooded American men who want to come more. It's hard with my United States of Amelia. Light. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you just, just like so, doing this made it like <laughs> right there. That one. Uh, look at that focus. Oh, he broke out the knife. Made in America. <laughs> so, do you guys not use shell companies? That's why I was kind of butting in, Woody. I uh, to protect my identity and we stuff. We don't talk Texas about our corporate structure on the reference. show. We don't. Mm -mm. Okay. Because I don't know. <laughs> yeah i mean i imagine lots of like really rich people do it to just hedge like what he was saying like it's not always insidious it's like a liability thing but in this case it probably was a hedge against you know, like Alex known is... impropriety that was going on i could on. almost make an argument both ways like you know the media companies one thing the supplement companies another that i don't know what else he has cooking you know another one that sits atop and owns them both yeah but uh, I'm pretty sure in his case, he's very intentionally like moving money away yeah. from the company that lost the settlement. And oh, on a different note, uh, I don't really follow like the royal politics. I think it's one of the it, mm. the royals seem like I. their version of the Kardashians to me in some way. It, it's it's it seems gross. Really, the way the media acts is the gross part, though. Like uh, Prince Andrew aside, like they've been the grosser side of that relationship generationally like they killed princess diane as far as i'm concerned not that i you know like like whatever but um more recently with the prince andrew uh sexual stuff with the jeffrey epstein and everything the queen uh like a month or two before she died took away like his he was no longer allowed to call himself his royal highness she like took that away and then she like called her boys at the navy or whatever and took away all of his fake like military awards and and they actually might have not have been fake. That dude probably served in World War II. Right? Like, like, odds are. They, um, anyway, I took all that shit old. away, too. Took all that shit. He is, absolutely. The queen, the, I mean, the queen was in World All right, you're right, because the queen was in World War II. So Maybe he was in Vietnam. Son her son wouldn't be. Yeah, they yeah. probably stationed him yeah, somewhere. Sure. He got to kill uh, And uh, the new king now kicked him out of the palace. He's no longer welcome on the royal grounds. That's what I was going to say. And, and, and they made a big story of this, Woody. They were like, Prince Andrew has lost his suite at Buckingham Palace, where he's lived like forever. And apparently it's like super pimp. I don't think it's like some nice bedroom. I think it's like a huge wing of a palace. Um, and basically he's been kicked out of it. And they were like, now he'll have to reside at his other palace at St. James. <laughs> 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 that bitch. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're sin and and I think it was St. James Palace. I, I read it like this morning, uh, and I just had sustained a bit of a head injury as I went down the stairs, so I, my memory might not be with me. But Zach, could you find us a picture if that's true of like St. James Palace or whatever palace he has to live in now? Because Reddit was like a win for the good guys, and I nobody was focusing on the fact that he now has to move to his other palace. <laughs> I, I wonder if Buckingham Palace is a nice place to live. It's they're doing like, a four hundred million dollar renovation right now. I'm not it's doubting. Be pretty good. I'm not doubting that it's a great building. I'm wondering if it's a great lifestyle. Can you walk mm -hmm. out of it and just go places? How's the parking? You know, is it like staying at a hotel where it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to your car? I, I guess there's staff that takes you your car. Is that a pain in the ass to have like valet service? I kind of like my car right in the driveway. It couldn't be more convenient. It's not too far from the kitchen. That looks nice. Looks yeah. like you'd enjoy uh, St. James and Palace you're there. Driving. I, he drives himself. What a commoner. <laughs> How many I, Range Rovers is that? <laughs> right? I just wonder if living in Buckingham Palace is a, like a cool lifestyle. Or does it kind of oh, suck? Yeah. Are you a little captive? No. Let me, let me there say absolutely cameras cool. on every window. You get, a, you, you get a private chef. Oh, my God. Nah, you get every, everything is private. I have a private like, ship. <laughs> Dude, imagine yeah. if you woke up at two in the morning and you were just like, I, I, I want a whole Thanksgiving dinner. Your private chef has to make that happen. Imagine getting stoned and any fantasy food you think of, they just have to deliver as soon as they possibly can. That's well, life in Buckingham Palace. Imagine, imagine if you, if your Rolls Royce limousine pulls up to like, uh, uh, over to some attractive ladies and you lean out no matter what the fuck you look like. And you say, 
Good evening, ladies. The prince wanted to know if you'd like to go to the palace with him tonight. Right. He's having a few select uh, friends and 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 people over, and he wanted to know, he saw you, and you're very striking. Would you like to join him for for the evening? There ain't no fucking way them girls are not getting into that Ro Rolls Royce limo to go to the palace, right? Right? Oh, Isn't no, you're that literally every girl's right. dream growing up, or at least what Disney told me it was? Swim to where? Every little the, girl the that Prince I grew Charming. up with had one. To be clear, these girls will put out in this scenario? I don't fucking know. I would imagine right? because of the implication. I probably Because, <laughs> like, I am, I, I, I don't know, maybe not beautiful girls, young ones or whatever, but, like, I'm not short on people to go to lunch with. I could call a friend. Like, I, it's not like, a, like I have problems getting company. W what huh? is the bonus for getting yeah, these girls? If, if he's getting, not going to eat your ass he's going and to play with your balls at the same that, time. That, that, and, and we said we weren't sure, but that, that's, that's, well, the I'm not sure if every single, what I mean to say is, I, I okay. don't know, this is a hundred for a hundred shot here that every girl that you pull over is going to hop in and blow the prince. What I'm saying, I say it's got to work 75, 80% of the time. I, oh, I, yeah. If it's a Shucks. single young lady who's like, really, the prince wants me to go to the palace? I think we're implying I'm going to fuck him, huh? Well, if you're lucky, madam, well, <laughs> let's. Fingers crossed, bitch, and she's getting in. Like, like I, I, I gotta believe that. I gotta believe that. Ladies, lady that listens, um, <laughs> let <The> me one. know. <laughs> yeah. If, an, if, a, if not Prince Andrew himself, because he's like decrepit, but like you know Prince Charles from like his heyday. If, if that, if that big-eared cocksucker pulled over in his limo and was like, "Would you like to go to the palace to my suite?" You'd pile in there, right? I, I, I my mind is on. Well, he has enough money that he could get a one of those like high end escorts. I forget the they do. There was a that, New York politician who had an escort who was like twelve thousand dollars a night. I forget her name. The New York uh, madam? No, that was the one that committed suicide. The, well, if you remember, it, it's sort of funny you say that, Woody, because that is what Jeffrey Epstein was kind of operating as is sort of that middleman who gets mm. you a girl. Um, they they said those girls were getting paid three hundred dollars. I don't I don't know if they were um if if Prince Andrew had to pay for anything. The way the story was told, um, like well, it's um, Spencer. I'm sorry. They they had so, sort of sold it to that girl. But the girl was tell one underage girl was like telling another that like yeah I got to fuck the prince. Like yeah they let me have sex with him. Yeah, that's the awesome. problem with this industry. Like you think it's cool and it in theory like libertarianly should be legal to just hire oh, high end force if you're rich or like but then everybody that works in that business they all traffic people and they do horrible things with underage girls and there's no cuz if you're like if you think about it if you're running the escort agency for the royals are you just going picking up insta models or are you going to be the really horrible guy that can fulfill any request so what, that was what epstein was for here's the problem the, the, if you pay i don't even know 300 500 for an escort then you're getting the kind of person that you're talked about that you're talking about right someone who's who will fuck you for 200 dollars is not someone you want to fuck however someone who will fuck you for twelve thousand dollars she has a master's degree she is beautiful she is wearing their tight black skin or dress or whatever and selling yourself for $12,000 to people who are connected, rich, and powerful like Elliot Spitzer was. I think and, when I hear that there's a $12,000 a night prostitute, it's in the same vein as like a $5,000 a shot whiskey or something. It's just it's just silliness. It's just silliness. Just over. Nobody's, nobody's flying in and dropping $12,000 to You're fuck You're her somebody. only client. That's yeah, a different scenario. Maybe. She's not a prostitute anymore. She's, she's a sugar now, now baby. She's, now she just doesn't no, have to do no, five no, tricks you know a day. That? It's a couple you know of months. You want to call that, Woody? A, a wife. wife. Yeah. A wife. <laughs> call it a wife. Oh, yeah. you pay her $12,000 a month and she fucks you. That's your wife. I'm, not your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Every wife. Who's, um, who's done her job? <laughs> Every happy wife. <laughs> do you guys think prostitution should be legal? Yeah, sure. yeah, I think it should be legal and federally reg regulated. I think um, that that will have a lot of good entrepreneurs who'll step up to the plate and uh, f and, and fill the mm -hmm. void that'll be left by the disgusting pimps that that are currently. You know, right now it's just there's a, there's a cycle of abuse there, right? Uh, and and there's a lot of hesitancy to like put your to dip your toes in the world of prostitution if you're the government. I think, but yeah. man, it works in Nevada, right? You see, like so oh, yeah. much less. So much less uh, like death, abuse, violence, suicide rates, and all that stuff. How and drug use, everything that correspond, all the all the other negatives that uh, that sort of 
usually go hand in hand with that vice, they're diminished considerably when you regulate and legalize. Is it legal in Nevada? Inside. All right. So it's like outside of Las Vegas, I think it's legal. Interesting. That's my understanding because my I understanding have the bunny is like, ranch. if you get that's outside Vegas, that's out in the okay. desert. So my understanding is that if you get a prostitute off the strip, that is prostitution. And if they want to make a deal of it, Vice will come lock your ass up. I bet it's not a big deal there because it's so common. I bet it's about like a DUI, a, a light DUI, I'll call it guessing. Um, but you can go right outside and at you know the city to a, a whorehouse that's it's 100% legal where you, you, you know, I, I think I saw an HBO like documentary in one of those places. I've never been to one, but you know, you go in and then pick a lady to fuck and go fuck her. There was an HBO reality series about it. I've seen a bunch of episodes <laughs> and uh, oh, the bunny ranch, right? Something like that. Yeah. 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 I, w- I may have watched the same documentary. It came on probably about 1 a.m. on HBO Moonlight Bunny Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> off. I got to make the most of this. We've only got it free for seven days around the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> dark the times Vaseline before the out. internet, okay? All of you guys are old enough to remember when it was whatever was on cable. Oh, you yeah. guys had HBO? I'm watching it through the squigglies trying to make out boobies. <laughs> yeah. Not the squigglies. <laughs> when he's propping up his dad's pornos and shining a yeah. bright light on one side to project a woman onto his wall. <laughs> <laughs> if I wiggle the pages, she moves. It's like she's it's like dancing. She's really here. <laughs> yeah, dance, you dirty old. Dance, you fucking slut. <laughs> you I'll tear house. you right out of that book, you bitch. Just like I did Sandra. That was dirty talk is on point. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'll tear you out of that book you bitch <laughs> imagine what, it being even worse <laughs> imagine it being like the 30s and you have to go to the to the bad part of town ta- town to go to like the grimy porno theater and the porn that's there is just whatever of the two tapes reels reels that they had in town and you got the guy cranking it and six other dudes sitting beside you watching this <laughs> old that porn be if if that were the only way to consume it in the 70s, I'm not surprised a lot of people just steered clear because sitting next to a bunch of the kind of people who would masturbate to, next to other men in public has got to be just a ghoulish experience. Like I wonder it, what It's got to be satanic in those rooms. <laughs> is it just all men sitting in what to me is like a 1990s movie theater next to each other? Is that... I think it's like, so. I only 99.9% like, men, there would be very few female clients. Yeah, I would right. be surprised if any. That's going into the, the rapist's den, potentially. I mean, like, maybe you know, if you're running, like, lesbian fetish porn in the 70s, but even still, that'd probably be mostly men. Yeah. You'd think yeah, there'd like be women much. working there. Like, it, it's a target-rich environment. Yeah, maybe. Where I do know. I find horny men? Everywhere. On the, uh, in the sticky section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, imagine being the janitor that has to clean that up. I would imagine that that has got to be the highest paid job at the establishment. I was thinking, no the, way. The scrubber. You or don't think a, so? Ex con. No, I think I think they just get yeah an ex con who just has to keep a job to stay out of jail, and they pay him absolute crap to scrub yeah. up all the cum off of everything. He couldn't hack it at Denny's as a line cook, and so now he's yeah. scrubbing cum on the in the adult theater. Uh, what yeah. a life! What a life we just made up. How sad. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I would. Would you guys feel comfortable doing that if they were if you were like, man, man, I want to jack off, but it's 1971 and I really don't want to get in my car and drive to <laughs> this place where everybody knows like, hey, that's Ted beating off Ted. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I, I couldn't do it. Occur I bet it was like, super sti- prior, stigma. Yeah. Prior to VHS and Betamax, like, I guess there really wasn't much porn you could watch at home. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, like there would have been some like little little reels, maybe, but that would have sure. been rare, yeah. rare, rare. And mm-hmm. and you gotta like set up a projector and a screen and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. You gotta clear the thing. whole family out of the living room to set up the projector. <laughs> All right, everyone, it's time for you to get ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> time for the kids to go to get mom and dad are pro- are putting on a show. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's funny. We talk all the time about like, ah, you kids didn't understand before the internet. Porn was rough. We had to watch Cinemax. Uh, shit. People could say that to us and be like, you didn't understand. Before VHS, we had to use magazines. Yeah. And it could and even it was- be illegal in certain places. Like, uh, 
people were getting arrested at gay bars basically for being gay into the 60s and late 50s at least and pornography was and the obscenity laws and freedom of speech are not quite what they were today you could get arrested for obscenity or Pee Wee herman got busted for public exposure it was not uh as legal as what we deal with now that was a false flag <laughs> he didn't he wasn't beating off in there thank you kyle Whatever. i thought that was a decent <laughs> from <laughs> I I, dude i loved that movie so much Wee's big adventure so i didn't fun. know about the. i didn't know there was a movie as a kid i i'd seen the show though i grew up with the show um he was playhouse yeah I, it was time uh, for the mail again and then like that thing comes in the the window the the mail there was it was like a a really disjointed and jarring Blues Clues, <laughs> like yeah. where there was a, really a plot. He got, he got a, a bad, bad rap, rap because because parents couldn't explain to kids my age that he was jerking off, so they kind of made it sound like he was a pedophile or something. Yep. So my parents so that, told me, and so that kind of stuck. And it was like, dude was just jerking off, right? Like minding mm-hmm. his own business in his seat that plenty of other dudes had jerked off in, I'm sure. And and like that's what he got busted for, and it was like, how do you even get arrested for that? What cop is like, you know what? (laughs) That's what he's doing that night. He was, was I'm sure it was a cop whose job that night was to sit in that theater and look for somebody jerking it. Yeah, my god, what a waste. Or they targeted Pee maybe they targeted him specifically. You know, they were like, look, if Um, if I'm a cop and I see a celebrity duck into a porno theater, I'm gonna be like, (gasps) I'm this close to busting Pee Wee. I didn't think about what an (laughs) asshole they were, you little fuck. Like, like yeah, busting a guy for show? jerking off in a place where you jerk off is bullshit. It is bullshit. You I, jerk off with a wink and a nod there, though, because it's not supposed to be like it's. It's like yeah, we all know you're doing it. It's like when you got a beer in a brown bag, right? Like yeah, we know what's going on here, but just keep it on the down low, right? Don't, yeah, don't, don't go crazy. But the, it's like I, it, maybe I'm wrong, why? but I feel like the adult theater business model is guys go in there and jerk off. That that's yeah, that's happening. the whole model, 100. So yeah, they're not the like victim taking victim memories. Pee Wee Herman jerking off. Did other people go in there hoping not to be exposed well, to sexual acts? He's the victim. Hold up. This would have been the mid to late 80s, so I assume it would have been the Nancy Reagan morality push. You know, 90. I would guess. Lock down all this stuff. I would guess 90s because because yeah, I was born in 86. So okay. And I knew about this shit for whatever reason when I was a young man. Yeah. So, okay, it was 1991. Uh, so, and then, I mean, that's the year I was born, and I knew about this. This was one of those like grade school things that came up. That was like, you know, that show Pee Wee with Pee Wee Herman. He molests kids. What did they like, tell you about oh, AIDS? Man. Uh, I I really didn't get much of an education on AIDS other than like it's an STD. Like and it's the and it was like told as like the fucking worst one like the do not pass go you will die of this. So, At the time, that was a hundred percent true. They did not have the treatments they have today. Yeah, it was a death sentence. That, magic, magic's whole like campaign on NBC was was still very much going on when I was like five. Uh, so I remember being five, four or five years old, and watching like Magic on TV, being like, you know, talking about fucking AIDS, mm-hmm. and like growing up knowing that like it could get in your blood and you couldn't get it out and you couldn't stop it from killing you. You were just dead yeah. unless you were magic and nobody's that big and strong. <laughs> He's mad. It was I like, was maybe in... if you ball out hard enough, you can survive, but probably not. You're white. Magic Johnson <laughs> getting AIDS or HIV was, uh, was almost like a nine 11 sort of, you remember where you were when you heard it moment for people my age. Yeah. And, uh, I was in a, away meet for my college swim team when we found out that magic johnson had this and we were all like whoa he's gonna die this guy has like two years left and i can't think of a celebrity today who is the parallel to magic johnson back then he was like the best basketball player his career was still active he even came back and played a little bit with aids his career was still active he was like the champ and he was so charismatic everybody loved magic johnson like that they don't feel that way about Joel Embiid or Kyrie Irving or whoever is today's, you know, best player and Joe Kick. Um, Magic Johnson was was popular culture. And yeah. damn, it was a big deal. I'm glad he's OK. Yeah. And he spent his life educating and he's and and like. He's still do. I mean, he's fine, right? Like, was like he stigmatized nowadays, for it? I don't remember this as well at the time. Because people like, didn't want to play with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They OK. Were, they didn't want to play with him. They didn't want him on the court. Um, and it was and like, like, oh, if you got AIDS, old, you must be gay. 
watched they asked my- that, but they didn't want him to sweat. Like you're going to sweat playing basketball and no one wanted like, they're like, how do I play with a guy who's about to sweat all over me? Yeah. And it, you know what? Like yeah, people didn't know. I think it turns out that that's not a real concern, but when I, you know, in 1993 or whatever it was, it was like, yeah, but you know, it's not fair. What do you, like, yeah. It's scary. Nobody really knew. It was all, I mean, all the stuff I got, I went to public school. The information was wild, conflicting. Uh, I had a police officer come to school and say stuff like uh, people with AIDS would try to bite or spit at them, which probably wasn't real. Uh, oh, one way it is. Uh, well, one person told me you could get it from sweat. One person said you didn't. Uh, if I went to Bible school, it was only gay people get AIDS. Uh, it was, I mean, in the early nineties education on this was like, like almost nothing Even today. I'm like, can you get it from swallowing cum? I think you can't, but it seems like you should. I think you're going to need an open wound. You would need the way. something. Cause like, I think the reason that it spreads so much from anal sex is cause that creates a lot of like fissures and damage to your tissue. And so there's a lot of inroads for it to, to go yep. in. I think, I think, I think that's a very absorbent area too. I, I, I think Those much like the inside of your mouth, maybe it's absorbing some nutrients down there, you know, like, like sucking up some little AIDS particles. That's, I don't know if you do you know about the AIDS molecule. You've seen it right under a microscope. No, oh, is, y'all gotta call me on this thing? shit. I'm trying to be silly here. It's, it's a virus. It's a virus. I There's did no say this is a real thing. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I was I was so worried about looking like a dickhead. I was like, I think he's joking with me, but I'm not a thousand percent. I was about. I was. I wanted you to laugh at me, and then I was gonna like say that it was like shaped like little gay people or something. <laughs> like, 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 but, but you did. It's just a no, bunch no, of no. little Harvey Firesteins no. running around in the <laughs> microscope. I mean, but, but yeah, it it down. everything is a kid. Before There's it was HIV, it was this. Grid. Uh, Woody, are you old enough to remember Grid? Was that a thing? Grid. No, I don't know. Uh, it was when it was very first discovered. It was discovered exclusively in gay communities. And for the first three or four years of its existence, they called it gay-related immunodeficiency. Oh. And they genuinely thought that there was something about being gay that caused people to become immunodeficient. And it took a while for oh. HIV as we know it to become the name. Yeah. For them to realize it's just the mechanics of what they're doing that makes it more, much more likely, not like a gay people have a gene. Taylor, that I don't know that happen. that's true. I, I think if that were true, then they wouldn't let gay people give blood. <laughs> I can't even say that. It's because, because they don't sometimes. <laughs> I get that one. <laughs> it's weird to me that gay people mistake. still can't get blood. It's weird to what, Woody? Uh, gay people can't get blood. Like, that's a thing. It's, uh, they it's, fixed that, Woody. You, you no, and your didn't. lefty buddies. They, they, they <laughs> didn't. You can't get blood if you're gay. That's just a thing. And I'm like, is really? that? Is there yeah. just like a really homophobic guy at the door? Like, at that time. They ask you. All, almost, There's a questionnaire. Almost. Like, have you, you been to Africa in the last three months? Have you had sex with someone for money in the last couple months? Have you had a tattoo? Jesus. Are you gay? Oh, this is in the questionnaire. Right. Yeah, I don't think sense. Sense. Is I the thought gay thing really back. still a thing. I thought um, they let the gays give blood now. That, that's the only. I yeah, that was a I'm thing. sure that that's the they, they don't. Yeah, so basically they just like exclude people who are oh, more wait. likely to have that. Is that it? I so don't know. that might have been true in '92. I doubt it's true now. We, we look so we maybe I'm remembering the question correctly because Zach here says that if you haven't had gay sex in the last three months, they let you do it. Yeah, take a that's little break. Weirdly specific. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. You, you know, you. Well, you're you you're in the middle of problems. a dry spell. You're trying to feel good about yourself. You want to do something to help the world. You go. You get some hey, blood. you want? Hey, you want to slim down? Maybe, it, maybe it's been three months. Dude, you need to slim down a little. How about a pint of blood? You know what that weighs? Fucking two pounds, bro. Yeah. And I how just, many calories does it take to replenish that blood? That's something you're not considering. I bet tremendous. some. You're gonna you're gonna have that gaunt, faint look after you give this blood. It's gonna be it, it's gonna be a good look for you. I'm gonna start giving blood. Well, Break three months. You said. Off. Dude, I pass out every fucking time. I got some, I got, Taylor, I got, that was a good joke. It went, on, it went unnoticed, but I like it. Drifter, I bet you've given a lot of blood. Do, do you get squeamish at all with the, the needles and the, the, the multiple vials of dark fucking plasma being taken and shit? I didn't used to. Uh, oh. Last year, I had a, one of my veins explode. They get, they're like, we have a trainee nurse, and we want you to be her first real patient. We have, a, we have an expert nurse here to help her. I shit you not, uh, I'm can't have but you know you're supposed to stick it in sort of long way she went in sideways straight ah. across oh. fucking 
the main nurse was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it was. And after that, I'm way more reluctant to give blood now. Oh my God. Every time That's I do big, it, I get me. very lightheaded. I get faint. Uh, I, and, and, and the time and time is ticking. You got to be quick to get to get if you got if you're going to take seven or eight vials, you better get moving, buddy, because oh, yeah, they have to uh, click and unclick the thing. So they have to try to hold it still with one hand and pop it out without moving it and then click another one in without moving it. Yeah. And every fucking time you're getting restabbed. I Yeah. Well, it, it's wiggling around in there yeah. and like. And, and like the last time I gave blood, like I, or you know, got te- got all my blood work done. Like like me and this guy are having a conversation because, and we both know that that I'm trying to, he's trying to keep me awake, and I know, so I'm trying to keep me awake, and I've got like fucking you're gonna wet. be okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be fucking reservoir dogs. <laughs> Isn't it great that I know that immediately yeah. the way you said you're gonna be okay <laughs> that you mean reservoir? Say dogs. the magic I'm words, like, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> fucking Harvey Keitel's the best. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm going down eventually. I got those. I bet we all know what those brown paper towels taste like when they're wet. You know, those, those cheap ass recycled brown paper towels that you've had yeah. Have, have, yeah. from from sports never like all, they were yeah. always at school. So like anytime Why do you that, have like, them in your mouth, though, but well, mm-hmm. like the, 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 the like water drips off of them into your like you taste them eventually by like putting the cold thing yep. on your face like okay. and it has a smell. It has this wet cardboard like smell. School. Yeah. Yeah. It smells like tastes like school. It, it's all it, anyway. That's wild. I'm, I know I can I like can viscerally <sighs> smell exactly what you're talking about. And I haven't seen I go, one of those since I left school, like high school. <laughs> they've got them at uh at LabCorp, uh, where I get my blood work done. And uh, Old LabCorp, uh, they'll they'll provide them free of charge. That that gentleman was great. He, I always, I, I've told this before, but I always try to like hype them up because I want them to do a good job. I was like, I bet you're a professional at this. You probably do it every day. I probably won't feel a thing, huh? And then, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh shit, maybe. Well, I guess if I try hard, I could live up to this guy's expectations. For <laughs> I'll do my You're best. You're a good patient. You got a good attitude. Up. I try to set them up. And if they do the first, no, no, no matter how well they do the first initial thing, I'm like, damn, you are good at this. So <laughs> I'm trying to really build this guy's confidence up because I want him to shine right now because I need him for the next 10 minutes so that I don't crack my skull on that countertop. <laughs> I gave blood at the blood connection or something. And, uh, I tell the same stupid fucking dad joke every time. In my head, these people are doing this all day, every day. I am their 19,000th person they've done this on. Yeah. And my veins are easy to spot. Like, honest to goodness, from like 14 feet away, I told a woman, I'm told my veins are easy. And she's like, yeah, I can see it from here. You have the easiest veins I'll encounter today. Like, that's who I am. So I get this woman and I say the same stupid fucking joke. Like, oh, is this your first time? And she's like, "Eh." wait, what? Seriously? Like, this is your your first first time? And she's like, on a a live person, yes, this is my first time. On a living how yeah, did it yeah. go with the dead guy? Well, I think it was like a model or something. Like, like she went through phlebotomy oh. camp yesterday, and now it's her first day actually sticking some, you know, something that's mm-hmm. alive as opposed to like a mannequin. And um, she's like, she like gets up next to my vein and waits there and waits there and waits there, like she's fucking icing the kicker in an NFL game. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> and. And I, by the way, like I've donated blood a lot of times, so I guess it's no big deal. I don't, you know, I'm like, all right, all right, it's your first time. Someone's got to be, and it might as well be a guy like me. And uh, then she puts it in really, oh, no. really slowly. She's maximizing how much this hurts. And then she pulls it out a little bit because she got scared and re stabbed. Mm. Guys, uh. the blood is it's it's shooting not like in the roof or anything, but like four <laughs> inches. And I'm it's getting blood all over my t-shirt, <laughs> all over my shorts, like I'm bleeding <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's under the guidance of somebody who's better. And and that person oh, really? in with like a bandage and like covers the open wound. <laughs> <Turn it can't laughs> <tell. laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they wrap it up with that stretchy little colored bandage and they switch arms and uh switch arms. Yeah, yeah. And I even let the noob do it again to my other arm because I'm like trying to be nice. And she she also did it really, really slow, but she did it better. I I, I got no patience for that. Like like I could be I could be super polite while people 
are bad at whatever they're doing and, and be like encouraging or helpful or whatever I need to be in that moment. But not what if you're jabbing me with a needle. Like I no, no, no. I I'm not this is this might be a learning hospital or some shit, but mm -hmm. I'm not a learning patient. I'm not a guinea pig. You get somebody who knows how to fucking do this shit, or I'm gonna be so goddamn difficult yeah. about this. Don't I, let I'm them do show your arm up. Don't don't let them do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've done what Kyle's talking, but not for me. One time they couldn't find Hope's vein, my daughter, and she was like three. And she had a big cut on her forehead. It was using the ER and they wanted to give her an IV. And this woman, she couldn't find her vein. Now, Hope's veins at the time were very hard to find. Kids are tough. Yeah. And I think I've told this before, but like she stuck her once, didn't work, stuck her twice, didn't work. And I was like, uh, 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 you're fired. And uh, they're like, no, 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 this is a hospital. We all have to learn. We have to do it. I'm like, uh, 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 you've tried it. Go get your ace. And they're like, we don't have aces around here. But I'm like, yeah, you do. You know, this is what I said. I was like, everybody here knows who's really good at this. Everyone on this floor knows that nurse who gets the, the hard veins the first time. It's time to get her. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And they went. They went and got yeah, someone we'll fucking else. leave, bro. She got it There's first another time. hospital 15 minutes away. Fuck <laughs> you. You could see Hope's skull. Like, we were going to stick. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we Horrible. were going to stick around. But well, we uh, see Brian. I heard somebody over here needed the ace. <laughs> <laughs> <That's not what laughs> happened. Like a gunsling. Shows up like six shooter needles, like uh, like the Mexican <laughs> bullet belts, nurse? just needles. She's probably Give me a smile, sweetheart. Look at the film. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably 45 years old and and she was the ace and she went and she's it, it didn't even seem hard to her she's just like all right this is this is what i'm here for yeah because she was the ace and they fibbed there was an ace the whole time they yeah. were just yeah, like I, this guy doesn't need the ace yeah i'll be the one yeah, to decide i hate that when shit. they need the ace um, i've always been real squeamish about uh, about that and getting that done not a fan of it. oh not, i, I rewatched blood as a whole movie. right just like when it, you're watching it come out of you you know what it is it's it's, this might sound weird. It's my blood that bothers me. Hmm. Uh, like if you if you're sense. hurt and I need to help you, like I'm I'll be I'll be fine. Like oh. like like, um, it's it's when I'm bleeding and my blood is like coming out of me and it's it that really fucks me up. Um, it's also been usually if I'm like gushing that. blood, I've also just sustained a bit of an injury too, so I'm a little out of it because of that. So like maybe <laughs> that's contributing. But just in general, like like I'm talking about giving blood, so that's. That's clearly the, you know, different, different case uh, that yeah. bothers me. Like seeing my blood come out is a big part of it. Like I try to look away, but like, I know what these big ass, vi I'm like, how many do you have to take? Cause I never know. You know, it depends what's been ordered. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <sighs> and your he, blood he goes, is your life. Yeah. <laughs> he flips to the second page of tests <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> I feel like and, you're describing my life right now. You I've had to do basically that every three months. It's like, it's like eight vials or something, which I don't know if that's a lot. I'm sure there's some poor fucker <laughs> out there that gets a dozen. Blood. But it's a lot. It feels like a lot of my blood is gone after they're done, and I feel lightheaded. But yeah, I, I don't like seeing my blood come out. But like shooting deer, that never bothered me. That blood's never never been a big deal. That's no, animal. Blood. Um, and it's the well, it would, it would be upsetting to see an animal bleed if it was like your dog or something. But when you're going out there to shoot a deer, well, yeah, I'm talking about in. more like like the sight of blood certainly isn't the problem because I've been okay. in like slaughterhouses and uh, like, 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 you know, I've hunted a lot, I've seen plenty of that. Like, so, we've that been having such me. a fun time chatting. Mm. We got to do the sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Lock and Load, the finest cum supplement in existence. If you want to blow the mind of your siblings parents friends uh <laughs> lovers even try this out nine pills a day if it didn't work we wouldn't be making you shove fucking nine pills in your mouth every day we would be saying like all those other bullshit ones like oh just take this little thing that's nonsense that's why they're priced cheaper because they're not efficacious so you may as well just pray for it or you can get the real thing lock and load code pka code jizz or you can use that code for any of the other wonderful products over at Derek's site linked below be sure to try the nitric oxide pre-workout the mm -hmm. no skin one is my prefer mm -hmm. make you strong and dude make you real yeah. strong and the protein well i've been uh i ran out of chocolate so i went to vanilla i've been doing vanilla protein and then adding just a little cocoa powder in it and it's oh. really really good i like orange it. juice you gotta get some orange juice in there that that's, sounds that's, that's, with vanilla that's awful that, it's that's like orange, orange cream cream sickle. sickle baby it's fucking delicious uh, mm. you're selling it now i, I was like okay. orange juice protein powder this is the most ridiculous thing i've never heard and then he said cream all sickle. i've ever done so it's what derek oh, wants me to do i'll try it. i'll try it out <laughs> 
So eight ounces of orange. <clears throat> Check out Lock and Load, code PKA, code Jizz. This episode also brought to you by Death by Gummy Bears, realdbg.com. Happy New Year from Death by Gummy Bears. We're excited to announce <laughs> that our hardest hitting Delta 8 product is back on the market after a temporary hiatus due to a little government oversight. You've probably been to their site and saw the products are all out of stock. Well, no longer. They're back. The oh yeah, this is the part that cracks me up. Well, here's why the fucking government once again <laughs> tried to rule by overreach. The big G government just hates to see us having a little fun. It's it's impossible not to go Alex Jones for this. Please, <laughs> they've gone through a major facelift and rebrand. They are now the real DBG rather than Death by Gummy Bears because of not so many a shell cats, company situation at all. Not a shell company situation. This <laughs> unlike my products, these are going to get you fucked. This is a up. legitimate business maneuver. It's a little legitimate business maneuver, not like me and my, my shit. Uh, they've like gone that. through a major facelift, real DBG rather than uh, death by gummy bears because of so many copycats making shit products, convincing the public that they were the same. New website, realdbg.com. To celebrate the new year and rebranding, we are offering a special promotion, 23% discount for all orders placed in the rest of January. That's the rest of January, folks. Just a few more days. 23% discount. Just visit realdbg.com and make sure to enter promo code PKA23 for your 23% discount. Don't miss out. Limited time offer. Hell of a deal. Get fucked up on drugs you can get online. I have a death by gummy story. Oh. So I'm famously like the, the THC virgin on this show, but that's not really true anymore. I, I've been taking the wacky weeds one like once a night. It, I, like, I like going to bed. with It helps me fall asleep. It's good. Uh, putting my son to sleep is kind of an ordeal lately. I don't need to talk, bad, but yeah, he just talks and talks and talks and he drags out. He doesn't want to go to bed or whatever. And and when I have a little wacky weed, it's like, you know what? Yeah, tell me about your third favorite death of Walking Dead. I'm interested. You know, I love what, what, you're, Damn, you're what else a good are you? No, no, really those, are, those off. <laughs> every time you tell this story, I feel I, I think it's going to lead to you drugging your son. And every time I'm happily surprised when it's just you relaxing so you can handle his, his little story. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's how it goes. So it's much more wholesome. So I'm down. Yeah. Anyway. I am no longer the THC virgin that I once was. I'm a bit of a THC slut now, taking yeah. it on the daily, deep-throating these gummy bears. So um, I'm like, you know what? I'm running low on the wacky weeds. We're, 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 we're in between shipments. Uh, I appreciate what you guys do for me, but I could use more. Oh, and um, <laughs> But I have these death by gummies that like stack up around here, right? Because I'm not a heavyweight like that. But I think now I am. Now I'm going to have a death by gummies gummy. And I'm going to have a whole one because I feel like getting the effects of it tonight. How many milligrams is a whole one? I don't fucking 100. know. Enough that I woke up in the middle of the night and went to the bathroom and laid on the tile floor because it was cold. <laughs> I am not ready for this shit yet. 250 milligrams? They're, oh, no, they're, they're 100 a piece. And, and just like we always tag this to the end of the read. Like we're not fucking around. <laughs> like, don't, don't, I'm genuine. I'm being serious. Um, we're yeah. not fucking around with how strong these are. Uh, buy yourself one pouch, you know, one of the thousand milligrams. And that, that's not 10 edibles, even though there's 10 in there. That's way more than 10. Do not start with one. If you have a low tolerance, you will have a bad time. They're very fucking strong. So take it easy. on. Yeah. I, I, and if you are currently a guy who says, well, I take 250, so I'll just enjoy this 100 by death by gummies. There's a very real chance that the people who sold you your 250s lied to you. And death yeah. by gummies is not. So you might be taking 20 or something and, and yeah. thinking it's 50. And then you've upped your dose by five times, not knowing what you're up oh, to. Oh, yeah. Death by gummies is so strong. <laughs> the government stepped in to go, these <laughs> are too strong. And they said, fuck you. <laughs> and people are getting too high. The government kind of had a point. Try a half or a third of one. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's fascism. You should be able to get as blasted on. And look, um, in, like I'll show Drifter. It's not. It's a gummy bear. It's this. Yes, it really is. It looks, I, you could, like, you should eat one. I, I mean, I've Kyle. Kyle likes to be high on the show. I don't like to be high on the show because I feel like it makes me like. That's not actually funny. Don't say that. Oh, you should have said that. Like, or something like that. He's, like, Kyle can do it just fine. I know, you Woody, like you don't get high for the show stuff. either, right? I, I Like, three times I have. You know, like, it's yeah. not like I'm like, yeah, to yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, We did it for the... Like, if I took, like, a few hits of the vape, I'd be fucking fine. But I'm not taking edibles on the show. And I don't even, like... Like, I like getting high when everything is done for the day. You know? Like, 
Like people, there, there are people like Kyle who like enjoy like getting high before working out or like with their morning coffee or whatever. Like I if I, like sometimes I'll do that Kyle. and I always regret it. I'll be like, oh, I should take a hit or something and then work out and I'll do it and be like, fuck, like, oh yeah, this is why I don't do this because I still have shit I have to do, but I'm going to do it slower and not be as focused. And I won't even be enjoying the feeling of being high. Whereas like, like after I knock this show out, my evening's done and it's like, I can just relax, enjoy, play some games, really, you know, enjoy it. I don't have to feel like I'm fighting back against it in order to be effective, which is what I feel like if I'm high and I have shit to do. Like, I, I don't want to. And like you, you fuck your tolerance up being high all day. Real bad. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's why I'm not getting uh, into death by gummy shape because <laughs> yeah. I'm only doing it for bedtime. <laughs> I need morning, noon, and night gummies. To if help it's in you 24-7, <laughs> it'll really ramp it up. It's different than once a day. When I first I started get getting pain. sick, I had to 24-7 Delta 8 to kind of function because I was feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. And very rapidly, I started getting used to it and building up a tolerance, which was no fun because then you just have to take more and more to get the same effect. Yeah. yeah, well, in this case, expensive. more and more is this much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if um, I see an edible now where it's like, you get to eat this whole cookie for 20 milligrams, I'm like, fuck, fuck you. Like, fuck you. Give me a gummy bear that I can just go and, and I'm good. Like, I don't oh, want a whole snack. I want to get no. high and then later enjoy a snack that's not that doesn't have weed in it because all your weed cookies don't taste good, guys. They're, they're not regular that's cookies are, are better. I've never had a weed cookie. Uh, you're winning me over to your it tastes side. like It tastes a little like weed, which takes you out of the cookie experience. Yeah, something there doesn't taste it's like It's a very weed. earthy cookie. The, the other problem is, though, if, if you like have yeah. or if you like all the delicious edibles, weed cookies, weed ice cream, weed sodas, and all that stuff in legal states, you'll have one of those and be like, great. And then you'll get stoned and get the munchies. And the only food you have are like more weed sodas <laughs> and weed brownies. And you're like, ah, just have another one or two. It's not so bad. And you're gone. Yeah, I tried a, well, I was, this is years ago in Colorado, but they, I was at the dispensary and they had blue moon beer, weed, weed beer. And so it didn't have alcohol in it. It just had THC in it. And you know, when you're in like a legal state, especially years ago, it's like, you want to try all the different things. Like, it's like, oh, I want to try some flour. I want to try some edibles. Like, what? A drink? Like, I'd never seen a weed drink before. And so I got one of those. It was it was the worst consumer decision ever. It was, it was, it was disgusting. It was the worst tasting beverage I've ever had. And it only had like 15 milligrams in it. And so I had like one swig and was like, ah. No, we figured it out with smoking it, like for sure. Like we, we figured it out with smoking it and eating uh. it. We don't need to have a disgusting, skunky skunky liquid it's like it's still got hops in it and it's like what why that sounds gross i can tell you the sodas have improved considerably i had some uh last year in seattle and they were i wouldn't have i no idea there was any cannabis in them at all i'll try one next time not a not a beer a soda because the soda with the sweetness it can at least fight back against it a little and bit as a heads up the sodas hit fast they're all sugar, just like the gummy bears, but they're already like liquidy and digested. They just 10, 15 minutes, you're going. I'm good with that. I, I like the, the quick onset. I want a stevia gummy bear, right? We're, we're, we're trying, we're on a cut, baby. <laughs> <laughs> a stevia weed gummy bear for the, for the bougiest of bougie people. <laughs> stevia gummy bear. Oh, I can't have that. <laughs> <sighs> Weed yeah. is getting bougie now, though. I mean, because of all the legalization stuff, the Snoop Dogg brand is fancy. They have ultra premium weed and thousand dollar bongs and every type of food. And 20 years ago, it was just whatever you could get. And maybe you could turn it into hash. I don't have my own expertise, but I lean on Kyle's and he's like, yeah, you're fucking screaming eagle and purple headed monster or whatever. They're all weed to him. Like he he can't tell the difference. He's not even that big into the difference between Invicta and Stevia. St Indica Thank you. Indica and Stativa. I couldn't not say Stevia and I was stuck <laughs> on it. Uh, so like if Kyle says they're all pretty similar, he's a subject matter expert. Yeah. And I mean, we're in the, we're in the final count here in Missouri, like 10 more days. And then I can walk right into an open dispensary and get to buy in. And I've said it before, one popped up. Yeah, in like close to you. Yes, that I am noticing that <laughs> fucking Thank everywhere. So like now, you just I'm just driving around. And it's like that wasn't there. 
that was a fucking steak and shake and i'd be better i'd prefer that to go back to a steak and shake concept <laughs> because like <laughs> i'd rather have a steak and shake than like another weed store but i'm i'm excited for it. it's gonna be fun like a just blessing. being able to go and buy it and and like M- missouri top tier one of the coolest states we got the best gun laws we we look at states like georgia and with pity in our hearts for those fascist gun laws and the fascist weed laws here in missouri we're above it all we have buy yourself a gun and then go, you know, enjoy legal weed later in the day w- without the gun. You fucking lunatic. Don't bring the, the gun. <laughs> but like, you can do everything. The, a land of freedom. I think I think we're going to see a lot of people. Hopefully, I don't want people to move to Missouri the way they moved to Colorado. I don't want that. I don't want any fucking like hippie. I don't know. Wisconsinites coming. Or no, yeah, Wisconsin's there. I don't there. think that's yeah. happening. Like two thirds of the country has legal weed now. And I'm in the exact opposite. Texas is like quadrupling down and they're arresting college students for having Delta eight vape pens and uh, hitting them with like drug trafficking charges and crazy stuff like that. Well, no. Delta eight is illegal in Texas and they just enforce it selectively, but it's still on store shelves. That sucks. Then you don't even get Delta eight there. You can, no, you can buy it, oh, but yeah. also you can be arrested for being in possession of it. North and Carolina recently they've been cracking down on students mostly. North Carolina is considered the first bill they're going to consider in like this Congress is medical marijuana. And with that, I've, I've seen medical marijuana be like New Jersey's where it was like, if you have this one specific thing that that little mm-hmm. girl had, then you can get legal weed and there's no stores because they'd all have to cater just to her. Yeah. And I've seen it like California used to have it where they sounded like there were fucking ticket booths on the sidewalk where doctors would give you. you I was there. There were. It was ludicrous. Uh, So that was (laughs) basically recreational under the guise of medical. I don't know where we'll be on that spectrum, but they're going to consider it. Once you get medical, it's just a stepping stone. Like you will get to legal eventually once you have that. Like. Missouri got medical in like 2017 or some shit. And now just a few years later, we've got the real thing. I don't know what medical gets you because like, okay, now I have my card hypothetically. Where do I buy it? It's not going to be on every corner like it will when it's legal, legal. There's still be a lot. I guess I'm thinking mostly about California and Washington. Like it was medical, but there was still dispensaries with plenty of brands and and, uh, stuff going on. And the, the license was not hard to get and they were all over the city. It was just legal with extra steps. Okay. Yeah, that's how it is in a lot of places. We'll see our, how it lands. I don't know anybody who's like super against it anymore. <sighs> well, really. you should come to Texas, boy, man. <laughs> even, 30% even my, my, of our popu- 30% of Texans are against legal weed, so it's staying illegal because those are 30% magas. Yay. Well, that's a sucks. topic. I, what it's... you got? Zach, are you here, Zach? I hope I know you're having missed the whole weed topic. Weather things. It'll come up again here. if you could Next open week. that, Zach. Um, it's picture critical, though. Zach's here, right? You know, it's hard to say. Okay, Zach, can you open that? I'm sure he's working on. It. it takes a second. This guy is uh, is dating a woman. She's he's 26 and she's 23. However, she looks like she's, what would you call her, 11? Something like that. Oh, dear. And uh, people are accusing of being a pedo. And he's like, dude, the, this is a real relationship with the 23-year-old woman. Her stunted growth is a side effect of brain cancer treatment that she received as an infant. Oh. And her disability made it hard for her to find love. And he's like, dude, I, I love her personality. This is a 23-year-old woman. Why are you acting like I'm some sort of pedo? And I'm kind of on his side with this. Like one, she has a disability and she's entitled to find love too, right? Like I would take this chick over a fat one. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like it was really easy. Like when you were introing the story to be like, oh, that's kind of ghoulish. And then when you were like, but she has a brain tumor that forced her like this. And does she not deserve like love or something as an adult? And it's like that. That's a fucking good point. She, she is an adult and you know, she had a brain tumor. So now she can't date anyone ever. Like that's pretty fucked up. I get, I get like the, the optics of it, like looking at it, that especially that paddleboard picture is like, okay, like some jacked dude. And then some little like child. I would have said a nine year old. Okay. But really in terms of like things that affect her desirability, not as bad as too many donuts. Right. Am I alone on this? 
I mean, you can. So what's? I think you're okay, alone. So she's she's not going to grow. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Taylor. What'd you say? <laughs> Kyle, you're muted, bud. What was that? You're not going <laughs> to on that one. <laughs> I think when he's all alone on, on a little island, really, a little, little Epstein yeah. island. Oh, I try. Yeah. He's over by himself on Little St. James. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I tried right, to so get us past that quickly. <laughs> take this woman and stack rank her. How fat would she have to be before she wins out physically over the fat? Like Lizzo? Everyone takes her. What he's like? Lizzo, what he's right? like? How fat would a chick have to be before you'd fuck a kid and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, thank you. Thank you. That's where this is going <laughs> damn i know we get wild on the show i heard that i'm like ooh. <laughs> yeah. ooh move past that nah. <laughs> nah, I don't nah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. look 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 um i think that sucks for her but yeah that's um, sad you know I, I think she looked i think in some of those pictures like like the, specifically the paddle boarding one you can just kind of see like you can't see her face so like like i don't know i i bet her face looks more adult in like yeah. person or like in certain lighting um and, and like her being tiny isn't the problem to me because there's plenty of itty bitty girls and there's plenty yeah. of like relationships with there. huge size disparity disparities i remember like seeing Shaq with that i don't know girlfriend slash wife of his or something and thinking like come on it's just a joke yeah. like, if you crime. find the tiniest girl you could <laughs> right <laughs> sex with her must be like a puppet act <laughs> <laughs> Like, 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 dude, every night you're committing a war crime against that poor girl's ass. Like, like. She's hyping herself up in the bathroom before every time. <laughs> Come on! You He's got smelling salt. NBA money! <laughs> He's doing smelling salts to take that guy. He's got... <laughs> he, he, he's going to get me the finest electric wheelchair. you got to get so high to, to, to jump on top of Shaq. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, that guy's getting a bunch of hate, I suppose. Uh, because well, don't of his post story. shit on social media, bro. Like, like, like that's step one, yeah. right? Like, I shouldn't be able to see your paddle boarding photo with your with your little nymph of a wife or whatever she is. Um, when I could know? see her face, I could tell she wasn't a child because yeah, she agreed. had like um mm. like adult creases. Not trying to be mean. Well, that bitch like, got a just... TV show. I don't care about any of this anymore. She has a TV show. <laughs> yeah, she's got a TV show. I don't care anymore. <laughs> 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 Once you get a TV show, little, you're a little pussy. But, big but imagine you're like a waiter, yeah. right? Imagine you're at little IHOP, pussy big world. and this this guy sits down with a little girl. It's late. You're not paying much attention. You think it's a dad and his daughter, right? And they sit there, and then you look over, and they're like making out, and you haven't had time to like. When's the last time you saw a couple make out at dinner? Yeah, I've seen a lot of things. If you go to I've IHOP never... after one a.m., you're going to see all sorts of shit. Especially you a don't want to speak up in a, a one a.m. IHOP, you'll be killed. You keep you <laughs> pipe down in there, white boy. Yeah, allow, <laughs> allow the the IHOP patrons to do or really, waffle that guy house making talking the about. pancakes. I'll beat your ass. Oh, <laughs> I've seen no, the guy <laughs> the counter. IHOP is equally scary. Look, look, everybody's going to oh, talk about the wa waffle that. house experience. I have seen some crazy. I, I think I saw a video where there was a shooting in an IHOP, and it killed the guy. I like, freak out. Fuck yeah. with me. Show the fuck with me over my pancakes. And it's like, dude's dead at IHOP. Like, I've seen some Waffle House Jesus. beat downs. The greatest mm -hmm. Waffle House clip ever, though. Some, some crazy fucker was living in the roof of a Waffle House. What? Simultaneously, a patron or an employee was recording, I think, because the ceiling was a little bulging. And then this cocksucker fell off onto somebody's, like, Grand Slam breakfast, <laughs> and then had to make a mad dash for it oh. because he'd been outed as the, the the scary man who lived in the ceiling. Well, hey, yeah, don't miss should... out Denny's. Wild stuff happens at Denny's or Huddle House for those of you in the South. Huddle House, yeah, I haven't um, heard of that, but Denny's. It's I've a classic. only so there are Huddle there. Houses here. I've been I, I've gone to them before, like when when Waffle House isn't an option in Hartwell, Georgia. That is there is no Waffle House. Uh, there's only Huddle House. You got to slide on over to Livonia if you if you, if you want that Waffle House and those delicious scrambled eggs. But every now and then you can't make that little drive. You're, you're just you're having a rough night, so you don't. Um, so I've had some Huddle House before. It's not great, it's not great, but it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know they're they're doing their best to copy Waffle House. That should say all you need to hear. Oh, they they are not up to snuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, are we gonna catch uh, up to those genius? I think I might have told this story on PKA before, so you guys can stop me. Uh, but when I went to Denny's here in Plano, Texas, one time, we found a couple of they were obviously fraudsters performing some sort of remote exorcism via FaceTime, 
cool. pretending that they were in an office. And anytime like the waitress would come by, they'd like quickly hit mute. So the client couldn't hear them, but they were like, the ceiling was mostly what was in view because the phone was low angle and it was hilarious. I stayed extra just to sit there and listen to all the nonsense. It was all the old huckster stuff of like cold reading, clearly Catholic woman, super worked up. Yeah. As soon as the, you send the money on PayPal or whatever, we'll start the ritual. It was the, I, I got a real kick out of it. I got a whole show with my dinner and it was great. I'd love to get some rituals in my life. I don't have any. I feel like that exorcism is just as legit as any other exorcism. I want a priest yeah, there. Much. I want an old white guy there. I, you know what's even better though? Like, like mm. when you see an old black priest, like, like, like I, I'm like, that guy's a real believer because you know how they are in those those countries, right? They're, they're, and and he's stuck with it. He's like a, a, he's like a black belt priest. When I see a black priest, he, like I imagine, I want to see Samuel L. Jackson play a priest, and I want him to exercise black demons specifically. I want to watch that movie. Oh, I did have an blade, idea, but like exorcism or pretty much. I had a really stupid idea for a TV show. I, I, I enjoy a lot of our sponsors, drugs, and, and sometimes I come up with these ideas. But I thought for some reason, you know how like they're busting all those people from the January 6th stuff. It's like every week they're like sending people away for half a decade. The, the, the one guy I think his sentencing guideline was 12 to 18 months roughly. And he was like, no way. I'm, I'm going to try a jury. And the jury gave him like four and a half years. Mm-hmm. So they're all going away. for. And I was thinking like, if you knew someone who was there and you could turn them in, but you weren't gonna, like you'd have a lot of leverage over that person. And I kind of want to see a TV show about that where like <laughs> you like make the person be your butler, like, or, or something silly like oh that. Oh my like God. Like, like, and, and anytime they're <laughs> like, I'm not doing the dishes. He's like, well, what was Miss Pelosi's number again? All right. All right. But <laughs> Could you at least pre-wash them? It's like, yeah, you know, maybe they have that. Really, I want to see that play out as a sitcom. <laughs> he's a January six like rioter, and he's he's got to keep. That I love it. Way. I love it. He has to work and put the, make the poor guy wear a little maid outfit while he scrubs the dishes. Oh, you don't like it? We can we can send show. you to prison. That, that's a different show. There was one recently <laughs> that that guy who put his feet on Pelosi's desk and wrote her yeah. some like I think he called her a bitch in in writing so that when she came back to the desk she'd find the note. Um. He had a plea deal of five years and he turned it down, taking his chances, which I might have too, right? Like five years is a lot. That'll alter your life. Um, and it's coming back and now he's facing 30. Oh. It's not locked in yet. And I'm like, I don't know what to think about that. It's complicated for me. 30 years seems like a really long time. Yeah. But it was a coup attempt to overthrow the government and, you know, was, somebody died and like, well, I get dead. that it had all the, I guess if it's a duck, you know, quack like a duck, you know, walk like a duck, all that. You, you, I guess I get why you call it a coup, but it's almost giving them too much credit in order to hit them with the maximum Ooh. penalties, right? Calling it a coup. Because when I think coup, coup I think that like the minister of defense has been getting all the generals together and he's been putting a word in their ear like, look, the supreme leader's not so supreme these days. He's a fucking combo meal at best. We got to talk about this. And like, 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 look, have, I've talked to the transportation secretary. He's uh, he's open to some of our ideas. If we put forward a United, that's a coup. That's when I get the key holders in line. And then I walk in the room and take out El Presidente myself. And I walk out of that room and I say, I've I have freed our people. Liberty, mm-hmm. and then I take over. Then the same fucking building with the same fucking rules and laws and guns and shit. That's a coup. What those jackasses did was go like MTV <clears throat> Redneck on the that big white building that I'm supposed they to. They stormed the Congress <laughs> building. <laughs> they were looking for Mike Tents. Uh, the big Pence. white building. Mike Tents, looking... baby. All right, I made a mistake. They were <laughs> looking for Tense. Mike Tents. They were looking for Nancy Pelosi. They were chanting. They were going to kill her. I don't know what would have happened if they actually found those people. But they would have. They would have killed those people. Hundred percent chance. And it would have been Republicans too. They were people out there hunting for Ted Cruz and all sorts of people. So I agree coup, with you. The coup, I but, think, was on the like the government end of it and less on the redneck storming the Capitol end with all the fake electors. And mm-hmm. from what I read of the January 6th report, the biggest brained idea I saw is I'm sure most of you are familiar with the fact that they organized fake electors and tried to send people to Washington saying they were the electors for Arizona or Nevada or whatever when they were not. And that's illegal. 
And the idea was that they would do that and get all these fake electors into the electoral count and force Mike Pence to say that there is fraud here and we have to stop the count, which would then bump the timeline further for more election shenanigans. Mm. That doesn't seem like it would work. What were they gonna, like, is some guy going to show up and be like, I'm the Arizona elector? And they're like, all right, Mr. Stevens, can I just see that ID? And they're like, fuck. Yeah, it's like, about, no, that's about like how well that. it went. You know, it was like the Arizona government is actually Republican. And if they had been in the bag for Trump and hired their own electors, then they would have voted for Trump in the electoral count and he would have won. But it turned out that none of the governments, even Georgia and Arizona and like the Republican ones, went for that scheme of alternative kind of fake election. Yeah, a lot of turns out a lot of them actually are like decent Americans who are like, no, I'm not going to throw away the Constitution and make Donald Trump our emperor. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> but right, but amongst that list of decent Americans doesn't include Donald Trump. No, it doesn't because he's a winner. Okay, at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Great well, most, most, mostly a winner. The greatest winner of all time. Look, look, how many we always talk about how many shots Michael Jordan missed and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like we're mad because Donald didn't win every time. <laughs> like, like how many times do we have to get to the moon? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, tried one time right. didn't make it. Nobody's like a... ragging on Apollo 13. Are they? Do they, do they <laughs> well, bring that up all the time? His picks didn't win the midterms. <laughs> they got asshole would do that. <laughs> you, you barely you didn't even make it that time. Yeah. And those pictures suck. Yeah. Like, but of the moon. I, I, I went. Ones. Pretty yeah, I went. Yeah, I'm going know. back. You know, very soon. All right, I'll believe think? that when I see it. I yeah. won't believe it when I see it. Uh-huh. Like, like, I don't know. Which, I don't know which, <laughs> you know what? I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Let, no, somebody's been funding the shit out of NASA because because they've got like a legitimate like uh, moon plan in uh in order. Is there a timeline? Like a broad I, one. There, there is, but I don't know off the top of my head. I was it's like an Elon Musk timeline. NASA does not. that. Too. NASA does that shit too. We'll be on Mars. We found an organism on Mars. You remember that big news story in like 2009? You've been given NASA. You've been razzing NAS- NASA over that for half a decade. Taylor. It's Let such it a big deal. Go. You don't even like aliens. I would if they were cool. Like if if we they're saw not going to be cool. They're going to be microbes. You're going to be like big whoop. <laughs> you're, and the rest you're of right. us are like there was life outside the planet, Taylor. Oh, right. but dude, that would fuck up everything. Imagine every religious organization yeah, finding out. Oh, there's alien life. I looked up the moon it's timeline, and it's fucking hilarious. Okay, we're going to send people around the moon, and I believe I'm on this, no earlier than 2024. Nice. That's embarrassing. But that like, is embarrassing. We're talking about it. It's 2023 right now. But no earlier is not a timeline. If they said no later than 2024, I'd be impressed. Yeah. They said, I promise you it will be after 2024. <laughs> it could be 3024. That man keeps his word. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Technically like, correct, the best like, kind of correct. All right, like, like you want what you want more liars in the government. I, I'm not going to vote for that one. Yeah, See, yeah. Fucking El yeah. Presidente, no, thank yeah, you. I, I I like NASA's attitude of of of, of honesty and and upfrontness, and I can't <laughs> wait till they they take that that sort of spirit to the moon again. Again, so it, no earlier yes, than 2024, again. they'll go around the moon. It says, oh, that's the second mission. The third one will put people on the moon. So cool. One, one, <laughs> they, I'm, wow. I'm just making shit up. We're talking like 2030 ish. It is. I, we, we went there. Oh, in let's do a bet. Let's do a bet. Let's do a bet. <laughs> a bet that pays off in 2030. Uh, no, because I think it's going to happen sooner. I, I think I they're going to. a million dollars. <laughs> One million dollars. Yeah, I'll, I'll take any amount of money that NASA's not on the fucking moon in 2026. <laughs> you know, any amount. Dealer's choice. <laughs> I think I'm with Taylor on this one. Yeah. I'll give you odds. You think that like they didn't do it for a half century and then they're like, oh, fuck, we forgot to carry the one. Like, <laughs> no, you're giving just, me almost they're four not years. Interested. Yeah. You're giving oh, them yeah. almost four years. I will bet you my entire net worth hundreds of dollars. That, <laughs> All that, right. Yeah. All right. Then that's the bet. You, you get the accountants <laughs> working. Because <laughs> that is binding. You know what's funny? Like, like this happens, and Kyle like takes me to court, makes me destitute. <laughs> it's an oral contract, and you've got it recorded. So. He takes both your dogs. I was <laughs> joking. Sending <laughs> Jewish accountants, Taylor. Your entire net worth clothes right off your back. I want your shoes too. Yeah. Oh, I'll I'll hire my own Jews. I'll. I'll... 
You know, they make the best attorneys. That's who you want to hire. They'll, Everyone knows they'll that. They'll fight each other. You know, you know better than that. Oh, you'll, 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 you'll have to get you'll have to get like a Romanian at best. You'll be able to find a if I'm woo, dude, if I have to hire a Romanian attorney and you've got a team of Jewish guys, I'm going to go to Guantanamo Bay like for for welching on a bat <laughs> like because my fucking Romanian guy is going to be like, so I do this. I do get green card. It's like, fuck, man, come on. Like, get, start treating this like it's real. Like Kyle shows up with this team of professional looking suits, immaculately groomed. Yeah. And your lawyer is like this slightly overweight guy that walks in with pants that are too big, yeah. suspenders, you oh, know, a little tie skinhead. that's too little for the big body. Yeah. No, no. Well, not the skinhead. He's got like the three like Homer Simpson hairs going over, <laughs> not covering the bald spot at all. Glasses are greasy. Yeah. And you're like, yep, uh, this this was a uh, what was it? This is small claims court, but I'm going to prison. And Kyle walks in with with seven five foot four men, and I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm going to jail. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he's anti-Semitic. He's anti-Semitic. <laughs> I love Israel. I wore my Israel T-shirt. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Actually, not really. It ruined my life to to be sued for for the. Did moon you uh, did you see the the Memphis cops that that beat that man to death? Is there video yet? I know of this. No, story. the video's coming soon. They say the video's real bad. So, so it interesting. So they beat a black man to death. Thankfully for the city of Memphis, all five offices, sirs, are like Wesley Snipes black. Okay, <laughs> like there ain't a light skinned man in the bunch. Have you been okay? to Memphis? <laughs> like, <laughs> look, I'm just saying, all five officers in sure. the clear as far as uh, my my people are concerned uh, and, and on this one. All right, so. <laughs> They uh, apparently the, the the charges came down today against the five officers, and they were varied. It seemed like one of a couple of them were like improper procedure is all they were going to get. But okay. then the one cop was getting like second degree homicide, or maybe, and then another one was getting some form of kidnapping. Um, uh, like they, it was very odd charges that they they had clearly like spent some time figuring out exactly how they were going to charge each officer, and like some of them are getting it way worse than others. I, I got to see the video. I mean, I don't really want to because oh. presumably it's a man being beaten to death. But if you're going to have a, you know, if you're going to stand somewhere on, on the topic, I guess you need to see what happened. Can It'll be out soon. Public freak out. They always get it. So hold, stand by. The former officers, then it names all five, have each been charged with second degree murder, aggravated assault, two charges of aggravated kidnapping, two charges of official misconduct, and one charge of official oppression. I don't even know some of these charges, but I, I looked it up because I read all of them in charge with murder, and that turns out to be on target, second degree murder. It's so weird. I saw a picture of each man with his charges. Oh, you know what oh, it was? It I'm... was a list of all the, if they're all being charged equally, then what I mistook for a charge per man was the list of charges that all the men were getting, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay. And I think that because I think the charges were listed in a, in a, in like a graph across from the men's names. Hmm. And I guess I never presumed that they're all just getting the exact same charges. Okay. That, okay. That I want to see the video. I might have my own opinions on their level of guilt. Yeah. Like, like if, if you beat a man to death and I stand by and do nothing, I'm not innocent, but I'm also not as guilty. I think so. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like you to gotta see be hands video. on to be culpable uh, on all those charges. Uh, you've got to be like, I guess none of them was a superior officer. I'm guessing literally that none of them was the superior since they're all being charged like this. You would think normally there'd be, oh, yeah, Sergeant Major General Peterson. He's getting the, the, the bulk <laughs> of the charges and the enlisted men below him. They, they, they're, they're, they're skating away because because they, they were just following orders or whatever the fuck. What did but the cops say? They ain't said shit because their lawyers are telling them not to say Good shit. Good lawyers. Where oh, they they're at? Uh, well, I, I was looking at one of their YouTube channels and he, look, he's denying all this. He says yeah. it's, a, it's big government coming down on him and his black brother. No. <laughs> What's yeah. up, guys? Naughty cop here. <laughs> <laughs> but you, oh, he had a, God. You know, a little bit of hot water. <laughs> <All right. laughs> naughty cop 2898. Yeah. No, just seal clever one hey, guys. Here. <laughs> Naughty cop. 1488 here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't All right, guys. On that note, I think it is time for me to go. Okay. Uh, I got some other stuff to do. I'll be 
open and honest about it. Tonight is date night, and guys in my condition do not get around a whole lot, so that is not an opportunity that I'm going to miss. We'll have fun, uh, and before I bounce, I want to tell the people listening at home to check your vitamin levels B1 if you have weird, mysterious problems that you don't understand or don't make any sense, because... As I've discovered, it can affect about 47 different things and kill you if you have a weird problem that makes no sense. Just Google it. If it seems to make sense, take a cheap $10 vitamin. Might save your life. There you go. So if you have these symptoms, take Drifter's advice. I'm really glad you're doing a lot better, man. It seems like you have like a good outlook on this, so I'm yeah, glad to hear There's plenty of B vitamins and lock and load. I'll tell you that right oh, now. A decent yeah. cum supplement would have kept, would have saved all your problems. <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well uh, that's no, no. I'm putting my no, the not USA B seal vitamins. of approval on that. <laughs> <laughs> if he had said United E, States he'd be of right. Armenia approved. Yeah. You're going to come so much you won't be able to be depressed. So, that's right. <laughs> the hat man will fire right. you. I'll Thank you, you so much, later. Drifter. Take care, man. See you. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, you. Good Double luck, young man. I that, hope it's dude. I hope every he's at the base of this this time, I am. I I do have my own concerns. It's the fourth time he solved this problem, but hopefully, this is the last time he solves it. He seems I, more I, sure about the the solution this time than he did before. Well, maybe he seems maybe up that's for a me. Date. That's you know. good, right? Like like mm. I, I was surprised that the that when he finally got out of that bed, <laughs> I was like, you can get up. <laughs> I don't understand I didn't know this that was condition where you can only get up during dates. So, okay. yeah, that was a yeah. stylistic choice. It's like a Swiss Casey, you know, hand cam. I, love, like, 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 I think he, ex- he explained it to us last time, I'm sure, why he's like laying in fucking bed. But like, we just didn't even ask this time. I don't think any of us really remember exactly. And like, now that we know it's a vitamin deficiency, why the fuck's he still laying in bed? <laughs> you know, like, like, like. And like I don't know shit, but I th- I'd figure you could eat some fruit, get a B twelve shot or whatever, and you'd be good to go. B one. I bet you know. I think B12 you only get B vitamins it, it, from if B one right? would fix it. Imagine what a B twelve will do, Taylor. Bingo. I don't think you know your vitamins. <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> did you even go to school? B one. We moved on to B twelve, and you're still talking about B one. B one. The lamest of B vitamins. <laughs> Everyone knows it. That's why it got ranked one, or the lowest. <laughs> It's like, I don't know if it's golf B vitamin. We've moved on to twelve others. It's like Star Wars now. I um, was uh I was watching uh Last of Us, obviously, because it's a tremendous show. Two thumbs up so far. Really like it. I agree. And I hadn't had HBO for quite a while because I just didn't use it. And so I re-got it for Last of Us. And I was scrolling through their catalog trying to find something other than Band of Brothers to watch, because that, that show's fucking sick. And I saw this show Succession. That's about like uh, a big, a big media business magnate who, and this is like in the fucking preview. So it's not a big spoiler. <clears throat> he has a, a stroke, like a mental, you know, lapse as a stroke and goes in the hospital. And then it's like, you know, he, his kids trying to fight over the succession of this big, powerful media company. And it has Brian Cox in it, who I love. I really like that actor, that older actor. Right. He's great. And so he was the reason he was on the cover. And I'm like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Like this guy, I'm, I'm checking this out. And the the idea of it is awesome but it is and it's hbo keep in mind this is hbo not amc not something else it is the worst dialogue i've ever experienced in an hbo show and there is no close second it is jarring jarring how these people talk to each other it is not even vaguely reminiscent of the way people communicate i'm going to i'm going to like do an example of dialogue of what is literally on this show watch it and i'll prove it Oh, fuck you. Oh, go fuck yourself. You just fucked mom. Oh, yeah, I would fuck mom if she wasn't fucking dead. You fucking cunt. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck yourself. Any two characters could be that. The whole show is pithy banter with no depth between characters that reveals no subtext, no nothing. I think it's really highly regarded. It is, and it's shocking because it is the worst dialogue. It is jarring how unnaturally these people communicate. And the fact that there is no differentiation between the sons and the sister and their love and the way that they communicate is is jarring. Like what I just did so, there, that that over the top fuck you, like pithy banter. Like Gilmore you can take Girls, that, but hateful. It that's a perfect example. It is almost as bad as Gilmore Girls. You can watch the actors tr- like about I like to Gilmore say Girls. their thing. I just wish they were topless during their little banter. That would have it, it would have been a better show. I love but like Gilmore Girls even more. It, like punctuate no, this... your points with a little nipple fucking tweak. Like, like I... oh yeah, <laughs> blah, 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 tweak. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Blah, 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 tweak. 
fuck, I love Gil. Parker. <laughs> <laughs> just, you're just jagging off to it. Yeah, it's that and so like just... maybe you would like this, but like it it's awful. It's the dialogue is and I'm trying to like it so hard. I'm six episodes in. I really want to like it because I want a new cool show. Yeah. It is impossible right. to be invested in these characters at all. See, they're, they're not only unlikable, which would be fine. There's Ramsey Joffrey, but they're uninteresting. We're seven hours into the series, and they mm. haven't revealed even an onion layer beneath their pithy banter. This is succession. succession. It's it's oh, really, really man. rough, the dialogue. like it, It's one of those shows that as you're watching it, there may as well be a small caption at the bottom that says, you are watching TV. You are watching TV. This is a show. Don't get too oh. invested. You've seen Board Boardwalk Empire, right? Right. Oh, that show's way better than that. That show's cool. Yeah, yeah. Boardwalk is amazing. I think season one of Boardwalk is its best season. That, but mm -hmm. the the Richard Harrow character is one of my favorite yeah. characters from Jimmy like Dominic. all of everything. Like, yeah. How many men have you killed? I've stopped counting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy's awesome. There's a scene where he like storms that fucking mansion at the very end to save that little kid, and he's got three guns with him. He's got a, like a six shooter revolver. He's got a 12 gauge shotgun on a sling and he's got his uh, his like bolt action sniper rifle and he just walks in to like the gang hideout. Yeah. And he just start. He doesn't say shit. He starts killing like immediately dead, dead, <laughs> dead. And they're running and he's like, can't run from this dead dead and one of them tries to pull out a gun he's like oh i've got a second gun here shotgun dead 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 and then he's walking up a staircase <laughs> with a bolt action <laughs> clickety click <laughs> clickety click all the way to the top to get the kid that is such a hardcore fucking character he, he's a world world war one sniper who's been shot in the face half his face is shot away so he's wearing this uh this this little uh yeah, like, like thing yeah. on his face this this I can't remember what the, the a, word is. It's a mask it. or a prosthetic, like a, like a prosthetic half face mask thing that looks very unnatural. And the friends, opera ish. Yes, and he's he's such a great, wonderful character that he makes that yeah. show after after what happens at the end of season one. I won't spoil it for anyone who might want to watch it because it's, it's a, a great gem show. of a show. Mm -hmm. Succession's um, nothing like that, so don't. Yeah, watch that's a shame because I want a new show too. Um, I'm thinking about going and, like and I, I'm thinking about rewatching The Wire. Thinking about going back into the wire and 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 trying to, uh, I don't know, view it from a different lens. I watched a, a YouTube video recently that, that sort of breaks the wire down. See, you know why every season is important of the wire, and it was interesting to view it all from like instead of each season individually to view them as this this bigger thing and how each piece uh, you know fits together. I just so I might watch that again. I don't know what I want to watch though. I'm, I'm out. I'm out again. I just finished 1883. Which takes me to the end of the finished Yellowstone content. I, I fought, we watched all of Yellowstone, 1883, and then there's another one called 1923. It's just still going out. Comes back in February, so I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, um, I liked 1883 more than Yellowstone. Yellowstone has started to really suck, and I feel like people aren't shitting on it as much as they should. Yellowstone's regarded as this good show, but it's not. It's not. The relationship between Jamie and Beth is horrific for not enough reason. You know, like they don't yeah. they make up the reason three seasons in, which is total bullshit. I don't think that was planned from the start because it doesn't all fit together. You know, Jamie has like no idea why he's mad at why she's mad at him. He's like, if you want to hit me so you don't hate yourself, then that's fine. I'll take it. Right. Meanwhile, he like got her a hysterectomy or something. And by the way. This is a very feminine woman, right? A woman with big old jugs and great button. I think the whole thing. She's from the neck down. She's she's smoking, and she has a hysterectomy. Like twenty years ago, she wouldn't look like that. That's not at all what she would look like. Um, I, I don't know. Yellowstone has no plot. The guy that makes the show, Mike Sheridan. Kyle, do you know who he is in the show? Yes. Oh, I didn't know he was in the show. I know that Mike Sheridan. <clears throat> if if he's if he's who you're talking about, if he's the creator, he yeah. has an empire that you might not mm -hmm. be fully aware of how, how wide it spread. So obviously there's, I don't want to like take you off the rails here, but see, there's the Sylvester Stallone show, you know, that you probably know of. Um, and, and then there's also the Jeremy Renner show. Those are all, I think in that same like universe of that guy, he has all, he runs all those shows as not well as the, sure the Yellowstone the Empire. Renner show. Um, he's the uh, guy with he, no legs now, right? Or the guy with busted up legs. Well, I don't know if they, we'll see. He's Hawkeye. Let's just call yeah, him that. That's nice. Let's just say that, that, he's really no, bad let's at be nice. snow cats. Um, 
so the, there's Mike Sheridan in the show. Do you oh know God. the cowboy that is the badass fucking most handsome cowboy? He's always so yeah. proud of himself doing that fucking spin move. The, and, and the dialogue is like, watch out for Mike Sheridan. He fucks every chick from Texas to Montana. They all love him. He's so fucking handsome and incredible. That's how he writes himself into the show. And then Might he shows up. In, you don't know Mike? Uh, you're going to know him. As soon as you see he does that fucking spin move on the horse, he's always doing the. He's the best trick cowboy winning all the things. Oh, okay. He Dude, that himself slick. into the no, show. That guy's fucking cool. Dude, he, no, is he the one where they show up? This is the they play this stupid fucking game that I'm pretty sure they made up for the show where they like <laughs> run their horses as fast as they can and then pull them to a complete stop as fast as they can. So they like sl fucking yeah. slide. That's like, that's like really good for horses. Yeah, you yeah, like that's totally it. what ranchers would do. Like you'd you'd they like abuse your horses. I think it's some kind of a game that that like rich cowboys play, or or maybe they made Is it, it a the rodeo show. event. I don't. I thought Taylor might know. No, no, that's not a rodeo event. No, oh, I don't okay. think you're supposed to gallop a horse and then like demand it to stop as fast as possible. It's not good for it. Zach, Zach, help us out. We're not cowboys, and uh, and so if he's the guy who's like the hot shot at that, who like could have taken the other guy's life, but was like, Hey kid, don't worry about all that. You don't owe me all that money. If he's that guy, come on. He is kind of the big dick swing and he's cool. He's got good look and he like clearly is the richest guy there. <laughs> like, except for maybe Kevin Costner, except Kevin Costner's got a whole problem with his empire. This yeah. other guy seems to be having a problem. Fun, like he's up here on vacation. Cause everything's fine back home in Texas. That's kind I'm of sure. my point. He writes himself in as the coolest, richest, best cowboy, awesome guy. Every fucking girl wishes they he would better. You know, like like he's always like a better businessman than Kevin Costner, horse trading him and whatever. And, and like like I don't know. I just feel like if I wrote my own show and introduced myself in it, not like Stan Lee did, you know, where he's like working the retail counter, but instead as the guy Superman wishes he was. That's what Sheridan does. And then he did it in 1883 as well. He's he's in that show. You'll recognize the character if I get his mm. picture. And uh, he's like one of the traders or something. And he walks in there and like delivers wisdom that Sam Elliott doesn't have. And I'm like, dude, you it bugs me. Like, like he's and soon he's gonna like fuck all the main characters, you know. Like Beth is gonna leave Rip yeah. for him because he always makes himself. Yeah, that's Mike Sheridan. He's like Tarantino, always making sure he's in the scenes where the actresses don't have shoes on. Like just happenstance, he's always there. When, when that happens, <laughs> what, that's what when is, he takes his cameo. So what? What does CR stand for? Where do you see? I it? see that I see the state of Texas within the C, and the oh. C looks very reminiscent of a uh, a horseshoe, obviously. But what is CR? Something. It's, it's cool branding. It's cool literal branding. Alma, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> is that not the name of their ranch, the C Christian Ranch? I, I don't know, sure. but I bet he sells He's those not fucking from shirts. the four sixes. I I'm a little mixed up actually. I'm just look at his collar right there. Ranch Man, work. I like that hat. Well, Dude, no... oh my gosh. I am ready to fucking invest in some cowgirl ranch wear or something because <laughs> like every time I look at the show, I'm like, Kevin Costner's jacket is the bomb. And and the, the weather changes, so he has a different jacket like every episode. Yeah, damn right he does. And I love them all. Every time they're dressed, is that Oh, it's CR just a brand, Ranch. CR Ranch wear. Okay. Well, I like they, his hat more than that hat. I looked up what they're wearing. It's called, I messed up the name. It's not Carhartt very often. It's like Fillmore or Filtmore or something like I that. I want to see Woody shirtless on a horse like Putin. <laughs> yes. Dude, that's your Christmas card. <laughs> imagine. Imagine how great that would be to send to all. Like, 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 like I would frame that. I would frame something like uh, that. That would do you remember i had man this wouldn't play now do you remember like many years ago i had that photoshopped picture of me as vladimir putin i put on yeah. my tinder <laughs> that, that, that would no, not that's fly a hell of a jump these days like, like, like nuke my dms bitch like like, like it's great to play that character so nuke many girls play along with that yeah like, like it'd be great like like fucking yeah. the fun ones would yeah yeah i'm fucking right up to your like crime, get yeah. a joke I, right up you your crime have, yeah. yeah you can have a lot of fun with that people are people have a good sense of humor about that on this side of the world like it's it's only over like if you go over to maybe fucking poland and try to pick up somebody with some Putin yeah. humor you might get yeah you know, i mean murder. that ukraine stuff is like me hearing that like sam and frodo are struggling in near Rivendell. it's like, not real it, for you at all like, it's, it's not even vaguely real i'm not even sure europe exists i've never seen it 
<laughs> you ever heard the way that they, that every one of those countries talks? Made all up. Jokes aside, all, all jokes aside, all jokes aside about like you're not maybe not really existing. Like, who's to say that any of us exist? You might just be the one guy here. And 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 because of the way time dilation works, it either perceived or, or real time dilation, it doesn't matter which. Your whole life, your whole existence could have just been this little boop where somebody booted the PC on. So it just like ran all the memory real quick. And you're just that. You're just that. Your little flash of energy that ran through the circuit boards real quick. And and, and everything is, is none be. of it's real. That thing yeah. about Europe existing. I hope so. I've had that <laughs> thought too. Now, I've been to Europe a couple of times. But am mm. I sure I have? Right? Like, I wasn't watching the whole time. They could have taken the plane in great big circles, landed me not too far away from home and told me. <laughs> you stirred a memory. <laughs> you stirred a memory. I went there by plane. I went back by boat, and they could have still fooled me. I don't know. You're just circling over the Great Lakes. <laughs> just... <laughs> stirred a memory i forgot to write this down in my in my stone journal the other day so there's this british reality show from i don't know when the early 2000s or whatever and what they did is they ran a national contest this is not long after like virgin and other start people started going to space and by going mm -hmm. to space i mean like you know they go to the upper atmosphere look around yeah. and come back um so they, they announced we're sending i don't remember how it was four to eight brits to fucking space you're going up and we're gonna and they they're, they're, they're gonna have a reality show to fucking pick the the, the the person and we're gonna go through astronaut training and that's part of the show and they do they have this national fucking thing just like American Idol where they get all these people together and they boil it down to the best of them and they uh they put them in an, in the plane to fly to Russia to do their training it's it's partnered with the Russian government mm -hmm. like a lot of that stuff was back then you could pay the Russians like twenty mil and they'll take you up to Mir uh, to the space station or whatever. Well, they put them in the plane, and then they did circles around the UK for about six hours, and then they landed them at a at a base you've probably seen if you've seen any action movies before. It was in The Rock. It's where they stole the VX from. It's uh -huh. this impressive military base they train in over in the UK, and they shoot a lot of movies there. Well, they land them there, complete with Russian guards and dogs barking, and then they train them up to be astronauts for a few <laughs> weeks or months or so, you know? Silly stuff's mixed in, though, and they're always like, why do we have us learning this? This is silly. This doesn't make sense. It might be a gag. Oh, that guy gets voted right off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need him. Mind, mindset on the show. So then they're like, all right. Just, uh, they bring a scientist in, and he explains to him how uh, once you understand gravity, you can control it. Because we've got to explain <laughs> why when we get to space, there ain't gonna be, there's still going to be gravity, right? Because we can't fix that. So... Long story short, they fake take these Brits to outer fucking space eventually in a fake spaceship, and they think they're in a fake spaceship up in space. And then one of them's like, I don't know about all this. Do you think we're really in space? And they're like, <laughs> of course we're really in space, you <laughs> nit. <laughs> oh, harumph, harumph. <laughs> you need a couple plants in there. Dude, it was so fucking good. They, they tricked those people. What, what is this called? In, I can't remember the name of it, but if you search like British fake space show i'm sure you'll you'll nail That's it hysterical <laughs> i had never heard of it That's until so i watched some youtube video about it the other day and i i was dying laughing watching the the clips of them like training to be astronauts and like just just them buying when the scientists like pointed at like a chalkboard and explained how there would be gr how they could control gravity and they had like I a gravity it generator it's called space cadet Space Cadets. That's a great. That's a name, good name. That's yeah. also what you call. <laughs> uh, retired. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the new show for me. Maybe I'll watch Space Cadets. Yeah. I'll. You know, that sounds infinitely better than Succession. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Watch that, Space I, Cadets. I, I, I tried. Like, it, it is a show. You know, when you watch a show and you sincerely, really try to like it, like. I, I found myself in like episode five doing that thing where I'm like, this is fucking stupid. No, no, like, come come on. It's got Brian Cox in it. Like, keep watching it. And it was last night I finished episode six and I'm like, there's, this is not good. This All is right, just I've got a recommendation. bad dialogue. That All right, so, so maybe uh, there's a show on Hulu called The Old Man. Um, and uh, it's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. I only got three or four episodes into it and I got sidetracked, but not because it wasn't good, just because I got sidetracked. Oh, Jeff Bridges, I love him. Jeff Bridges is a star. He's he's on the screen 80% of the time. And the villain is uh John Lithgow? Uh, 
John Lithgow. Harry, Man, Harry. I love him too. This is great. Yeah, it's pretty good. He's got these two uh, Rottweilers who are like his super duper trained, like loving companions. And uh, there's a scene, a couple episodes in, where somebody gets the best of him. They they, they kidnap him or whatever, and uh, he's in the back seat, all handcuffed up. Well, somehow or another, he like manipulates and kicks the guy, and the the fucking truck wrecks, and they have this ridiculous fight where he's fighting handcuffed, and he's like seventy five, so it's it's not going his way, but he's still like this really well-trained old man and he's got a six-pack by the way jeff bridges has a six-pack somehow he's like 70 man he looks strong and Jeez. uh and, and like finally it's like shit jeff just got his ass whooped and the guy's like are we done and the rottweilers show up they've been running the whole time they've been running the whole time because this guy's been drove away with jeff bridges they've been chasing <laughs> the dust of that car for 20 <laughs> fucking minutes and they just caught up <laughs> and now they're ready great. to kill <laughs> yeah ready to kill yeah it's it's great uh i was enjoying the show thoroughly until I, get, I got sidetracked by something i can't remember what i want more uh oh. i want more voice acting like cool warhammer videos of those ogren those oh, were so, that was that such guy a cool back one. yeah i gotta email that guy back he, he oh he wanted, we, we do yeah yeah he um i think he wanted me to do the voice of the video but i was, I was like taylor's the voice guy that like, like we're gonna have to get involved with this thing uh, I don't know what he would want us to do or anything, but that would be neat. That'd be neat. I'm, I, I love that Warhammer 40k stuff, uh, and I'm I'm super psyched for whatever they end up doing over at uh, Amazon. Dude, I'd be nervous to do actual voice acting. <laughs> Why? He's got to give you something to read and some context. It'd be really fun. Yeah, but like you want it to be not nervous. No, it'll be fun. Like a fun thing. It'd be like, damn, like I'm like doing a voice for a video. Like that's so that'd be neat. It's just a YouTube video, but like that's still kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I do enjoy his production value. It's it'd be fun to to do something like that possible yeah i'll, I'll guys, email him back have you guys watched euphoria you're talking about shows you tried to like no no dude you're back on the child is that again? hbo like like you guys yeah, it's hbo <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. um it, it looked i scrolled past it it looked like a like a, a, t- a tween show or a teen show i is it not it's a super popular show kyle's acting like it's a weird thing to watch but it was like a, a big deal Just our demo man i don't think it's for us <sighs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe is it I'm like a high school drama? It's I would. It's a. It's, a, it's, it's high, high schoolers school, yeah. having sex explicitly in every episode. Dude, there is too much happening in every episode. I'm Captain. Like this move too slowly. Nothing happened in the last hour. Like that's a complaint that I often have about slowly developing shows. Euphoria is like six episodes packed into every hour. It's way too much. Nothing seems to, everything is so consequential that nothing's consequential. Everyone's mm. almost always dying. Everyone's going to rehab. Everyone's breaking up. Everyone, like, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say sexual it. assault, but it's like sexual assault adjacent or maybe even literally. And uh, like every fucking episode, it's not like, ooh, do you remember two years ago that thing happened in their you know traumatized from it no Mm. that thing has happened like six times this year and it's Mm. it's hard to get into are you Um, over it now like you're like it's just too much fuck this i'm definitely not even looking or caring about what comes next i'm not Mm. sure but if a new season came out i might be curious enough to know if they righted the ship okay yeah well i'll have to keep looking on hbo for something better otherwise I, uh, i'll just end up rewatching the original band of brothers which <laughs> is a great thing to rewatch it's I, tremendous uh, i, I love know, band of like, brothers like, i i'm sorry I, cut you off. I, I super loved it when it came out but when i watch it now i'm like oh you know what it turns out that a lot of this isn't the part that i loved about it like i want to say there, there are eight episodes and the last two are kind of not World War II anymore. Yeah. And the first two are kind of not World War II. They're like training yeah. and we're getting to know the integrity of Captain Winters and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, when you get back to it, there's really just two or three great episodes. Some of the greatest TV ever made in Band of Brothers and a whole lot of other stuff. I'm okay with the beginning. I do agree the yeah. end. It really, you know, it, the end of any story can... I, at the end of the Lord of the Rings, it was like felt good to wrap up and give everybody their just, you know, whatever what they needed. But in this, yeah. it's like, come on, let's kill some more Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> like just a few more. We can find some that won't surrender. That, right. like, that, like, that's what I want. I want them to be like, hey, winners, they say there's some Nazis up north that don't want to surrender. They say <laughs> Hitler's still alive. Well, right. Gotta kill it. Go get those. Go get those the last Nazis. episode yeah. is about like 
I don't know, soldiers getting excited and having car accidents or something. If Band of Brothers were made today, after its huge success, yeah. they'd be like, look, we need a season two. How about they go to Brazil and look for Hitler? And that would be awful. They did a yeah. season two, and yeah. it was Fucking Japan. Captain Winters, well, the, the whole... Like, honestly, with, with the Band of Brothers thing, it's, I'm surprising you both, like, have that same take. Like, I, I actually, I disagree with Woody on the beginning part. I really yeah, like I when they're, like, kind of five sizing miles up, up five Ross, miles down. Uh, or Ross from Friends and, and Lieutenant Winters. Like, I really liked that development because it showed them, like, growing as a group. But you are right. Like, the end of the series, it's almost like after they're in Hitler's hideout, the Eagle's Nest or whatever it. it's called, That's like, it. from there on, it's kind of like, okay, we're kind of meandering now. Whereas, I think the end of the Pacific one is the one part that's better than uh, the original because the end of the Pacific Pacific one, the guy goes back and it's like really hammers home. Like how he's a totally different guy. Like he's changed. He's, he's fucked up now. He will never be able to even engage with people who didn't experience that in a way that's real because they can't possibly empathize with what he's been through. Like, and that oh. was the Pacific series, which overall still solid. I don't like not as good. I, I, I dislike like the Pacific. I, I made it through it once, and uh, every time I've tried afterwards, I always end up going, oh, yeah, I don't like this. Oh, yeah, I don't really like this. This isn't fun at all. This is like about the horrors of war. Uh, I, I want to see, like, like, come on, give me a little bit of that John mm. Wayne shit. Everybody now is, wants to be anti-war. Fuck you. No. Give me that John Wayne shit. Give me the sad ending if you want, but I want to have some hoorah, blow up the bridge, and fucking, yeah. cat, you know, Tom Hanks shooting at the tank, and then the fucking bombers come in. I want some happiness. I want some good times too. It's it's it's. A, they they it didn't make the. Bad. They did make the Japs way scarier than the Nazis, as far as like the implication of like, <clears throat> you don't want to get captured by these Japanese. They'll saw your hands off and fucking yeah. inject shit in. Like, like they. No, I think I that's know, the case. The stakes seem high. I, I think that if the Germans took you captured, like, like whenever I, I'll say this, whenever I see a movie of a German prison camp and there's some Americans in it, they're like sassing the commandant and like wearing a leather jacket or something. Like, yeah. And the commandant is like, I will only let you go so far, my Kruger. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> dude, the guy's got like doo-wop hair over there and a leather jacket on. How much farther are you going to let it? It always yeah. seems like it's not so bad in the Nazi prison camps for the Americans. They're like shot down for or the whatever. soldiers. Yeah, yeah. The soldiers, the, the, you know, the pure ones. But but on the <laughs> other hand, like, I feel like the Japanese were just real awful, awful pieces of shit. You know, I, they're just just scum, scum. Yeah. And you read about, I, I was like, watching a great thing about the Japanese zero today and about how technologically uh, advanced it was for it for its time, how it just the kill ratio was 12 to one in the Pacific. They weren't they mostly just crashing it. No, 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 no. That's at the very end of the war. After, right. after, after, at the end of the war, when they didn't have any other way of, you know, it was, okay. it was the last resort sort of thing. The Those Japanese zeros do zero, look really cool. The zero outperformed everything it fought in the Pacific with a kill ratio of twelve to one in the early years. No, that that yes, the Air Force uh, manual said to get to go to high altitude to do a a uh, a passing run on them and then to go as fast and low as you could to escape or you will die you, because they could not fight them at all they would lose every dog fight at a ratio really? of 12 to 1 yes it was I had so no much idea better. we were getting wrecked it was so much better than anything the world had ever seen the reports that came out of china because the war began for the the japanese began there were that they were just shitting on them. And everybody in the West thought it was just exaggerations. They're like, yeah, the Chinese have biplanes. Of course they're getting shit on. But no, when they started fighting, they were getting destroyed. It was only at, they had it was only after they captured a zero and they were able to understand like how it was made and the the the, the things it was sacrificing to do all the things that I'm describing, to be so mm -hmm. maneuverable, to have a five hundred mile range, I think. Um it it, it was sacrificing a lot. It had it didn't have any armor. Uh, it was like a millimeter thick, the the outside skin. Uh, it was just so too quick to hit for for the guys. It was too maneuverable, and it, it weighed like 2,000 pounds less than the American plane that was its counterpart, so it could just outmaneuver them at uh, at low speeds. So the doctor Dude, 12 then, to 1. That is... That's a horrible ratio. Yeah. That's, that's not good. That, that's, for the that, first that's pretty, a real shit we show. We were losing that bad for years? Yeah. Damn, I... I never in the air, huh? Well, yeah, in the in air the air. And dog that's fights. important on the Pacific. 
I suppose so it was mostly carrier battles, but you know, they were sinking ships too with other kinds of aircraft. No, it was really interesting huh. um, because I think Howard Hughes, the piece of shit that he was, was like, clearly it's a stolen design of the Howard Hughes Speedcraft mm. that I designed, of course. <laughs> and like, finally <laughs> they captured one, right? Like Because the, the, the Japanese doctrine was if, you were, if your plane is going down, it should go down as hard as possible. It should be destroyed. If you can, burn it. The thing that sparked the whole Japanese internment camp movement the the like case they used was where uh, after Pearl Harbor, one of those planes crashed on one of the islands. The way news went in those days, they didn't the locals didn't immediately know that there was a World War II had begun and about Pearl Harbor. But long story short, some Japanese natives on that island allowed that pilot to escape custody, burn his plane and um shoot a couple of the natives there injuring them in, in the whole process and so they used that japanese couple as the scapegoat if you will for the whole japanese internment camp thing huh. um but yeah they finally captured one and they saw how that one like a single hit would destroy it uh, just a lucky hit would and they also saw that i guess it wasn't very maneuverable at high speeds because it didn't have any hydraulics it was uh, you know so, so was what, sacrificing that what did I'm the impressed, americans Kyle. in their existing planes do because they couldn't just be like, all right, shoot more accurately. Like, did they have to immediately go back to the drawing board, design a new plane, kind of like the Zero, and then put the Americans in there? Well, they, well, they had to change their tactics right away. Like I said, they they could fly at a high. They, the 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 Japanese Zero could climb to thirty three thousand feet or so, thirty four thousand, ten thousand meters, and uh, it could do it extremely fast. The American tactic was to stay high and to do one run as you like dove through the Japanese, and then fleet because their top speed was faster it, they if they dogfight they were they were just going to die and later they had better planes they, they Man, back in world war ii planes. we were just not the power we are like we were later like we'll see like right, we were so getting what, owned by the german <clears throat> tanks in europe at the same time right so we had to like, like a potential fight with china because i agree with what you're saying like we went in there and we didn't have the technology advantage what we had was a manufacturing advantage yeah and over time we even had a technology advantage i think kyle was about to explain that as the new planes came in the spitfire etc we were better than the zero and that happened after 1942 like i think better spitfire the zero been... wasn't getting better every year what what the zero was was holy shit you are 10 years ahead of your time when it matters you mm -hmm. you have peaked on the tech in tree war. in this one little area yeah. <laughs> and, 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 right when you needed it and, it and they just shit on the whole world but the americans they weren't just the, the japanese had a yeah. system that could produce like a hundred good pilots a month or something like that they only had 550 total zeros at, ever i think or if they're at their highest number but because they had that maybe 500 mile range maybe it was 500 kilometers really far it, they were able to uh, exert their influence on a much larger region with 550 planes than anyone could imagine. So they thought there were thousands of them because it seemed like there were, and they weren't losing a lot of them either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I'm impressed uh, by your guys' World War II plane knowledge. You're, you gave me too much credit. I was reading the Wikipedia as Kyle was saying it. Oh. Like, Everything <laughs> he says is right. <laughs> when you said, I think it was after 1942, I was like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had known that for seconds before I said it. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, but Kyle seemed to know it all. Anyway, um, if we were to get into a fight with China, would it be the same thing? Would we walk in there with better tanks, better carriers, better airplanes, and then they would have this manufacturing capability that allows them to do to us what we did during World War II? I mean, they would they would push our if it was a manufacturing battle, like they'd push our shit in. Like it's not even close at this point. Like so we'd have to have a really superior design. I don't or I don't think uh, I don't think any I'm sure someone knows, but but I don't think that uh, I'm I'm equipped to even begin to understand what that war would look like. I guess we're fighting over Taiwan, right? So, um, if that's that that's the that, that's what it is. In like, like their backyard, backyard. Oh yeah, yeah, we're fighting right there. With the when the Japanese are going to be there, New Zealand and Australia, the 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 massive Pacific fleet. Um, Look, I, you know, I, I'm always the guy like going, ooh, rah, American power, because God, we just outspend the rest of y'all 10 to 1 or some shit. Yeah. I just think as long as that win. dollar is the trading currency of the world. Look, I just think the US is going to win every time because they outspend so much. I, I just think that when, when it comes down to it, like our shit will just be a little better and there'll be 
and there will be more of it. And I don't think, I don't know that the war is going to devolve to that 1950s thing where it's literally factories pumping out. We need more planes. If we need more planes, that's, that suggests that we're losing planes, that they're lo that we're losing them at a huge rate. That means we're losing pilots too, right? Like, like I don't, I don't know if that, if Let's either say country both is sides, really, both sides I don't think either country loss. is set up to train new air forces full of pilots and get their fifth or sixth generation planes pumped out in a timely fashion planes let, don't work like that anymore. well let, let me ask you if there was a country between the u.s and china that could do that it would would it be the u.s or would it be the country with all the manufacturing and with five times our population what kind of manufacturing are we talking about taylor are we talking about building shitty steel are we talking about building chinese cars are we talking about building the cutting edge technology that you need to fly under advanced radar systems and, and deliver laser guided radar guided bombs precisely and pinpointly to dis to dissolve a country's entire infrastructure Is and to add on to what kyle's about? saying like also this is an environment where we're trying to invent new shit not just copy what america did five years ago yeah like, and, but i mean the idea that we that the u.s even has the option to like vaporize china's manufacturing districts like they would do the same thing the Germans did and change and just all, constantly be switching fucking machineries and shit in all these normal ass manufacturing plants. Like they they can't outproduce us in a way that we can't anymore. The U.S. What are they needs producing, a bunch though. That, it goes back to what my question: military like, what equipment. Kind? What kind? Tanks, planes, any Where of that shit. They can do faster than us. It may not be so. as good. I'm just saying they absolutely can. And the U.S. depends on China's exports a hell of a lot more than China depends on the U.S.'s imports, which means that the U.S. has a vested interest in not destroying the entire manufacturing economy of China. Well, I think both it, both sides have economic worries if, if they go to war one, with one another. I think it'd be a massive global event um, uh, far beyond like, like the military sure. like, like might of it all. But I don't know what that war even looks like. I don't think anyone... I, I think we all... You see what's happening in Ukraine, right? Like nobody knew what that war would look yeah. like. It turns out it looks like 21st century <laughs> we World War wrong. One all over again. They're in fucking trenches in the snow out there. I thought getting, Ukraine was going to lose maybe this day. Like they lost the Kiev airport for a few hours, right? Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was over with that. <laughs> you know what? I bet later. that's a whole fucking movie. I bet the siege and then that retaking cool of movie. that airport is a whole fucking diehard-esque movie. Because... What it sounds like happened a good is idea. the Russians landed fucking paratroopers in their capital, captured their airport with what I can only imagine were the baddest yeah. James Bond a skeleton crew, Sylvester Stallone, cocksuckers Russia can muster with their night vision on and their fucking hex grid armors or whatever, like <laughs> landed at the airport, took that Flicks. shit. And there were some Ukrainians somewhere that got a phone call and they said, hey, the fucking Spetsnaz just took our airport. The country could fall within hours. They're here for the president. And they said, all right, we're on the fucking way. I want to know that guy's story. Like, yeah. like he hopped in the truck with he his gun say it with an and accent, killed though. those people. Yeah. Sealed them six. Like, that would, <laughs> we that would be cool. <laughs> the seals come out of the back. It's like... Russian steal them six. They're both here them. in the water. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they, they maybe them, like give them sardines <laughs> they the the got those metal teeth like uh like like dude like had like jaws in, yeah. in, like in the, uh yeah the blow seven yeah uh, maybe maybe i'm oh or no i think most people agree with this i uh i put a lot more i guess respect on china than than russia as far as like oh yeah capacity and shit like i feel like russia isn't at all equivalent to China. Maybe I'm like being silly. I think Russia has been a third rate power for a long time. I think, I, I think that's being exposed right like now. China's because... real deal. Have you seen the fucking shit they have their kids doing in school? They're Dude, all fit. They're bouncing basketballs and sink. Get... <laughs> no, Michael I, Jackson no. dance. <laughs> Michael Jackson dance. They're thrilling all over the Chinese yards. <laughs> I, it's a Dude, problem. I see, I see that as propaganda. I, you know, like, 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 like I, Dude, I bet I bet if you showed a bunch of Chinese podcasters who who were like normally censored and had never seen it before, I bet that you showed them the fucking crowd at UGA when they start throwing up the letters to spell words out and told them that this was this was our students and that they this was this was what they're spelling was death to China and like like they'd be fucking scared if they saw 85,000 people fucking spelling shit. Little do they know they're spelling go dogs. <laughs> and they couldn't go give dogs. a fuck less. <laughs> oh, we eat dogs. <laughs> oh, we eat, we hate dogs. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, we come enemy. to America, we gonna eat all your dog. <laughs> <laughs> we conquer you and then we make you watch when we eat your dog. <laughs> <laughs> the whole football team scared. Like, is that about us? If the ATF was a country. When we do get conquered, I was joking. I was joking about that, guys. <laughs> Fellas, when we get conquered. Are you worried about joking. upsetting our five Chinese viewers who are using a VPN? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the final straw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start reading that. Like, uh, what, what was the that massacre they had? The man, the uh, the um, Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square. Yeah, I'll start reading the Tiananmen Square wiki. <laughs> Get y'all all fucking locked out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, I would never do that just to a poor Chinese viewer because they'll no, they'll get you. Or I guess I've not seen, from reading it, but they can't look it up. I, I I haven't seen the video, but somebody was saying that in Rust, um, they were dealing with Chinese hackers and they're outside their vase, like screaming in Chinese, and they just started reading that. That uh, that that whole Wikipedia article. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I get guess, removed. <laughs> yeah, that's like bad mojo over there. You know, you can't be talking about all that. That that shit didn't even happen, as far as they're concerned. That's like Voldemort's name and the N word mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too. It's powerful. It's too yeah. powerful. And no yeah. word should he, have that sort of power. No, no. I always did. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, I've, I've done that joke before. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny anymore. Doesn't that suck um, when you're like in, like Woody, into a joke and you're like, oh, I've done this. Fuck. That's not funny. Woody, uh, you said, I don't know if you want, you said that Wings was texting or calling you today. And you Did you ever get back to him? Uh, it, back and forth. So he texted me last night, but it was really late. Like I didn't catch it until just before bedtime. So I was like, I won't call now. It's 1130. Turns out that would have been a good time to call. Yeah, so I hit him up this morning and I'm like, hey, is now a good time to talk? But he didn't get back to me like 530 tonight. He had just woken up and uh, I, I don't know, like I had to have dinner. I had a video meeting and then the show and I was like, I don't have time mm -hmm. to fit in a wings call. Um, so I don't even know what the agenda is or the topic. He, he just said he needed to talk. So I, was, I hope he's all right. So when you when you messaged me that, that like, oh, man, I need to get back to wings, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just went on YouTube and searched Wings of Redemption and like the, the newest stuff seemed to be that he lost his PSN account again and mm. uh, <clears throat> whether it was like a realistic concern or, or not he seemed to be concerned that um, I guess they had contacted his local sheriff's department and uh, let him know that he had talked about possessing um, CP before uh -huh. um, in a sort of a jokey kind of way and uh, maybe they need to look into that and uh, so he was worried he, as he put it, that they were going to come and like take all of his shit. So, and you know, which would be his streaming setup yeah. and everything. His life and, uh, and you know, you don't get that shit back. <laughs> you know, they, they, when, when they take that shit, they've taken the phones from you, not for that, but for ATL. Oh, I, oh, yeah, yeah. They've taken all sorts of stuff. Like, I lost a gaming PC for a while. I had to go pick it up in a federal building. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they, they like, had my, they like wheeled it out in a cart from like a scary, <laughs> like upper. Level why didn't they take it from you to. was it re it was on the explosives charges when they like came and tested that car i had blown up for for they, what it was was they 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 came and th they thought i was using high explosives in my videos right and i really wish someone had said hey what are you using and i've been like oh man it's tannerite and you do this to it in a little bit and it man it looks good and if you do this then it looks like this and it's pretty basic stuff that's all legal and uh, instead, they thought I was using debt cord or TNT or something. And uh, so they confiscated all my um, Tannerite. T Dan Tanner would send me like packages uh, that, that weren't like civilian packages. Or I don't, I don't know why. I said, like uh, like they a weren't person normal. would buy if they ordered. Yeah, he's commercial. sending me stuff, which is a little bit different than sending you stuff. Not only but, do I have all the licenses in place, but yeah. Ask questions. It's the yeah. same stuff. It's the quantity that's different. Am I right? Yeah, and the packaging. So, like, oh. the individual packaging that he would normally send things out is meant for a to be safe for a consumer. Meanwhile, he knows what I'm doing with it. I'm blowing a whole fucking Nissan Altima yeah. up with it or some right. shit. So he just sends me a big barrel of stuff, right? It's all on the up and up, but, like, they took that, and then they took the car. Remember the car that I took from Jeremy, took back from Jeremy and blew up because he he had to hot rod my actual target vehicle and got <laughs> that the gas. That. <laughs> yeah, the gas can't the gas tank like stirs up this dirt, goes in the the uh the fuel filters, car stops working. I'm like, all right, Jeremy, that car of mine that you've been driving around for months, basically making your car, give it back. It's gotta go. It was a uh, Pathfinder. 
So yeah, they took that. That's a good took, car. Is that the one whose stuff. door flew towards you? No, that was just a pickup truck. Oh, you're um, yeah, right. Yeah. That I don't really. I think it was a Ford. The one of those square body Fords, maybe. I had a combination of you're right and I'm wrong, and it came out as I'm right. <laughs> That's not what I was going for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm still on that I'll agree. I'll I'm agree. right. Fuck. <laughs> but, but yeah, like when they finally gave me all my shit back or whatever, it was uh, it was just a, a cart full of electronics because because the, they don't really. I think what the warrants will often say it won't be like iPad in the dining room. It'll be like anything with a screen it's like dude that that navigation system is one of the dumb ones like it's one of the old ones that just goes from like point a to point b like this, your toaster oven has a countdown oh this yeah. will be coming with me we're gonna need your samsung fridge <laughs> it's like, fuck. yeah yeah uh, uh so yeah if they take if they were to take his shit away you know it put him out of business for a considerable amount of time wouldn't be good He'd have to so, yeah, I don't know what he's been up to. You know, he usually knows how to kick the bee's nest and get things all stirred up for himself. So who knows? Maybe he did that. But um, maybe he'll get in touch with you and, and give you the, the inside scoop. I'm always interested. For some reason, yeah. I can't help it. Sometimes when it's interesting, I'm interested. When it's just his general, like, perpetual nihilistic sort of depressed funk, it's like... Dude, as someone who's been as low as him, he should be able to appreciate the medium high moments. Like, my my little prison experience has made me appreciate every fucking day. Man, I'll, I'll wake up. I fell down those stairs today. I bet a lot of people would have been bummed out after that. I was thinking, <laughs> man, stairs in prison are so much worse to fall down. Stairs in prison are made out of fucking metal or, or concrete if you're lucky. If you're lucky, you fall down concrete stairs in prison. Concrete but, gives a little. <laughs> concrete you're tear all your back skin off. Concrete's not like, sharp metal. at least. It's just rough. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like I'd rather fall down rough than sharp. There's a big difference. And yeah. I, like like anytime I'm a little bummed out, I, I think about like sure is better than fighting with Parker over the fucking channel on ESPN, <laughs> ain't it though? Because <laughs> Parker would have beat you to death. <laughs> It is. It's great that you have that sense of perspective still of just like, fuck yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you're six, two, three, something like that. I'm sure there were people in prison you could beat up. I don't know how to fight, man. Like, like I mean, I know like, how to fight, but when's the last time I like somebody in there is 50 and six inches shorter than dude, you? Would you want to fight oh, okay. that guy? Okay. Well, I mean, look, there were people in there I could have beaten up, especially if I like attacked them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. you know but but like that doesn't like make make you any less scared because the people that i'm gonna have an issue with first of all it would be even scarier if someone i thought i could beat up was trying to give me a hard time because now what is what does he know that i don't Woody? this little motherfucker this little joe pesci piece of shit is pressing me Want my fucking ramen noodles, and I, which I know I can't fucking give him. I'd give them to him in a heartbeat in the real world because I don't fucking value them, and I don't value, value them here either. But I know I, I can't give Joe my fucking noodles. But am I going to deck him right here? I know I can. But why is he so confident that he thinks he can take my fucking noodles? He must know something I don't. He must know there's three or four big fuckers behind him who are going to come grab me. He, he's like, like, is this Joe Pesci, the eye eater? Like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Any, any of that shit is scary. Even if it's so... The idea of a big guy being threatening, it's like, okay, I understand him. I understand him. Even the little if you guy just scarier. stomp the little guy and win in the short term, now what? 60 days turns into 180? I... Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they, I, my guess would be they'd put me in the hole. Like, all right, if I assaulted someone, that'd be charges. That'd be like charges. Like, if I, if I just wanted to, if I was some re retard who went to that hill, silly Billy prison that I went to, and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to cream somebody on day one. <laughs> Let them know that I don't take no shit. <laughs> if I had one in there and like cream some 58 year old tax <laughs> when, he, when he wasn't fucking like hit him, hit him in the temple when he wasn't looking and like, like pissed on him like I'm in the fucking brother. I'm in here for shit. tax fraud. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, my name's Myers. <laughs> like, like if I told one of them. Dude, they'd hit, hit you with charges, and like you'd be up at a scarier place where like they they where you'd have to repeat for real. Like like so, no, I I don't know, man. The the whole thing was fucking scary. It didn't matter who was like bothering you or why they were bothering you. It was gonna be scary because, like I said, I don't know. You're in a, you're in an alien world. I'm here for sixty days. Some of these people have been living in here for decades. 
you know yeah. they're, they're, it's I can't even think of them as normal people. I just tried to smile as much as, well, maybe not smile, but prison smile as much as I could and be happy. And, prison uh, smile is you just sort of bend over and present. This, is no, this is it. This is a prison <laughs> smile. They call it winking your asshole. <laughs> 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 what I mean is like, like I wouldn't like full blown smile because somebody, somebody be like, "What you smiling at?" You know, you know, you know. <laughs> but but let them know that like. <laughs> <laughs> what you smiling at? Why, right? boy? <laughs> oh, it's not nothing, <laughs> dude. That could totally happen, you know. So, so, so but, you, but you don't want to be mean mugging nobody neither. You don't be like hard looking, like, like, like all brow furrowed and like frowny. Like, like then you kind of come across like you're trying to make them break like their gaze, and you don't want to look them in the eyes really anyway. You, you glance at them in the eyes, and then you like go about your shit, right? You're trying to like do some animal like body language shit to let them know you're not a pussy or a asshole right like i'm mm -hmm. just here to be one of the herd bro <laughs> like like mm -hmm. i'm just moving from point a to point b and then i'll be point c as soon as possible you want to give that <laughs> off or i did of course well, that seems like the, the high <laughs> iq maneuver to... i didn't you know what what's coming you right? <laughs> <laughs> my name's big rig mccoy and i'm here to take over <laughs> like <laughs> and i'm yeah. the premier rapist in this establishment <laughs> dude but no i would be I would rather give somebody a hard look than a smile. I, it, it honestly, like, 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 hmm. what the fuck you like, like a big goofy grin at a motherfucker that you don't know. I don't know what I, what, I don't know how they might take that. But if you got gave a hard look, they might be like, "Damn, dude's having a bad day." I know how first day is. First day is <laughs> no fun. Yeah, it's like no, I'm not, I'm, no I'm, I'm autistic, and it's like, man, this motherfucker yeah. says he's autistic too. Beat him up. Like, I don't like the I way that you're branded as first day, right? Like, like. I don't know. Maybe you're wearing the wrong color jumpsuit. You don't have your flip flops yet. <laughs> you're like, you've got noob written all over your RPG character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do. No, like, like you walk in there with your you shit in your no hands, rubles. just like in the movies and TV shows. You know, you you got that big care care box full of horse shit from the government, right? You know, you got your goddamn pencils and erasers and shit, and you got your rolled up mat, the best one they could find. You got your shit. And so, like, there, it's clear you're moving in. Like, you see somebody new in the pod, like, you know, or in the dormitory, you know, like, never seen him before. You get to the point where you know everybody in there. Maybe not their full name, but, like, you know to call him Spiff or fucking Buck or fucking Dude yeah. or whatever the fuck, you know, and, like, oh, new guy. Okay, everybody takes notice that somebody's new. So, yeah, you know. That's and cool. if they are dressed weird or, like, something, I don't know, you guess you take note of that. I, I wasn't were there, uh, were there Were there emo kids? <laughs> was, there, was there like a click of emo and goth kids at no. the or prisoners where they're like i'm I'm so over this prison man. no no uh the whiteies uh were in the minority big time and uh and, and we didn't have a lot of uh room for expression uh, i think you'll find in certain scenarios that like the blends of each race sort of toned down to like Oh yeah, he's a white guy. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you know, there's there's no emos or goths or like rednecks or. or what if or, I go in like wearing whatever. a bandana and I really maintain this? Like, I, I think in some prisons they would kill you. Um, but I, I I think where I was, they would probably send you to the doctor or something. But it'd be a while before he saw you. <laughs> yeah. Were there old guys? How did that work? Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple. There was one guy that was yeah. just so old. Did they and I don't remember what he'd done, but he... I remember thinking it wasn't bad enough that he should still be in there. Like maybe 75, 85. Like, less, uh, like I'm thinking of my future, right? Like at 55, is he just are they like, you know, that guy's just not part of the game. We let the 25. Well, there was there other. wasn't any game per se, and 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 where I was anyway. Like, like the, the only the, as far as that went, the closest thing to anything like that that I saw. I mean, obviously, there's people selling things and gambling, but that's just like imagine high school again when maybe some kid is selling fucking gum or something, like like hustling a little bit. And some of, and some other kids are playing poker in the in the gym. It's more like that than some organized crime conspiracy. You know, mm -hmm. it's just guys having fun. Uh, and and the the only like real game I saw was like the people in the like laundry or the kitchen would sell shit. You know, I oh, you want an extra blanket? Like the physical dominant hierarchy is what I was trying to describe. Like I like, didn't see anybody really getting pressed or like anything like that. Really, okay. it was just that 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 couple scary moments that I had that, that weren't <laughs> too fun. I. I didn't see anybody like intimidate and really intimidating anyone. There was that one dumbass that kept flashing his like drugs and uh, and paraphernalia, and they sent him to the hole. But uh, but he was white, honestly, so. my high school sounds rougher than that. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't yeah. think it was. <laughs> well, 
I mean, no, I, I mean, swear to God, if you looked at someone for more than like three seconds, you would they would hit you, they would fight you. They would like I mean, people would get robbed and you couldn't really do anything about it because what are you gonna do? Like yeah. like like the the white guys would get robbed if they didn't lock them. You know, that was one of those things that I was scared about that it was it became mm. a thing that like uh um snow solved for me when I was like, nah, I can't go out and walk today. And uh my my Mexican cellmate explained to him in Spanish that Kyle's afraid to go outside because he doesn't have a lock for his locker. And he's afraid that someone will hide their drugs in his locker or just rob him and and Smart either guy. he's gonna lose his shit or be framed. <laughs> and <laughs> Snow's like, Yeah, yeah, there's a good chance that could happen, yo. <laughs> yeah. What? Those seem like a good place to hide some shit. Yeah, nobody's no right there. <laughs> no, but he goes and he got me a fucking lock and he wrote down a little piece of paper, the fucking comedy. He's like, and you know, like I was a child, told me not to lose the fucking combination. <laughs> little piece of paper and everything. He's like, memory. Hey, you lose that, I'm gonna rape you. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Take bro. it though. Hey, where's that piece of paper? Just kidding, bro. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, he hooked me up with a lock, and that was a that was one of the nicer things he did. Other than that meal he cool made guy. me on my last day, what a nice guy Snow was. Snow, he <laughs> seems like someone who's caught up in a corrupt system. Let's get know, he, the I've been no, wondering he, about he, Snow. He him. murdered you, some gang members. He he told me about it. I don't believe you it. told me Snow did pull ups with rocks attached to him. Does that ring a bell? So he had um, the laundry net with the the fucking uh, the the medicine ball things in there. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much weight he added to his pull ups? If it was medicine balls, you could. Just I would guess them. thirty or forty, something like that. You know it, it, it and but he, and he was not a lot overweight. Of, he okay. wasn't doing a ton of them. He was just mm. doing. He would do sets. He would do like it's hard to remember, but but because mm. I wasn't doing them, I remember thinking like that's silly. Like like no thanks. I'm just I'll, I'll just walk. I'll I would stand there and like wait for him to do his shit. And that was before around. you really got into fitness. Like just oh yeah, before. I had no yeah. interest in doing that. But mm. anyway, um, I don't know, maybe six or eight. Or something, and then he'd like we'd do another lap, and then he'd just keep repeating that. I bet I could do. I think. I yeah, think probably. I, take... I mean, this he wasn't a superhuman or anything. He was just snow. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, pull ups at forty pounds—that's no joke. That I mean, this is a man who didn't have not... access to, to, you know, protein, and he was. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't even hitting his macros, and he was still shredded. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't think shredded. he was shredded. He was no. He was... Just a, built, perhaps just a scary guy, just a real scary, lar yeah. large enough fellow. Like, like the when you see someone with gang tattoos that have been blacked over, <laughs> <laughs> like a real life sensor, like just a brick over his. Yeah, they just blacked over like huge swaths. That seems so much harder tattoos. than just getting rid of it. I, or no, I, I guess I guess it wouldn't be. I I turn know. him into a puma. I I, I I didn't you know you don't ask yeah. things like They're that even he more bad far too universe. much information anyway um far too much information you know like like, like i i was well, he clearly liked you like, a lot and now it's part of the show <laughs> yeah he liked yeah. he liked your company he enjoyed no, he, out he was you, talking about like imagine. like some sort of drug gang shit and then like, like being a little vague about that but kind of be like but you know i did what i had to do i put my work in you know and it's like fuck dude that's more. i mean Kanye you know? style like i don't want to say like what it i murdered him yeah he's being ridiculous i'm gonna like, say dude, what kind of person he's jewish <laughs> yeah. that may and go down was... as one of the funniest clips of all time <laughs> yeah that kanye clip he's i jewish. swear to god it's like it's like they're in his ear with his kid with a gun to the kid's head and, and, and he's like trying to dance around it because he doesn't want to completely ruin his life. He's like, I don't want to say what kind of person. And the guy's in his ear. Say it. Say exactly <laughs> what kind of fucking person is or fucking North by Southwest is going to get it. <laughs> and he's, just like, he's like, and he, in his head, he's like, ah. It was a Jewish person. The guy's like, that's right. It was. Now keep going. It was a Jewish person. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dude, like, you like, couldn't have writ written a skit better than that, than, than his delivery in that line. Yeah. Yeah. It's comedy fucking gold, Jerry. It's gold. hilarious. Gold, it's Jerry. Gold. gold. You can use yeah. that Ovaltine bit, Jerry. Yeah. Do you, th do you think less of, uh, do you think less of Jerry because of his, his young girlfriend? Can we get a picture of her, Zach? Can we get a picture of Jerry and his, 17 year old at maybe at the time girlfriend really legal and Jeez. at the time he was making seinfeld and that is a tremendous 
like actually just a piece of cultural art seinfeld if, is. You, if you want to i haven't watched it i mean I, I should have and done my due diligence but the quality was so poor but you can go back and find seinfeld doing stand-up in 1990 about his 17 year old girlfriend and that <laughs> doesn't age well i'm told <laughs> Everyone's saying it's inappropriate. I say, fuck you. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Try and stop me. <laughs> He's a billionaire now, right? Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Am I right? Wow. He's he, a billionaire. Can you blame him? And at the time, he was just oh, having a, a fun time. Tonight, <laughs> <laughs> she might be really, uh, chronologically really 17, cruising, but biologically she's 21. <laughs> she looks 21. I can see why she's on his arm. Well, she's on his arm because he's well. I mean, the a thing he should be most ashamed of is how much he single-handedly ruined a lot of scenes with Kramer and George through his bad acting, and that's his largest crime, far and away. I, I wow. her hair is so fantastic. You think? Like that's like a hero. '90s hair, big '90s hair. I like that hair. I really do. I do like the big '90s hair. When you go back to like Star Trek, remember when like uh, Beverly had that big like she's mm -hmm. redhead. She'll be. Well, there's no good pictures of her. Like, like she's one of those ugly Irish broads, like like she all rosy, all rosaceed out and fucking pale as fuck. Anyway, I have this mental version of her that's attractive, and and she has. <laughs> I have this and false that's what memory I of Beverly Crusher in which she's attractive. Um, but but no, she had that big red hair though. I like the big hair. Yeah, it's not in, like uh, Peggy. For, remember Peggy from uh, Married with Children? How, how like the crazy? Yeah. Not that big. Al, let's have sex. Like that, that shit. Right, that's a good picture of her. Nice job, Zach. You nailed it. This is this is prime Beverly Crusher. It was all downhill from here. And I mean, that's some pretty good deep. hair. I like that hair. It's it looks, you know, it's it looks like it has a lot of hair. vitamins in it. Yeah, we're I think we're on the same thing. Like it has body to it. I mean, a lot of red hair is super. All right, now show yeah. me the picture of her. Oh, this is what you Google. Um, you Google um, Crusher and Troy stretching. Show me that picture. <laughs> um, so this is a really good episode. In this episode, they're like stretching each other out in this like <laughs> 1990s leotard shit that chicks for some reason. They need to bring that back. Yoga pants yeah. are like so close, like, like leggings. Like bring this look back too. There's this crazy yeah. like outside thong, thong outside your underwear. Like the, uh, the American Gladiators outfit, kind of. A little Remember bit, that? you'll see. Um, and uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. They're like stretching each other out. Now, the beauty is when you watch this in HD, because I feel like I can see pussy be, lips in this definition. You can, <laughs> you can see some, some pretty good camel toe in, in, in this episode. And, and also in the episode where Worf gets some pussy later on. Uh, I can't remember the name of that Go one. But Worf. yeah, they're, they're, they're stretching out right now, talking about how limber they are after she got fucked by her grandma's ghost lover. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah. See, Beverly, uh... had, got, Beverly got, got um, raped. <laughs> by the ghost that used to fuck her grandma and uh and she really enjoyed it's it raping so, from beyond the grave it no like, no no. it the ghost is like "Ooh, i'm gonna fuck you like yeah. that kind of ghost like like comes in remember that scene where in ghostbusters where dan Aykroyd Aykroyd gets blown by the ghost exactly like that but on a woman um <laughs> and and she's all like "Ooh, like all tingly and shit because she hasn't been touched in a coon's age, right? Because her husband died in some sort of war or something, and Picard is so afraid of sticking his dick in his friend's fucking, uh, his dead friend's wife that he just can't fucking do it. So little Picard stays in his pants, and Beverly is just cooming so hard when she just gets cooming. that gets that ghost ectoplasm in her. And uh, <laughs> and, and th that's just a real episode. Man, None of what I've said crazy is, is how some of this shit hot. can be real. There's a scene, Walking Dead. I know it's not your favorite show, but there's a character named Abraham, his girlfriend Rosita, and then Elliot. I think these names are like eighty percent right. Anyway, Elliot is this weird, like autistic guy with long hair who speaks in a really funny, pseudo intelligent way, socially inept. Mm. When they introduce us to those characters, we find out that Elliot frequently likes to watch the other two fuck he's a voyeur and the other two are fully aware of it and it's kind of their kink to fuck in front of him and it's like this is walking dead oh okay here's the couch sex scene where elliot jerks off behind a fucking bookshelf watching these two fuck and then he Dude. gets caught by a fourth character and he explains, yeah, they know. They we know. Like They're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I, I, I do not remember this part of Walking Dead where there was I'm an okay exhibitionist and a voyeur that 
mesh I'm 100% right, and I'm not exaggerating. exaggerating. I believe you, it's just, yeah. I, have, I don't remember and, and, this part. <laughs> the zombie part. Part that, especially in the apocalypse, I think, look, after the zombie apocalypse, I think I'll be a lot more supportive of any sort of choices anybody wants to be make, right? Because the pussy's dried up. Me and Scott yeah. used to talk about this. In the, when we sat there at 17 and 18 and we watched um, um, the day of the dawn of the dead, the, uh, the Zack Snyder one, you know, the, they go in the mall, Ving Rhames, fucking shock, pump shotguns uh-huh. and, and fast zombies. For the first time that I'd ever seen, it was the fast zombies. And we started mm. like, you know, I grew up with guns and shit. So it was like, oh, my God, if zombies came, it'd be the best thing ever. And the, <laughs> so we'd like fantasize about what we do in the zombie world mm. and stuff. And we kind of like run through it. Well, I want to stockpile this much of this. And yeah, we need powdered milk, Scott, powdered milk or whatever I came up with. And I just remember thinking like, there's gonna be no pussy there's gonna be no pussy at all and i used to joke around about we might have to get some zombie pussy scott we might have to get some zombie pussy you know and, and that was the joke obviously you wouldn't fuck a zombie because that would, of course not that'd be you'd get some awful like dick rot like 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 or something for sure mm-hmm. you'd catch um, it um but the whole point is like you gotta be a little bit open-minded i think after the zombie apocalypse because your choices are gonna be <sighs> precious few i'm with They're you I, I get what you're saying we'd get gay it, if you need to, but but moreover, like 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 if if you were like, you know, wanting to watch me get on, uh, you know, what somebody, it's just like, dude, what what are we gonna do? Lock the door and leave him outside? Like, come on, we all live together boy. now. It's just yeah. three of us. It's not like he wants to get involved or something. Let him watch. Yeah, dude. In a just a a little gaming news in the last fucking minute of the show that only like have you guys ever played games that became cross-platform and then you got like all excited to play like noobs on things yeah i like, guess that, that's an experience i've never really had that much but and as you know i've been playing age of empires 2 a bunch which funny has a bigger player base than their new game and because it's it's classic every rts is based off of it and they on on tuesday are releasing this RTS game on Xbox and it's cross platform. And so I am saving up till Tuesday and then I'm jumping in the ranked ladder to try and like finally start seeing how decent I am. I'm one and one on the ranked ladder. I'm not, I'm not good. And, but I'm, I'm going to trash these Xbox kits. There's no way that I can compete with these, that they can compete with me with like mouse and keyboard micro. I could be wrong about this, but I would guess that what that it's going on like the um the xbox marketplace which can be utilized through the pc it's just another way to get your games right like no maybe it's, that's all, it's controller doing? it's controller you can either I mean, hook you up can a key- play it on the controller you, you can, but like i play yeah. my x I, I buy games through the xbox system uh, as an app on my pc and play them on my pc specifically cross-platform games like uh, sea of thieves yeah okay. Thanks. it's similar like it, what you're saying yeah. is true like you can hook up a keyboard and mouse to your xbox but the vast majority of xbox That's gamers aren't saying. aren't you get on xbox live on your pc is what i'm saying Yeah, xbox is an emulator that runs on a pc yes but i maybe i i apologize for not like framing this the correct way so they spent a huge amount of time making this game playable on controller they're Jesus trying Christ. to reach controller oh, the- people and it's an rts game and which means you have to move villagers and shit constantly. You always are managing. And I saw that they like simplified it for, for console people. So you can like yeah, hit RB it. and go to like man at arms rush, like an infantry rush. And they'll, it'll just automatically send villagers out to those resources for that to do a small rush. The okay, problem so with that keys. is that it's no, I mean, it, to say on Rudimentary Xbox, like, prepare, prepare for this, like, but that's going to be worse than an actually managed economy. Like they're not. How can you micro units with a fucking controller on Xbox? Like, Slowly. so I'm I'm hoping that I'm playing against controller people because, frankly, all the people who enjoy this game that was remastered after 20 years, like three years ago, are already on keyboard and mouse. Like anybody knew okay. they are. They're really targeting the Xbox controller player, and they're putting on Xbox Pass or Game Pass or whatever to try and get as many controller players as possible. And who knows? Maybe the controller auto instructions will be so good I'll get butt fucked. But I hope not because I I, I want to go on and I want to start winning. Press left trigger to win, win game. Yeah, press <laughs> left trigger to win game. <laughs> press L to auto aim your archers. Yeah. So I know mean? you're into that game right now, but if you ever so fun. try to uh, get over into Warhammer uh, three, I'll I'll play that with you. I can I can I can I can dive deep into that game, a modern yeah. game that your new PC will power like no other. Um, it you need a new powerful PC to max that game out. 
Taylor, when you zoom all the way in with your scroll wheel and you look at your group of like orc goblin folk, each one, maybe not each one, but like there's like a dozen different things they'll be doing at an independent time. There's like 120 yeah. men there. These little green fuckers with, tr with they're all unique, but their battle axes will gleam and glisten. And one yeah. will be like, yeah, I'm going to get them with this. It's like the different other tattoos. Be, yeah. Like one of them will just be freaking out. And they look really detailed and then you send them forward in the thousands to battle my thousands that i'll get into i'm 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 just about burnt out on tarkov i think i'm done i beat it again i'll jump um, into warhammer i just like i like i like the like at level 44 i think like i got everything i have millions i can make millions more at, any, yeah. at the flip of a you know past the point of interest almost like, i'm done i beat the game again um, i like they did having... just improve the game tremendously today with a ton of patches Woody, they made it. They 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 reverted the weight and recoil system to back when you liked the game, like like year, to years ago. Still, yeah, I played before the weight system really, and after with it. that, yeah. So I I imagine it's like when the weight system first started. How about the inertia? Did they like? I wonder where well, that is. Well, like to to experience the inertia, you need to start being getting overweight, and they slid the bar over what's considered overweight so far forward. It's absurd. The penalties mm. for something like wearing a piece of armor, I don't know if you've ever looked in those negative red numbers, but it'll be like 12% yeah, yeah. movement speed for just wearing some basic level 4 shit. It's like 3% movement speed now. Like They cut it by, by huge swaths. The recoil, the vertical recoil, they took almost all of it out. The Did M4 you... is, is insane. Right. The M4 it, is it, insane all of a his sudden. His name's now. Veritas, right? The, the... Veritas. He led yeah. the charge on this. Him and Trey 24K. Okay, so I watched a Veritas video and I... Uh, his videos are so good. I'm not sure it's a good business model because it's so hard to make an amazing 45 minute movie about this shit. Not sending a message. But my goodness, when he comes out with a banger, it is as good as any video on YouTube on the subject matter. And I mean, he's taking real life soldiers and showing what they can do and how this video game character can't match a regular guy. And he's like, you get shot in the leg and like, look at this fucking Giga Chad who was, you know, got shot in the thigh and was still able to sort of, you know, do way better than yeah. your video game character can. These guys walk 12 miles with this pack on their back. They jog yep. and they occasionally walk and then regain their stamina and get back to their jog. Yet in the video game, you have to lay down in the grass to regain your stamina. They're like, that's not realistic. You can regain stamina through walking. And, uh, they're carrying he also knows the weight of the packs which is more and they just made your video game character kind of a pussy he convinced me oh i've always said that like i'm way better at most of the physical things than my character are uh, uh is like like if you if you actually look at how far he's running like in it, you know it says in the game you'll mm -hmm. you'll do like two kilometers in a whole raid but your character's been out of breath multiple times you kidding me i yeah. You knock, uh, you knock at five k every day, and you won't. You'll get out of breath at the end of it, you, you, right. but you won't stop running. You'll. I would. I would walk a, a, as like a cool down. Like, like my cardio is kind of shit right now, and I can still recover walking. You know, like yes. they they made your character a real vagina to slow progression, and <laughs> and, and they, they they reverted not only that stuff, but also like some of the other annoying things, like your hydration and energy decline. That supposedly they reduced that, so you don't have to be constantly eating and drinking. Now my my character's a fucking Chad. His metabolism is is like fifty something, so he can he can go into a raid and kill half a dozen people on nothing but like a a couple rollades and some sewer water, <laughs> like like he can fucking get it done. But um, the making it so the lightweight changes are great, like like making everyone um, making the the bar for making you overweight so uh, well, increased. It's yeah. a great change all by itself. The horizontal recoil is insane because there were only like ten guns that were usable. There were like 10 to 13 guns or something. Veritas covered that too. Like he showed people operating these guns and how they could dump a mag into a metal target at like fighting distance. Mm -hmm. Now I've operated a fully auto gun, but only a little bit. And I wasn't as like, I'm more like the video game characters, but someone who's a trained PMC can dump a mag on target in this game. <sighs> you literally shoot 12 feet over the guy's head. Like it is very hard to control. Yeah, it's frustrating to see your character not be able to do stuff that not only could I do, but I have done. Like, like, like I was in a fight with a guy with a Glock, a fully auto one, and when I went to shoot, the Glock went, Brah! and I shot the ceiling. And it's like, 
I've done this shit before. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd have shut that fucker 28 times in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Me, like, maybe I don't put them all in a dot, but they're all on him. Like, like remember those turkeys I blew up in Texas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smaller than him would have fucked him up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it can be frustrating. But uh, but yeah, huge good changes to Tarkov. But yeah, I think I'm done with it. I'm 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 moving. You're on done to with Tarkov. Else. Yeah, yeah. It's beaten. It, it's it's beaten. It could oh. not stand before me. Um, I'll get like, Warhammer three. That would be fun to play. I'll get that. Yeah, I um I have it. I bought it the other day. I played one game of it. Didn't really have anybody to play with, so I didn't play anymore. How much but, money but, yeah, do I'll, you have in Tarkov? Like 10 million any... right now or something. Oh, I'm just gliding. That's... Yep. Yep. Yeah. But, but, but like, I'll, t- yeah. I'll, t- I made that 10 million in a day though, because I spent all my money to buy the sniper levels. It cost five and a half million. Mm-hmm. And I was like bummed. I was like down to so, so little money. I couldn't insure my gear. And, uh, and I made like 10 million in a day just, just running my scav. And I go into factory and go straight out the door. So it's like a free 150,000 just every, 15 minutes plus I used to like, do that uh, but I get well. my free scab kill right cuz uh, if you're a scab in this game as you know the first scab doesn't try to kill you so I'd shoot a scab in the head take his stuff and run out the door and then I just leave with two scab loots mine and his yeah that'd be a huge mistake these days with the scab karma system mm-hmm. but they won't let you scab as much now like your scab karma goes down now it's 20 minutes 30 minutes an hour <laughs> <laughs> lately they, they just don't let you play anymore <laughs> yeah which is good it's a fun mechanic you guys right, plus, show? Uh, four hours and nine minutes. Yeah, oh, I time guess right. flies when you're having talking. fun, gentlemen. I'm gonna All go right. eat and enjoy the evening. PKN six thirty two. Watch the last of us. PKA. It's good.